Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for review. My name is Nicholas Diorio, and we're going to be watching the Mama Max files, all of them. And we're going to figure out exactly what happened with the person that he is currently investigating. And then uh, that spawned drama. And, and then after that, um, that created more drama with like some live streams and stuff. And there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. And I don't understand a lot of it. And a lot of it's, you have to make one of those for Chud Logic. Dude, I stole this bit from Chud Logic. All right. I plagiarized it. Okay. All right. So this one's called brainwashing your favorite in uh, influencers trigger warning. It was uploaded two months well, ago. And I think notably the issue with this video uh, from his perspective, because this was actually something he reached out to me to cover. I don't know if you know this, but I was one of the YouTubers who was contacted and asked to review this stuff. And then I was scolded when I didn't watch it publicly. But I did tell him that I would watch, I believe it's this video publicly on stream. Um, I, think I signed an NDA. So. We got to we have to we have to watch this one. This is the one I need to watch, but we're going to do it all, okay? Cuz I told him I would. All right. Are the QR codes while he's talking about I don't think the the Tommy C rape QR codes are in a different video. Uh the one where he complains about the comments. You told him you would watch that one? Yeah, he told me to watch that one. I don't know. From the last Mama Max update, there might be multiple vampire Okay, dude, spoiler alert. Cats a flocking. What the fuck, dude? I didn't even know there were vampires yet. We didn't even get that far. Jesus. All right. So there's fucking vampires in this. All right. So many pedo vampires. Didn't he tell you to watch the recent one? Uh, because <laughs> because I, we did this in like November. I'm just getting around to it now. Okay. Listen, all you fucking people, Nick, make content. And then you're like, Nick, you got to interview Edwin, Nick. Nick, you said you'd interview Edwin. Nick, you got to watch Mama Max's videos, Nick. Nick, you said you watch my videos, Nick. All right. So let me finish all this shit and then I'll make videos. Okay. This is all the stuff I got to do. <laughs> but this is a serious subject and I have no idea why he asked me to cover it because I am the least serious person. I mean, I literally host the <laughs> Okay, we're gonna stop making that joke. We've, we're, we're already tiring it out. What, what vampires? Well, it's time, okay? It is time. All right, this is not a fucking video I can play a game to. I don't know what the fuck he just said. Please read the following. Your life might be at risk. Trigger warning, brainwashing, crackers. Crackers? It's a fucking slur. Flashing lights and loud music. Wait, what? Hold on. Oh my god. You are encouraged to re-upload this video to other platforms. Keep all of the money and views. Just spread the message for legal purposes. The story, all names, characters, and incidents portrayed on the production are fictitious? No identifying information uh, with actual persons, living or deceased. Places, buildings, and products intended uh, or should be uh, in inferred. We do not take responsibility for any of the following that might occur. Allergic reactions. Anxiety. Blurred vision. Cognitive impotence. Confusion or disorientation. Def okay, this is just a joke. Um... Mystic manipulation, demand for the purity, confessions, sacred science, loading the language, doctrine of pers over person, dispensing of existence. This video may utilize cult techniques to educate you, including but not limited to uh, gaslighting, food control, financial control, fear tactics, fasting, group chants. This is not a joke. Believe me, this guy's not kidding around. Angry Slug is Mama Mock. Oh, yeah, Angry Slug is the editor for this, too, by the way. What? Welcome to your programming. Oh, fuck me, dude. I'm sorry, the voice still doesn't do it for me. I Listen, 
I, I know Max isn't going to care about this critique because obviously, like, I feel like he's heard it. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that bad yet, but, like, the fucking voice. Uh, L lost the r slash YouTube drama endorsement. Stop talking about them. The guy's mad. We've pissed him off. Kindly send this video to your favorite influencer. We will test them on the content. So this is already the problem. From what I've been told, I guess a lot of... Maybe I should watch this without preempting every single statement. Never mind. We'll get there. I'm sure it'll come up. ...of their character. Do not listen to their words. Look at their actions. Let us begin. Okay. Let me get control. Uh, spacebar, pause, comma, previous frame, period, next frame. Wait, is that real? Comma is previous frame. Oh my god! Did you know that? Wait, I'm sorry. Did you know that you could use spacebar and comma to go frame by frame? I knew it was spacebar, but I didn't know the, the frame by frame thing. That's cool. You have successfully completed this. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I feel retarded. Okay, hold on. I need to actually pay attention to this because this is kind of. I, this is like what the entire stream is built on. I can't just fucking play Fortnite right now. If God appeared before you and told you to sacrifice a child, would you do it? All right, clearly we have to pull the chat on this one. Clearly, chat, we need to pull it. Uh, start a poll. Okay, chat, chat, chat. All right, here we go. Um, if God appeared before you and told you to sacrifice a child, would you do it? Jesus Christ. Yes is winning, and it's by 69%. If God came to you and told you, you must kill this baby, 70% of you said yes. Oh my God, you guys are the worst. We're cutting it off there. 70% said they would kill a fucking child if God came down. Do you understand? This is like what a fucking crazy person says on the stand. Well, Lord, the Lord came down. I had to mow my family down with my rifle. You guys are fucking crazy. Christ is king. The poll won't show up. Next time we're going to get chat on screen. God told Abraham to do that. I can't blame me. Uh, A, no, I'm clearly drugged, psychotic, senile, sleep deprived, or schizophrenic. Well, that might be, that's, that might be my chat. B, no, children are above God. C, God above all else. So I guess we went with C. On an exoplanet far away. Oh, fuck me. This is the part. Two extraterrestrial factions of the same primitive species are at war with each other. They are both guilty for spilling the blood of- All right, here's the problem. Here's the, like straight up the problem right now as we're sitting here. As we're sitting here watching this. If this wasn't about a sex cult, I wouldn't have anything negative to say about it. It's It seems like a fun little ARG adventure. Listen, if I was in a fucking planet where they were fucking killing children and stuff like that, and now we're talking about like God and what and, like what that means, and it's like a question about religion or something like that, I feel like- at some point, we would, like, be okay with that. I feel like there'd be no issue. It's like a filmmaker is making a really weird video discussing, like, a sexual abuse scenario. And, I mean, I feel like this has been said to death. I'm not the first guy to say it. It's not. I'm not even saying it for the first time. I've been saying this for years now, uh, since this whole Mama Max stuff began. We can go watch old debates that I've done if we want to sit here really and go on that long with uh, Night Docs or my convo with Mama Max from fucking two years ago uh, about the same shit before it went viral, I guess. And um, the problem is he's like a pretty interesting filmmaker. Um, he, he has like a really interesting editing style and like it's kind of shitty, I guess, in my opinion that it's it's combined with such like a serious subject because it doesn't get the message out that he wants to get out and he has his other motive of pushing it which is what a lot of people have problems with so let's keep going children based on the pattern among this species who will win the war hey oh guys are we gonna do it we're gonna do this too all right 
Uh, you guys see this on screen? On screen question, because I'm not typing it out. Um, wait, start Q&A. What the fuck? No, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, Q2. All right, and the answers are... Um, A, B, and C. Okay, A, B. Easy, no typing. Here we go. So, question number two. <laughs> On an exoplanet far away, two extraterrestrial factions of the same primitive species are at war with each other. They're both guilty for spilling the blood of children based on the patterns among the species. Who will win the war? Who will win the war? Uh, the internationality rec the internationally recognized faction the non-member observer faction or c it will pr be extinction all right so everyone is saying extinction we're at 78 percent for extinction um can't have the aliens evolve oh fuck me that's how did that get racist so fast um uh, that got really racist Um, what do we got here? If you were being brainwashed, do you think you could tell? Chatters, do you understand the brainwashing? Like, do you know I'm brainwashing you right now? If you were being Was that a QR code? Washed. To pop up here. Oh, there it is. That's a QR code. Um, does anyone want to click that? So, apparently you cannot tell if you're being brainwashed because there's no option. End poll. Thank you for your submission. Here are the correct answers. What? Okay, guys, we got two right. I forgot what question one was. Oh, we voted B or C. Okay. As previously discussed, your test scores will not be determined by your answers. What? The f what? It will be based on your behavior. What do you mean? Please proceed to the next section to complete your programming. What? October 27th, 2023. Humanity will destroy itself. Well, 2033. Oh my god. Alright, the aliens won. I'm not reading that. I would say one of the things that really um, bothers me and that I think about and I've been confronted with this situation many times are minor children recruit recruited by destructive cults online children deserve to know that there is danger out there you shouldn't be walking through the world blindly thinking that everything is just sunshine and rainbows Be what the fuck is that is that like a what it's on a is that like a light fixture do you pull that because the sad reality is, is the world is a terrifying place at the end of the day. On March 18th, 2016, Spencer, a 16 year old. All right. So this is the part of the video where it becomes a rape investigation, like a pedo investigation, rather. Um, I don't know. It's still it, this whole like showy nature of this shit just rubs me the wrong way. And it seems like it's starting to rub other people the wrong way. But let's hear him out girl from Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared. Lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet, she actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous sex cult led by a child predator posing as a werewolf god. The man had recruited hundreds of young children, subjecting them to sending CP, kidnapping, assault, and attempted trafficking. Almost seven years later, Spencer and the other survivors shared I'm their I'm sorry, stories what the me. fuck did he just say? I fucking, I went away for two seconds to kill people in Fortnite. And a, what the fuck did he just say? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to go back, we have to go back. I'm sorry, I, two fucking seconds, I'm gone. Hold on. Those because the sad reality is, is the world is a terrifying place at the end of the day. On March 18th, 2016. On March 18th, 20... By the way, 
I think they live together now. No, no, they don't live together. He um he got her a place to live. So he's like her landlord or something? That's kind of an interesting detail. Spencer, a 16-year-old girl from Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared. All right. Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared. Lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet. She actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous sex cult led by a child predator posing as a werewolf god. The man had recruited hundreds of young children, subjecting them to sending CP, kidnapping, assault, and attempted trafficking. Almost seven years later, Spencer and the other survivors shared their stories with me. This video serves as their scream for action against their perpetrator. <sighs> so this is like some fucking serious shit. And I'm going to take this opportunity to point out that a fucking vampire werewolf. And obviously they're not like vampires, werewolves. Like that's not in there to be like, oh, look, these guys are fucking vampires and werewolves. It's like some um, the point is like they're using like mythical beings and stuff like that as an avenue to trick children into coming in to potentially uh, get like naked pictures of them or bring them there and like apparently like statutory rape them and stuff like that. But they're using these things that kids like supposedly uh, to get them in. And then once they're through the door, they're doing other shit to them. And that's like the fucked up part. But I mean, it's, but it, what he's trying to argue is that the messaging that these people use is like very common with, I, I guess, influencer culture in general and he's trying to make that connection um yeah so there's a lot of moving parts here it's the reason why sniper wolf comes up in this a lot too and why that's getting like kind of tied in with all this stuff um and my main takeaway from all of this is hearing that like there's a vampire fucking sex cult thing or whatever is that like it's a strong enough subject matter that could be covered like in a million view Turkey Tom video. Like Turkey Tom could take this subject exactly as it says and make a video called like the vampire degenerates that doesn't need any extra push. It would just do well just to make a by the books video recanting like all of the allegations showcasing all of the evidence that like you could like show or whatever that would you could legally show and that stuff like that wouldn't be fucking up any active criminal investigations and stuff like that and just telling the story about how a guy lured people by pretending to be a vampire into like a fucking sex cult online that is a very attainable goal to create a video of that nature that people will like watch and enjoy and find that to be like um you know good enough to like consume you wouldn't have to like shroud that in anything but unfortunately mama max gets stuck in his own head a little bit um, and he does the whole reach out to this YouTuber thing, reach out to that YouTuber thing, get this guy involved, get that Slimey celebrity involved, fuck. and it fucks up, I guess, any opportunity to push this thing further, I guess. That's, uh, I guess that's like the entry level Mama Max position. I'm sure everyone already knows that. And that's the, that's the guy. Now... Does he call the guy Count Blackula, or is that like you guys naming him or something? Where does that come from? I know he was referred to that in a stream in the future, but who the fuck called this guy Count Blackula? Chud Logic called him that. Oh, fuck. All right, so that's just race. I'm going to get in trouble. Whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? Fuck you. Somebody said that. Oh my god, fuck, I looked away to play Fortnite for two seconds and I just realized he put up a thousand messages on the screen. Camden. <sighs> Alright, but there's fucking six alive. Hold on, Camden. Camden, wait one second. Fuck. You know what? Max is not gonna get mad at me for this because I'm getting this video to more people so I can finish my Fortnite game, okay? Give me a grappling hook. I have, like, nothing on me. Um, 
Can I rift? Yeah, we will rift out of here. Stop saying playing Fortnite retail. I'm gonna fucking get back into it in a minute. All right, this is the last game. Last game. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. Oh, this is kind of. Never mind. Um, I'm dead. Okay, fine. Great. All right, place third place. Can you remind the bridge with Tipster? Can you mend the bridge with Tipster so he'll give you one of his 50 stream decks so you could swap? I have two stream decks in front of me. Why are you guys lolling? Because I died? You're happy I died? Okay. Here. Alright, I'm ready to pause. I'm ready to pause. I'm ready to pause. I'm ready to pause. We will not listen to your words. We will look at your... Fuck, I missed that one. Actions? I think it was actions. There's a possibility he will use anonymous accounts on various internet forums to, def to spread rumors or false information about the victims or filmmakers. He may attempt to enrage drama-oriented media sources I'm mad leveraging their platforms to spin a narrative in his favor oh fuck um, he may resort to legal threats as a method to suppress this story and silence victims according to multiple sources he is implicated in criminal activities affecting minors it is not uncommon for figures like him to accused detractors of slander in an attempt to shift the narrative this individual could potentially use his charisma and persuasive tactics to turn the public against this video and it's well none of this happened spoiler alert this guy did not show up ever i don't know if he even exists people don't even know if he's alive apparently this stuff was over 10 years ago we have no idea if this person's even breathing or where they are or what they're doing in fact mama max usually knows when he makes his videos because he gets this information and shit. I don't know if he even knows if this guy's alive. Um, what? 16 viewers, 81 now? What happened? Um, oh, Keem's trying to go live. Cool. At the end of all of this, I intend to interview you. I want to understand your childhood. Captain Gerard. Keem went live competing for views or trying to cover up his allegations. Clearly, he's trying to hide the Jeffrey Epstein list. Davis, Leviathans are coming for you. Children are in danger. Human trafficking is evolving. Destructive outlets are growing. Threat of extinction rises. Children are the key. The enemy of the children are the enemy of all of us. Why is that child? You may make a difference. Ew. Spread the message. We are you real. Fuck. Okay. What got depleted by Smaggle? What is this? Hello, Smaggle. You are a perfectly healthy, sane, middle-class man. Yet you ran a straight razor across- Oh my god, what the fuck? God's will. God's will is not written in man-made books. It is written in our DNA. Oh, now he's reading it. Books. It is written in our DNA. We produce and protect our offspring. Guard our descendants. Hmm. Welcome to God Cult. By the way, he changed his name to God Cult briefly while he was doing this, and that was also probably why this video underperformed. Um, because he changed his name, and no one knew who he was. His name and his pictures. Mm. That was the other thing. We are real. Thank you, Smaggle. It was a soccer team hashtag, so it got all mixed up. As your first command, I kindly ask you to share Spencer's story with the following. We want you. This is so weird. This is the part of the video. This is so fucking weird. I was making fun of this before. Dear Felix, 
As a new parent, you're undoubtedly experiencing the transformative mechanisms that we describe here. If you find the time, we would be honored if you would share our important message with your audience. It's like, so this one, all right, this isn't the worst because we're going to get to other stuff that's worse than this. But like, it's, um, it's like as a new dad, you, you have a kid now, you should say something. Because I think PewDiePie said he was taking time off or something. <laughs> Again, the editing on this is fucking impeccable. Dear Lex, this is Lex, Fre Lex Friedman, your voice is undeniably the most influential on this platform. It is evidence that we share a common vision for the future of humanity, one that is deeply rooted in love. We would love to be delighted to engage with a meaningful conversation with you on the subject. Jimmy! Your philanthropic Philanthropic, philanthropic, your philanthropic endeavors and impactful use of your platform have been both inspiring and aspirational for us. I believe that your influence can serve as a powerful catalyst in the war that I've been fighting uphill here on YouTube. We are not asking for your money, just <laughs> Oh, come on, man. Dear Joe Rogan, you've welcomed a diverse range of guests on your podcast, offered different perspectives on various issues. As a father yourself, you would be an ideal person to help disseminate our message. Like, I don't mean to be a dick, all right? I don't know why Max wanted me to watch this, because this shit I'm going to say. Like, I just literally, he knows what I'm going to say. I think this shit's so fucking corny. I think it's corny to beg people to fucking re react to your shit. I know it's worked for him in the past, and that's why he's still doing it. But I think over time, people started to go like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not God cult, God cringe. Like, we're only five minutes in. This is only a ten minute video. But like, <sighs> it's been like two seconds about his subject matter, and now it's like, the section on the fucking influencers feels like it's going to be longer than the section on the actual fucking girl. <laughs> Dear Phil, we are pleasantly surprised and grateful to see you cover our movement on Pick Aside YouTube. Thank you for your uh, invaluable support. We humbly request your aid as we advance our cause. <laughs> Dear Ethan and Ayla, as parents, we know you're understanding the critical importance of safeguarding your children's well-being. We're confident that your message will uh, resonate greatly with uh sorry that our message will resonate greatly with you would you kindly consider featuring this brief video on your podcast Just, like what the fuck would they show like how would ethan talk about this on a sh like on a podcast what is presentable about this you know what you could do max make a press package say hey I'm, I'm representing this person this person doesn't have a voice of their own so i'm giving them mine here's the information that you need to show it would be really cool if you could help get this information out there so we can catch the person who abused this girl not can you send the, could you play my god cult message video on your goof and gaff podcast i don't know why ethan would show this on his show again i'm not knocking you i think you're a great fucking filmmaker but like there's got to be a way to do this that doesn't sound this stupid And I know he has stuff in the description, so he literally could have put a press package together and asked his friends to do it. But again, I mean, he's reached out to a ton of YouTubers and they're not answering him now, as we'll find out in a minute. And I don't think that's because, like, YouTube people, like, they don't want to entirely deal with his message and stuff like that or, or promote content for a good cause. I don't think that's the case. I think it's just because they feel burned because last year they did YouTube versus pedophiles and not everybody knew what the fuck that was going to be when they signed up for it. Hey, there are people being abused on YouTube as pedos. Oh, we hate pedos. We'll get on board. And then it was like, Susan Wojcicki, you should step down. I mean, she did step down, so I guess he won. I don't know. <laughs> Dear Anthony, the needle drop. The banger that you're currently in. Wait, the banger you're currently enjoying is R Replicant's Army by Filmmakers. We believe your audience would appreciate this fiery composition. Would you consider exposing them? All right, dude. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anthony Fantano? I mean, I would ask for it. What do you mean? He's going to get on there and be like, hey, what's up, dudes? It's the... 
Well, it's track review. Today we're looking at a really cool one from the God Cult. Uh, it's like, da, 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 da. and it's actually got like a cool story to it too. It has like a pedo involved. It's like, uh. Corpse. Dear Corpse, a significant portion of your audience is at an age that makes them more vulnerable to predatory behavior. Unfortunately, many predators exploit your likeness to attract these younger individuals. Would you kindly consider sharing our message to help uh, prevent potential harm? This video is for Seema Davis. What? I would like to extend my most heartfelt apology that this is how you have to find all of this out. Alright, I gotta be honest, nobody should be finding out anything in this fucking format, but okay. But the fact of the matter is, your son, Camden Gerard David. Oh. Oh, why? Why is it the guy's mother? Why? Yes has been victimizing hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of minors. Couldn't have sent a fucking email, Flamenco? Like, what? By March of 2016, he convinced me and lured me over state lines. I ran away. When I did make it to Atlanta on the bus, Camden got an Uber, came and picked me up, and brought me back to your house in Lilburn, Georgia. <sighs> he mentally abused me, physically abused me, sexually abused me, and at even one point tried to kill me. Jesus fuck. Me and the other survivors, we are real. Spencer is pursuing legal action against Camden and the law enforcement agencies that failed her. To support <sighs> this effort, all donations received in October via our Patreon will be allocated for this legal process. All Patreon donations, that's like a chunk of money, right? Isn't it like 10 grand? He makes like a lot from fucking Patreon. Yes. All additional funding will be used to film this story as it unfolds. If you are a survivor of Camden Gerard Davis and would like to participate, please reach out to us. Use the hashtag WeAreReal and do not stop hashtagging us until we find you. If you're some rando just watching this video for fun, please help us find them. Well, I just showed it to 744 of my closest friends and family, so I've done what he asked. We are real. Okay. Thank you. I am going to watch the videos in full because I've been given permission to do so. Um, and because that's kind of the point of these videos. Typically, I only like to watch like four or five minutes of a video and zoom in and out. That's kind of my new mojo. But uh, we are going to watch all of these. For watching. Uh, you Can't Hurt Me, episode one, Spencer coming. To this is out now. I believe it's a four hour podcast with the victim. Well, the alleged victim, to be fair, but I mean, I don't know. This video is for charity. Please support the original. All revenue goes to the survivor. Okay, so now the whole video money. Okay, so I guess the video didn't perform well, so they didn't get a lot of money. And then he took the chunk out of his Patreon, and that's what. And I assume it's to pay their legal fee? Again, like. There's a, I mean, if, all right, if this was me, because obviously I'm not going to just sit here and say, this guy's a fucking idiot, okay? Here, like, I couldn't do it better, but this guy's a fucking idiot. Here's what I would do, and maybe I would get critiqued. A person reaches out to me saying that they're abused, all right? Typically, I would be like, okay, um, you should contact the police. That's not my job. This guy is a pedo hunting YouTuber, or at least I guess he was a pedo hunting YouTuber. So this is, I guess, kind of what he does. Um, so let's go with it from that framework. So you're a pedo hunting YouTuber. Someone reaches out to you, say, hey, I need help. I have evidence. Help me out. Um, first thing I would do is push this to the police, get this to their local police department, get those people involved. That's like the first thing I would do. If this has to go to a public setting, if it has to go to like an online um, forum, I guess the way I would go about it 
is I would create a press package. I would notify my YouTuber friends that I feel like I can trust and other people uh, that I've collaborated with in the past. I would do it like that if I had to emulate the style in which he's going for here. Um, but what I would do is I would create a GoFundMe. I wouldn't say I'm giving you a percentage of my revenue. I would create a GoFundMe. I would try to create something catchy that way and use that GoFundMe to like push for legal fees and stuff like that because when you just say like, oh, it's going in my Patreon, what does that mean? I mean, realistically, that means somebody could just sign up for it and not sign up next month and they've paid you more money next month. Um, if you do like a closed uh, GoFundMe that might invoke more people to donate, I do think that um, as much as I hate to fucking tone police and moral F over that, I do think the tone means a fuckload in an important video like this. Um, you need to prevent, you need to just get it out there, present the information you can in a, in a normal, uh, easy to digest manner. You can angle it totally off the fact that it's like a fucking vampire cult or something like that and, and definitely use that to your advantage. But I wouldn't do this whole, uh, fucking whatever the fuck he's doing now. I would, I wouldn't do this whole thing, but again, this is his fucking character. So there's no way he's going to listen to any of this and actually take it into account. I just wish he would do one video by the books and just see what happens. Just one video angle it like a turkey tom's degenerate type video and just make that and just see what happens but i don't know that's what i would that's what i would do hey max so i watched the trailer and holy fuck that is That is exactly what I envisioned when when we actually started planning this, like, planning it for real. And that's the other angle of this. Fun. That's the other angle on this, and this is the issue. I guess the girls want this. The people he works with like this. His audience likes this, and I, I just don't fucking understand it. I don't know. That's, that's what he said for years. People just agreed with it. I don't know. I look and like my right. first. So we don't need that statement. But um, so obviously this video wildly underperformed. Um, just going back at it, criticisms from me. Uh, I would say if I let's say if I was watching this beforehand and I was giving him the criticisms he wanted privately. Uh, I would point out that like the in the important parts of this video are like from the two minute mark to like the three minute mark. I didn't really learn anything about this. He kind of just talked at me and I'm assuming it's all down here or something. But like that doesn't really do anything for me now, I guess. Um, Cause again, the video needs to have that information. That's kind of important. Um, other than that one section, I guess, uh, contacting the mother directly in the video is kind of an odd choice. I don't know what the mother did wrong. Um, maybe she was complicit. Maybe she knew. I don't know. But, um, that seems to be my issue here. It's like, again, we looked at this, this is like one minute explaining the stuff about the girl. Um, and it has realistically... What is this? About the same amount of time was allocated to begging for more people to cover the story. Um, spoiler alert, that's all you're going to get unless you watch the interview in full. I'm going to watch some of the interview. I don't see myself watching the whole thing. But now this is the controversy aspect of it. And this is him kind of trying to defend himself, I guess. This is the one that made everyone really mad, though. So, um, And this is him. I guess on the streams you'll hear his real voice, but... There was a YouTuber who did a three-minute condensed video on the four-hour podcast. I'll watch that. Yeah, 100%. I'll check that. Um, spoiler alert. That's all I'm gonna, I already read that one. So when Max said, this is my story on live, I was pissed. That's so gross. Did he say that? I don't know. Life situations. Oh. So I, I spo spoiler alert. I have seen some of this video. Uh, most of it, actually. Because it was when I was told. Okay, I don't remember that one. What the fuck? That's actually kind of funny. Hello, everyone. My name is Max Straker. Some of you might know me as Mama Max. 
and I'm a filmmaker dedicated to empowering children. It seems there's a lot of confusion around my channel, so I would like to take this time to explain what the heck I'm trying to do here on this platform by responding to some comments on my previous upload. What happened to you, Max? You were once one of the best content creators I've ever watched on this website. Your motivational videos from six, seven years ago were amazing. Making me laugh while helping me through hard times, it was awesome. Let me tell you what happened to me. My official YouTube journey as Mama Max started with a series called Life Sucks, where I share personal struggles with depression. Once again, the editing in this is really cool. Ugh. What does empowering children mean? I guess he's trying to like get them to he's his angle is like, I'm going to give these kids like inspiration to go and speak up about things that are happening to them and things that they see. I'm assuming that's what he means. Um, he want, uh, let's see. Nick, do you remember when you interviewed Max with Tom that he lied that all oh, this is his real voice? Yeah, I think he did lie. He told me that it was his real voice. I guess now it is a modulator. I don't know if that was like a malicious lie or we just were retarded and believed him and he was joking, but and try to give hope to others, telling them that things can improve with time and effort. Over time, I realized that not all viewers were looking for serious life advice, and my content about sensitive issues faced restrictions from YouTube. So I switched gears and made content to entertain and provoke, using humor to address and criticize the inappropriate sexualization of young boys and girls in Japanese culture. That's kind of weird. My hentai reviews. I never thought I'd hear someone say hentai reviews in that voice. That's so funny. Uh, I'm not proud of that work. A little racy. YouTube didn't like it either, so I began reviewing video games that I felt could positively influence people's lives. As my content took on a more serious tone, I also started to change the way I presented my literal voice. Diving into the horror genre with a video on Kanye Quest, I found a welcoming community of friends and enjoyed creating in that space. But it was here that I also began to notice alarming behaviors growing online. Sexual predators targeting children. The deeper I delved into the underbelly of the internet, the more I was confronted with chilling realities that defy the worst nightmares one can imagine. The exploitation and abuse of children, the defenseless cruelty of innocent animals, left my mind with permanent scars from these sights. Even in my own life, I noticed those who inflict pain have often been subjected to similar horrors in their own pasts. Who are these fucking people? Like, who- Are these, like- Is that him? That's not him. Pain. Is have it? often been subjected to similar horrors- Oh, maybe it is. Yeah, it is him. Horrors in their own past. Those are his exes? Wait, are those the exes who went after him? Acknowledging that child abuse is a widespread issue, my resolve has only grown. My fight against the exploitation of children is not just a professional mission, it is a personal one. That is what happened to me. But you've abandoned that. All for this? What even is this? Alright, this is the part. This is the part that I want to talk about. So, the Mama Max universe was a cautionary tale that takes place in the dystopian future where child predators have seized global power, exploiting the digital landscape to entrench their rule. Rising from the ashes of a society that failed to protect its most vulnerable, the children emerged. Do I have to say it? Guys, I'm not an ARG. However, what my video is, is the future fucking dystopia of the fucking global pedophile Epstein Corps taking over and we're we're arming the children to fight back against their fucking oppressors like this is fucking crazy i i mean i whatever I, everyone knows a this covert already. network of vigilantes inspired by the style of hotline miami once victims they are now hunters of the monsters who hurt <laughs> i'm just picturing just like all the kids watching his videos and getting a gun <laughs> 
Squadron. They form a structured rebellion, seeking to dismantle the predatory hierarchy and awaken the world to the lurking digital dangers. Each video served as a guide, teaching viewers to recognize, evade, and expose the insidious tactics of predators. This series was my stand against the proliferation and normalization of pedophilia on the internet and the severe lack of justice in our law enforcement systems. While the narratives were crafted in fiction, the predator and the pursuit was very much a reality. As my work drew more controversial attention from you. Why not attack police departments that don't process specific rapes? Why not go, hey, this is, we're making a video on such and such police department. I have six people who claim they've sent a rape kit in. They have not been called back. They have not gotten any messages back. Why don't we go after the corrupt institutions instead of taking a shot into the dark and playing Hotline Miami? You know? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, there's gotta be things that you could actually fucking do with your platform. If you want to use your platform for this, like there should be things that you can do with it that are better, I guess. Two. My viewership suffered a steep decline. It seems that the line between the fictional portrayal and the underlying truth became blurred for some, leading to confusion and concern. Perhaps in the future, the time will be right to revisit these stories, but for now, it's apparent that society may not be prepared for such provocative content. This is the kind of stuff I feel like I would find if I went on the deep web. It's actually terrifying. Terrifying enough to where I just can't stand to see what has become of this channel. What was once a- Alright, this is like the most overdramatic fucking post ever. I'm seeing what I would find on the deep web. Alright, you've never been to the fucking deep- I've never been to the fucking deep web. You've like- Googled what's on the deep web, or you've watched like a YouTube video being like, these are the top five sites to avoid on the deep web. The place I could turn to for comfort is now a disturbing sight that I don't want to bear. Everything about your channel now contradicts what it is. Could you imagine these comments are completely fabricated, straw man? I mean, that would be so funny, but they're definitely they stood for. I don't understand why. See, other people are writing the exact same thing that I'm writing. Like, is it possible? This happened. Wait, we have a smeargle and a smaggle now? You slimy, you, weasley Max. fuck. This is where I'm finally unsubscribing. I'm sorry that my content disturbs you. But if this reality is too much, then be grateful that you have the luxury of simply turning off a video and unsubscribing. The children I'm advocating for. I know that you can get the gay potion from the deep web. Yeah, I've watched Nerd City too. Four, do not have the luxury of turning off their real life situations. If my current work bruises your comfort level to this extent, then perhaps it's best for both of us that you unsubscribe. He's been making shit like this for ages. I don't know why you're shocked. Just unsub. Stop being emotional. Yeah, the world is a dark place. Sorry that offends you. The cat videos are that way. I agree. This isn't scary. <laughs> I agree. It moves on to the next one. Why'd you read it then? Harry, it's edgy 2010 era garbage. It's gross that Max is doing this thing where he pretends to reach out to other big YT channels in order to help victims, when in reality, he's exploiting these victims to try and get views. Genuinely evil behavior. Genuinely evil behavior is taking the conversation away from sexual predators who victimize children. Okay. Besides the fact that that's a super straw man, and the guy's question wasn't really that good to begin with, isn't that kind of the problem with this video? We're like, so... In the first video, we're talking about sexual predators that want to hurt children, but we're deviating from that to ask for help from other YouTubers to kind of do some weird um, Fallout 64 style intro fucking survey. Uh, we're using it as an avenue to discuss cults, which for better or for worse is happening. And now the second video in this series is describing the issues with your community, complaining about uh, I guess some people's opinions based on your video, like doing a comment comeback video. Aren't you separating the discussion from the victim now? And making it about the YouTuber that covered it. Sp <laughs> hey, Tommy. 
specifically because you don't like them. Your profile picture already speaks volumes. Oh, this was a really stupid idea. About where you're coming from. If my aim were merely to chase views, I am in the absolute worst market of content creation on YouTube to do so. I am engaging in projects that require time, research, scripting, filming, and editing just to get less views than everyone who is following the latest drama or trend. You know, so I don't understand this. I don't. So people say, oh, you get a lot of views if you cover the latest drama and trend. That's true, I guess. If you're going to make a video on Dream after the Dream allegations, da, 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 I guess that's fine. But there's also a market in being the guy to make the video, the video that creates the trend. H Bomber guy didn't make a video on plagiarism because it was popular. He made a video on plagiarism that made plagiarism's discussions popular, right? That wasn't a video chasing views and drama. That was a video that he was passionate about, that other people felt that they were also passionate about, that spawned several people then chasing that trend for views and drama and the people who wanted to be about. Like, that's the point that I'm trying to make here, is if he just starts out and makes that video the right way, maybe his video that he's passionate about, the victims that he wants to put out there, end up spiking a conversation, and then he actually gets this cult, like, um... This, this, this whole cult information wave that he's looking for. Instead, he's kind of just begging for it. And I don't think that people bought that a third time. He begged for it when he did uh, YouTube versus pedophiles. He fucking begged for it when he did Wake Up Pedotube. And he begged for it when he did this girl's story. And that rubs people the wrong way. You can get away with that once, twice, but maybe not three times. I don't think he really cares about the victims. Well, I'm not going to make a fucking assessment about that, but that's up in the air. I'm going to tell you right now, no offense again to Max, but people who come to that conclusion, I kind of see where they get that angle from. I'm not necessarily in that camp myself, but some people see this as just a big clout pull. And it's not because like, oh, fuck that guy. He's doing, he's trying to do this good thing or whatever. Uh, and like everyone who's attacking you is like a fucking pedophile. It's because at the end of every single video, you're begging for more fucking views. You're begging, please cover my story. Please cover my story. Please cover my story. So yeah, there's a certain sector of people who think that you're just doing this because you want attention. And it's like, I see your angle to it where you're like, well, if I wanted to make more money, I would just do what, I don't know. What's a good example of a fucking content farm? Who's a content farm YouTuber? You can make a shitload of money that way. I don't know what you're doing on the side. I don't know if you have a channel where you hire a fucking editor to fund this channel or something like that. Um, but I, I, as somebody who constantly gets the, oh, clout demon um, in it for the money bullshit arguments and stuff like that. And I'm sitting here thinking like, if I wanted money, I would be uploading on my main channel. That's where the money is. Or if I wanted views and attention and growth... I would just make content instead of get on stream and talk about shit that interests me. Um, I get that all the time. People are really stupid when it comes to like clout chaser or fucking like there, there are things you can do to, um, to make money online. And that's not necessarily one of them, but it's kind of like, you know, it's, I see it both ways. I could make a lot more money if I did things that are more mainstream. Sure. But it seems like you're also e-bagging. You seem like you're e-bagging. You're not asking for money directly, even though it's apparently how you make your living is off Patreon. I'm assuming his Patreon wallet is huge. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Someone can correct me. But like, yeah, come on. I, I, I need the exposure. <laughs> My cause needs the exposure. And if anyone questions me about it, I'll, I'll question you on why you're questioning my cause. When in reality, they're just asking why you're kind of jumping through so many hoops just to put this guy in its place. It's not like a pedo expose video has never done well on YouTube before. It's not like people haven't been able to make a viral video without begging for attention on this exact subject matter. But Max is the only one I see that never gets questioned on it. He can put it in the thing and nobody ever asks questions as to whether it's real or not. I, I noticed that one a lot. I guess more so that's happened recently, but for years I didn't, I've never seen anyone question him. 
Um, moving your stream to YouTube now, missing your streams here. I am staying on YouTube. I am staying on YouTube. Um, get the FBI if you want this. And it's not always an option. But... Oh, weird. Your perception appears to be crafted by forums notorious for doxing, stalking, harassing, and spreading disinformation. This was weird. So he went to war with Kiwi Farms, like in the middle of all this, and then everyone kind of just let that fly. No one said anything. That was a fucking crazy choice. That was an insane choice. Information about individuals they can't stomach or comprehend. Yet you and your kind continue to watch each upload, claiming to despise what you so religiously consume. I can only hope that you heal from whatever twisted life you live. It's just like, this guy says that you're fucking using a... I mean, I understand why he'd be offended by you using victims for fucking monetary gain and stuff like that. But, like... <laughs> he's just kind of implying the guy's a pedo. I can only hope that you heal from whatever twisted life you live in the self-inflicted dilemma. I don't blame people for asking this question, man. I don't think it's as crazy as you seem to make it out to be. Imagine taking subjects as serious as child abuse, human trafficking, pedophilia, and abduction brainwashing, and using them as mere window dressing to get noticed again because your YouTube relevancy is dwindling rapidly. Does anyone think this is a crazy thing to ask based on what you've seen? Even if you don't even agree that, that it's, it's definitely the case, just to ask this question, do you think this is absurd? Comparing crucial issues like child abuse, human trafficking, and pedophilia as window dressing for YouTube relevancy says far more about you than you realize. Months were invested collaborating with the survivor to ensure her story is portrayed in a manner that reflects her lived experiences and the gravity of her suffering. In fact, the full five-hour interview was uploaded to her channel instead of my own to help build her own platform. Why does she need a platform? Is that her method to find justice? Again, I'm spoiling this, but apparently they didn't take this case to the police. I don't understand why. I, I don't get it. Uh, maybe it'll make more sense soon. This is linked in the description, the end screen, and the pinned comment. Your choice to overlook these details and instead diminish this work is a telling revelation of your own character. Again, he's like begging me to argue this because like you're diminishing these details by not mentioning I promoted her podcast. Yeah, sure. And I mean, we mentioned specifically that the ad revenue for fucking November went to this girl and the other people presumably that he has with them. Um, and he's like given this girl like a place to live and stuff like that. So obviously that's taken money out of his, uh, his wallet. I don't know if that's the same money from his Patreon or if it's... um separate money and also he's given the revenue for the ninety-seven thousand, so he probably got about a thousand dollars out of that if it wasn't demonetized to give towards a legal fund so she, he's giving her room and board and trying to fund the lawsuit based off of what he's told us apparently he's invested quite a lot of money into the situation and he's planning on trying to help the girl that way that being said like i said december revenue comes around you're still getting those fucking friends. Like, all the people that you just had join your Patreon for this girl aren't leaving in December. You're going to get a bunch of money in December. So, like, you are still profiting off of this, even though it seems like you're fi very financially invested in this girl. Again, that doesn't mean anything. You should make money off of what you're doing. But I, I don't really like the whole... I shouted her out on YouTube. Therefore, it's uncriticizable how I interact with this. Just unsubscribed from you today. Couldn't even make it past the first five minutes of this video. It's such a shame that you've fallen so hard from grace. Especially since I've enjoyed many of your Life Sucks videos. But ever since you quit Life Sucks, you've been going downhill. Saying really dumb shit. Causing controversy and drama. And being a cynical asshole. It's honestly unbelievable. It's unfortunate that you've decided to unsubscribe after just five minutes into a video that tackles grave issues affecting the life. Dude, imagine unsubscribing as soon as the victim gets on screen. That's fucked. I am so <laughs> it's fucked up time to unsubscribe. Real children. 
your reluctance to engage. You're like, what the fuck? Where'd my ARG go? This is a real girl. Like, what the fuck? Engage with a video of this kind indicates your threshold for confronting reality. If you consider my advocacy for the well-being of children to be saying dumb shit, then perhaps you are someone who warrants closer scrutiny. But feel free to clarify. Because I, I feel like he just thought he was giga chatting so hard on these responses and they just kind of made everybody come away like what? What are you what are you talking about, man? What the fuck? I too would like to know what dumb shit you think I'm saying. Mama Max. Nobody but twelve year olds and one Alright, this is fucking creepy. I don't like this. Wine moms think you're cool or interesting. Who stole wine moms from us? Think you're just cringy and an attention whore. On a side note, I have grown to hate how Mama Max has started to exploit child predation to obtain fame. I'd have more respect if he kept it under the table and did so from the bottom of his heart. I don't know if I'm creeped out because of the fucking ASMR or I'm creeped out because of the message because the message is kind of weird. Not because it's a good content farm. Judging by how he's treating it, he most definitely is doing it purely for the sake of content and other materialistic pursuits. I am beyond disappointed. Your disparaging labels are immaterial to our mission. <laughs> Fuck, man. Whether I'm perceived as cool or cringy does not matter. Comments like yours you gotta give it to contribute him there. nothing to a serious conversation about devastating issues. Okay, but this is my question to you, Max. What does your video contribute when you know it's massively underperformed, when you know you couldn't get the push, when you didn't get people on your side with the angle that you took after they were weirded out the last time? Your response was to get mad and basically kind of threaten me in DMs, uh, but that's besides the point. Um, instead of, like, change and adapt, change your style of video to fit something that might be a bit more proper. Um... I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. Nothing to a serious con So like, yeah, I've done nothing. I mean, I have shown your video to 762 people. They now know who Camden da Gerard Davis is. Camden Gerard Davis is the person that you're going after in the video. Um, they're now introduced to the subject. But I don't know if that helps anything because I don't know what the fuck is in your video. And your video is the one that's supposed to save everybody. And you didn't go to the police and... I mean, like, that's, like, my one thing. It's like, if you don't go to the police, I don't really care. Again, I'm only watching this because you asked me to. Otherwise, it wouldn't be something on my, on my radar. Conversation about devastating issues. When the stakes are this high, you are a distraction from the urgent work at hand. I'd encourage you to think more carefully before projecting yourself in YouTube. Oh, and people are, are going to ask you about this, and they're already asking about this. So I'm going to just jump in and pull it up real quick. Um, so the only reason I'm reacting to this right now is because the way he, he writes me in DMs, like he's a fucking, like the fucking character, like the God cult character. So what is, what is Mama Max's fucking name? So I'll just tell you exactly what he wrote me. Um, because that's not covered in any fucking NDA or anything. And even if it was, I don't care. Sue me. Um... I don't know what his fucking name is. is it God Cult? I can't find his fucking name. Um, let's Mike the bike. When is the last time we chatted? Thanks for the D uh, the donut toast to five. Max is twenty five and messing up a situation like this is real obvious solutions just make a vid on it there's a reason i don't hop on to my friend my french girl video with a voice changer and a vague arg world and i was 17 making that yeah i know yes i know oh fuck i found it it's named big mama yeah so he reached out to me the first time and i said glad you're still around it's been a few months right any spoiler on the topic and then he asked me for an nda and i don't want to fucking sign an nda to watch a youtube video i'd rather just wait for you to release it publicly i'm not interested in helping you privately even though the ndas are fucking non-enforceable anyway and they're stupid okay so this is what he wrote me ready nick the dm leaker i don't think he's gonna have a problem with me re releasing this because it explains the situation more so this is what he wrote 
after this is the video we're watching right now. He sent me this and he asked me to watch it. He goes, your platform has the power to end the suffering of children, yet your silence has been both noticeable and disappointing. I believe in your ability to be more than just a commentator on drama. You have the potential to be a force for positive change. I urge you to watch the attached video and use your voice for the cause that desperately needs it. Your response, or lack thereof, will not go unnoticed. We are determined to be heard and hope to count you among the... And I'm reading this. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Your response or lack thereof? What the fuck does that will not go unnoticed? So he writes me and he goes, he writes me again a couple days later and he goes, I value your integrity. Uh, can I just get a 30 second clip feedback? And I said, what do you need for the NDA? And then he writes back, I see you finally responded. And I go, it's not personal. It's not like I'm making a ton of content or streaming. Do you want me to look at a 30 second clip? I can. And he goes, I understand we're all busy, but I'd appreciate a more prompt action next time. I'm like, can I be honest? I'm not, watch I'm not, why you're I'm not sure why you're messaging me in character. I answered you right now because you asked me in a way that felt like you just wanted my help to look at something for 30 seconds. You know, creator to creator. Your response or lack thereof will not go on. No, what the fuck does that mean, bro? I don't appreciate being threatened because I didn't watch your new video on my main channel, especially when I haven't really produced much of anything in that time frame. And if I was streaming regularly, I probably would have checked it out. He goes, I'm just checking in. I'm just asking if you'd understand where I'm coming from. I understand where you're coming from. Do you understand where I'm coming from? And he goes, yeah, I apologize. So like, and then we had like a normal conversation and then we were talking like adults and we responded back and forth like YouTubers. And then I helped him. That was my point. I don't know why. Why are you messaging me in your ARG? Like, why are you talking to me? Like, you're in the fucking video. Okay? Um, so then we had that moment that I'm talking about here. And I'll leave the rest of this private. Because it was just like a normal conversation after that. And it was fine. You know? He, he, had, he had issues. And then I, I fucking told him my issues or whatever. And we came to a fucking normal place. Right? But this whole thing is so stupid. You shouldn't be in this position to begin with. You shouldn't be writing psychotic fucking messages like and th like threatening people basically privately to fucking cover your videos and shit like that. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Dude's always in character. Again, like, but he's totally normal and fun to talk to or whatever offline. He was fine on the Half-Baked Podcast. Did you talk to Mama Max about Tommy? No, I basically stayed out of that. I'd encourage you to think more carefully before projecting yourself in YouTube comment sections. Actually, he asked me to try to get in touch with Tommy, and I just told him that's not going to happen. It'll be honest, this is way too edgy to the point it's almost laughable. It being so edgy means no mainstream media large YouTuber will ever care or listen. This is the sort of thing that has to be done. And this is what happened, because like I'm not the only person who got a message like that, and then probably went, who the fuck is this guy talking to me like this? Like, what the, why the fuck? What, I'm sure other people read his first messages that he was sending and he said, like, I'm not going to respond to you at all. And now he doesn't get it. And now there's, like, people who probably would have helped if he made a normal video who are just kind of like, this guy's weird, dude. Fuck that guy. You know what I mean? Tommy asked him to call. I think he wanted a private call. Um, Nick, my brainwashing waves will make you care. No, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting suckered, but I understand. That, like, I feel bad for the girl, I guess. And, like, if he really does give a shit about this stuff, maybe I'm just being a sucker, but I don't know. I would hope he just starts doing it correctly. <sighs> Instead of not making content at all, I wish he would just, like, work with police, make videos on people who were caught, and talk about how he caught them that were arrested. I, I, how come there's no pedophile hunter channel that gets people arrested by police and makes the video after? Is there no money in that? Like, I don't... Like, I feel like that would be... Like a triumphant, like, look, I got this one. Look, I got that one. Look, I did this. I don't know. Done professionally and properly, and presented as such. Filling it with edge just ruins it. Honestly, it feels like an ARG, but it's real that just turns it awful. Sort of like something out of 2010. It's a brilliant creative... Pr I mean, that's the thing, is he just kind of comes off delusional like that, where it's like, I, it should be common knowledge... That you should just, when you're talking to somebody privately, you should just talk to them like a person. And then he, but he went like, like, it's not like he's doing this for money. He's DMing me or whatever, asking me to cover his video. So there's no like audience to watch it. There's no, there's no money incentive there. He just made a really stupid social decision, but I don't understand why he did that. Um, and I don't think it was malicious. I just think he was fucking 
playing a character. Process, but creativity doesn't do shit to actually help people. I At just don't think he gets it. Artistic creativity. I appreciate And I think he's been successful too many times to get it. I think so many people argued with me two years ago and they're like, Nick, you don't understand. His victims, well, not his victims, sorry. Uh, the victims who watch it love this stuff and you're actually the problem. When you say that his videos are unprofessional and that uh, he should go fucking talk to the police and all that stuff, you're actually the problem because he's actually putting people in jail. This is what people were telling me at the time. So when you have an, an audience that is so fucking hardcore defending you at every step of the way and then all of a sudden they just stop one day, it's kind of mind boggling. Like once, once reality sets in and suddenly Nick's opinion is the widespread opinion, now it's like, well, I've won so many times Maybe if I don't change everything, I'll go back to the way that it was. Okay, uh, you're honest. Because when you sit here and you like, I don't know, not to say fuck you chat to any of the 772 people watching, but I didn't get notorious fucking defense from you guys two years ago when we were talking about Lance Russ pedo tube. There were some people who were like, yeah, okay. Most people were like, Nick, this guy fucking hunts pedos. Why are you criticizing him? Well, guess what, motherfucker? The gravy train ended. Feedback. But it's crucial. We're living in realityville now. To differentiate between your personal opinion and objective facts. Every single day, issues like this go unreported or under-discussed precisely because they lack the flashiness or drama or edge that can- But your story didn't lack. You know, he's right. He's 100% right. Every single day, a story of a child getting abused gets completely ignored in favor of some stupid drama topic. I'm sure that there were bigger stories that were more, that could have been more impactful about groomed kids than fucking Sniper Wolf when Sniper Wolf was every single, we didn't need 500 videos on Sniper Wolf. I understand that. I almost contributed to that. I get what he's talking about. There are kids who get abused that nobody hears about because they're fucking- Maybe there's certain races, maybe there are certain places, maybe there's certain shit going on, maybe they're fucking the wrong, I don't know, maybe they're just, they're not photographically fucking whatever, that they're not going to end up on the front page of a fucking newspaper or something like that. There are total factors that are outside of our control that protect stories like, that are like, sorry, suppress stories like this that shouldn't do it. I get it. But you're making a story about a vampire werewolf sex cult, online sex cult, where people are like raping children and convincing them that they're demigods and the Leviathan will come get them if they tell. That is exactly what you need to get a compelling story on your channel. You, ha you have a rare, like your specific scenario that you've selected here to explain this point is the worst one because you have everything you need to make a viral video to defend your victim. Like uh, the victim that you are defending would be a rather way to put it. like there is so much that you could do here with the topic that you've been given that it seems to be wasted on this argument that doesn't apply to it captures mainstream attention my approach has always been to fill that gap by making these critical stories unignorable even if that means employing creative techniques in a media landscape that's constantly shifting its focus the goal is to give these stories the attention they so desperately need and deserve. And they would have gotten more attention if you just did the video the regular way. And for the one time in your entire discography, I can fucking say it with absolute truth. A hundred fucking percent. If you didn't change your name and beg a bunch of YouTubers to make content and made a video by the books like a Turkey Tom Degenerates video to explain your situation, your video would have far outperformed exactly what you posted and it would have reached more people. And I couldn't say that for Wake Up Pedo Tube and Answer Us Pedo Tube and I had to concede when things change on the platform after that, even though it wasn't directly tied to you. But on this case, on this sing singular story out of your entire backlog, you're wrong. While you might find the style jarring, remember that the subject matter itself is far more... That doesn't work anymore. Not the subject matter itself. Don't say, well, it's jarring, that other people like it. it they didn't this time. So what are you going to do to innovate your content so you can continue helping kids? Don't listen to all the people who say that you're a clout, a clout demon or say that... Because even, even if you are, even if you are, and you can help one kid doing it, it's still morally just. So ignore all the people saying you're a clout demon. How are you going to take your product, your content, and improve it to meet your end goal of helping kids?
it's time to innovate, Max. You got to change something. You can't do this again. Settling. And it is clear that you understand that this is a real story. You're making a huge problem seem like an ARG. No one's actually going to take this seriously. Okay, Patrick Bateman. Your comment is a paradox. If you acknowledge that this is a huge problem, then why would you argue that it won't be taken seriously? The approach I have employed in the opening two minutes of the trailer is meant to offer a visceral experience of the tactics used by cult leaders, precisely to underline how serious and manipulative these issues can be. All right, Chad, watch your screens. You're about to be engulfed by the cult. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so all right. I hadn't done it in a while. I, I hadn't done it in a while. Okay, I hadn't done it in a while. That was. <laughs> if any of the YouTube subreddit people were watching, that was a really bad time to join. Yeah. <laughs> no this one gives a fuck about cults and the wait, wait. So here, no one gives a fuck about cults though, except uh, Wacko and the Demon Scare. Dude, people would absolutely care about the Vampire Werewolf Leviathan cult. I'm sorry. There's. It's just so easy to pitch. Are you kidding? Like, it's so easy to pitch. To make it palpable and immediate for the viewer. The video is not an ARG. The purpose was to provoke and analyze influencer reactions, specifically when the content suddenly shifts to an extremely serious topic. I wanted people to click on the video being like, oh, what's this? Watch me brainwash your favorite influencers. Oh, Chat, hey chat, let's do this video. Yeah, that's what he envisioned. He envisioned he was gonna aim at that, watch me fucking brainwash your favorite influencers, and then XQC's gonna watch it, and he's thinking it, because we're, you gotta understand, we're not playing correctly. We're watching it knowing it's a video about a girl that was using an ARG cover-up. What he was trying to do was clickbait XQC into accidentally watching the I mean, from that perspective, I guess it makes a little bit more sense. I don't really see anybody using it in the, in the way it was actually described. It was like, I'm going to get a retarded YouTuber to watch a video about cults, and if they stay here for two full minutes, then they accidentally promote my victim that I wanted to... Uh, not my victim. Not his victim. Uh, they promote the victim that he's trying to champion. Um, again, I don't know why it has to be a, a game of sleight of hand. I don't know why it has to be a trick. I think if you just make a good video explaining it, it'll be better. But if I keep talking about this and saying the exact same things, people are going to leave because they know exactly what I what exactly what I think. Uh, but like, I don't know. It seems like he was just jumping in to fucking try to pull the wool over some YouTubers' eyes to get more eyes on the project. It doesn't, I don't know. This obviously did not happen, but I think it would have been fun. If you find the format disconcerting, Perhaps it's worth considering that the approach has successfully captured your attention and start. Well, we're watching it for better or for worse. I mean, I signed an NDA, so I was in this for the long haul. Started a dialogue by driving you to the comments on this video. And by NDA, it was literally just, I will watch this. On he was like, I need you to watch this on your main channel. I go, I will watch this on my second channel. I need you to watch this on your main channel this week. I will watch this on my second channel when I see fit, when I choose to stream. Okay, um, deal. <laughs> Wait, you signed it? Yeah, I don't know. Who cares? I feel like it's kind of a low. I signed it on a. Um, let me see if I can find my signature. Um, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> I signed it on a on a PlayStation receipt. Signed it on a, on, a, on a fucking PlayStation controller for seeing. <laughs> Whoa, asking PewDiePie to come back to address stuff like this when he stated that he's quitting YouTube to focus on his family. But ultimately, I understand your point. What are the twos? What are you talking about? I don't know. So I fucking write twos, asshole. Is that legally binding? I don't know. Yeah, legally binding that I had to watch his video. 
Yeah, the, it was like an NDA saying, I'm going to show you my video before it comes out. Don't leak it before it comes out. After it comes out, you can say whatever you want. I appreciate that you ultimately understand. Fuck you guys. My point. That also means you'll understand the magnitude of the issues we're confronting leaves no room for silence. If PewDiePie can come back and talk about Sniper Wolf, then he and others can talk about the- I hate you guys. I'm gonna fucking ban my whole chat. You know what? I noticed that none of you assholes who are making fun of my twos are fucking members on the channel, so... Mmm... I don't know. Nightmarish realities that millions of- I'm sorry, hold on. We just missed like one of the weirdest parts of the video. If PewDiePie can come back and talk about Sniper Wolf, then he and others can talk about the nightmarish realities that millions of children are enduring every day and how our collective inaction is failing them on a global scale. Every influencer, regardless of their current engagement level, has a platform that could be used to drive significant change. There is an array of methods to address these issues in a way that is both impactful and accessible to their audience. As hypothetically, because this will never happen, hypothetically, how many people think it would be good if every major influencer spent 25% uh, of their time hunting down child predators? I mean... I don't know if that would work out very well, but let's just say, and they were successful at it. It would be really good if it were, they were successful at it, but in reality, they'd, pro they'd be pretty bad at it. They'd probably dock somebody, get somebody fucking killed uh, who didn't actually do anything wrong. That's probably what would happen, let's be honest. It reminds me of, uh, who's that girl who um, just got a bunch of her followers doxxed? Uh, it wasn't over pedo stuff. It was because he was racist or something. He like said N-word poo or something, and they got and it was like a Disney Channel girl who got the Sky Jackson. They would they would really Sky Jackson people. They would get the wrong person, or get a person who didn't really do anything, um, and they would just probably get them fucking killed. To be honest, that's probably what would happen if that was the case. But I don't know. I feel like if everyone was working toward a common goal and a utopia somewhere where everyone's doing things correctly, it would be like a it would be a positive for sure if, it, if everyone was like invested in this cause. Um, in reality, though, it doesn't work. Nobody has to cover anything. If people don't want to think about child predators, I mean, in the first video, well, earlier in this video, actually, he says, like, if this kind of, ma like, subject matter for you is too dark, then just unsubscribe. Don't watch my content. And that's the right answer. If you don't like the ARG pedo hunting videos and you want to unsubscribe from his channel, I mean, he seems like he's all allowing that, right? He's like, yeah, go for it, dude, do it. But if you're a content creator, there's a double standard. It's not like, oh, this is really gross or whatever. It's, well, you make money online and you have a large audience, so if you're not doing anything, you're morally bad. That's what I'm getting out of this video. Where if you're just a casual viewer and you don't want to watch it, you can go. But if you're, if, if you're not interested in covering pedo stuff and getting into the fucking weeds on it and doing probably more than what we're doing right now just by kind of sharing it, even though I guess that is what he was asking at minimum, just to talk about it like we are, you're kind of like, you have a double standard there. It's like, influencers, you have to watch it or you're a bad person. Um... And then an average person, if they don't watch, they can just jump. I don't know. As people with the power... I don't think everybody... I, I don't think you should be able to push somebody to do any subject. I f felt this Slimy, on random wrong. mundane drama topics, you know? After this video, we'll run through donuts to catch up. To influence public opinion, we are not doing enough. I am genuinely grateful for those of you who've actually taken... By the way, just for a show of hands... I'm sure, all, how many of you guys have watched somebody cover these exact videos or talk about Max in general? Who's been, who here has been from Lyrics' stream? Who watched Lyrics' stream? Stop making fun of my fucking twos. You were there. Anthony Does Stuff was there. Jalibri was, Jabri, Jabrilli. Um, a lot of people were here. Someone was here from Tommy. Um, Toastify watched Lyrics' streams. They watched Tommy talk about it. Out of all the people that you have seen cover this drama has anyone anyone been as charitable to mama max than i have been that's the question seriously out of all the people here because i don't see people telling me that i'm like sucking his dick or anything so it's not like i'm going too far but like is anybody here seeing anybody else who has been willing to give this guy the benefit of the doubt
on fucking anything. Some ordinary podcast was. Well, those are his friends. I don't know if Mudahar is still friends with him, but those are his friends. Um, so just to be clear, um, just to be clear, Max, when you're watching this, like, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here, but I don't know. I don't know why you wanted me to respond to this. I'm not going to be, um, I, it was, it was never going to go well, but I, I hope I'm doing the time uh, to I provide don't know. I hope I'm being fair. Constructive criticism. You are clearly Z at a t Fuck you guys. Looking at my actions. As you can see, I am listening. Although I'm still confused by the elusive psychosocial dynamics that prohibit humans from consuming. Funny enough, Nick, I didn't hear Night Docs going at Max. Do you guys want to listen to the Night Docs debate? We'll do a brief a brief interjection and we'll listen to some of the, the Night Docs debate cuz it was kind of short. A classic after hours debate where they were where he was defending serious okay. topics in a creative manner but if talking head videos are the language that the internet understands then let's speak it so last week i released a charity video in again can anybody see this video it's a charity video it is for charity i understand that but can anybody who's watching this exact video that you're seeing right now not See, this is anything else other than my video did bad and you were the problem. That's what I get from this section. Speak it. So, last week, I released a charity video in collaboration with the survivors of a destructive sex cult that has victimized hundreds of minors. Despite its significance, it turned out to be the worst performing video on my channel. While I fully accept responsibility for the video's underperformance, I want to make it clear. Before the video even hit the platform, the survivor was integrally involved. Nothing was done without her explicit approval. The wave of criticism by detractors about a narrative that is not theirs to tell reveals behaviors that aren't just unhelpful, they are harmful. As a result, I will be disabling comments on the trailer, steering the discourse towards external platforms to encourage more outside discussions. But I think it's important to clarify <coughs> the intention behind this project. I designed this trailer as a catalyst for meaningful discussions, laced with hidden layers and nuanced elements to encourage in-depth analysis. These secrets are breadcrumbs that guide viewers toward a deeper understanding of the issues. To each and every one of you who took the extra effort to actually explore the whole video and all of the linked resources, I extend my heartfelt gratitude. You know who you are, and your willingness to engage deeply with such pressing issues is not just commendable, but you are the very reason why I have faith in humanity i just i don't i don't understand it doesn't make any sense to me i don't get it why is the video clapping back longer than the video about the allegations why is the section in the video about fucking calling more youtubers longer than the section in the video about the allegations in the first video why is he saying he's gonna take fucking accountability for the reasons the video underperformed and spend fucking 17 minutes explaining why it's everybody else's fault like <sighs> No normal viewer is going to go that deep. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not critiquing that. I think the putting little fucking QR codes in your video is cool. I stuck fucking Easter eggs all across random videos. You know what made me happy? Whenever people found them. Oh, yeah, I thought it was so fucking cool. It's like, oh, my God, you watched my video long enough to find some stupid bullshit that I hid in the corner? That's so fucking awesome. I really like that. I totally understand where it's coming from on that. Um, but, again, it's the nature of the video. If he's putting anything important in there, it's probably not going to get seen by my mainstream fucking people. I was hoping to achieve the same level of effort from other influencers. Stop fucking making fun of my twos, you fucking asshole. Darcy Evans is spamming twos in the chat. We proactively reached out to many different reaction channels. I didn't even get this message. I got a different hoping one. Hoping to pique their interest in engaging with the topic of such great... Again, that's why I'm pretty sure he's not going to give a fuck that I leaked his DM. He wrote stuff like this to everybody. ...importance. Yet the very purpose of the video falls short when these creators stop responding and choose not to engage. 
only a handful out of the tons we reached out to <laughs> gave any type of feedback whatsoever. I understand the sensitivity. Stop, I'm gonna go post on r slash suicide watch that you're making fun of my twos. Give the topic discourages engagement. Yet this only underscores the urgency of discussing these issues. I had hoped that influencers, especially those who've interacted with my content before, Muda would Phil. step up. Yeah. Even if it was part of a more lighthearted stream, like a Halloween special. Unfortunately, That's it's- All right, this is the- <laughs> All right, while Edwin is on the screen, um, why would you want a fucking- Why would you want- Why would you want a- <laughs> Why would you want that to be a Halloween special, dude? Why a Halloween special? Oh, a fun little ARG to be our Halloween special. Like, I just, I don't understand. Like, why? Why? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Seems that self-preservation outweighs child welfare for most influencers. A disturbing realization that aligns with the central themes of the film. After consulting with multiple experts in cult psychology, it became clear to me that many influencers employ cult-like techniques to build and retain their audiences. While some use their influence responsibly, there are too many who leverage it for personal gain, often at the expense of impressionable young minds. For this reason, I chose to brand the channel as God Cult. Highlighting the uncomfortable truth that cult-like methods pervade across all platforms. This lack of accountability underscores the urgent need for both creators and consumers to approach online content carefully and critically. The trailer used the same techniques that real cults use to manipulate audiences. The difference being transparency. While real cults disguise their dark motives, I made my intentions clear from the beginning, starting with the very title of the video. This was an attempt to educate by demonstration. I thought it was an edu- wait, didn't you explain before that the title of the video is that stream big streamers will click on it by accident? Did I make that up? Wait, did I completely read that wrong? I thought it was literally just to fucking trap streamers in the video. Even if the stylized approach might not suit everyone. Perhaps my creative vision is influenced by my autistic traits and don't We're gonna keep moving. Fine with the preferred formats of YouTube. But I'd argue that talking head videos like this one can sometimes perpetuate parasocial relationships. Something I am actively trying to combat. Dude, that's like a Bo Black's bridge moment, you know? But I have observed. Even with what a Bo Black's bridge moment will be getting so high you flag a video? Is that his bridge moment? My own content. That online audiences prefer easily digestible videos rather than being challenged or provoked. Over the years, I nurtured the hope that my work could encourage viewers to think more critically and engage more deeply with the content they are consuming. Unfortunately, the trend has moved in the opposite direction towards superficial interactions. The tendency to skim through videos or bypass additional resources highlights this shift. While- Dog, nobody clicked the description. When you say additional resources, that is like additional people need to give a fuck. All right, nobody ever reads the fucking descriptions. Never. Half the people just fill the descriptions with metadata so the video performs better. That's not happening. No, you're never gonna say, hey guys, here's my video. Here's all the information, read it. Two people might do that. I recognize the appeal. <laughs> Bro is speaking fluent Japanese. This format is much easier to produce. All right, we're zooming. And still often outperforms more labor-intensive projects due to its familiarity and accessibility. It is very unfortunate that this format overshadows projects designed creatively around the subjects they are discussing. <sighs> so, to address this, I will continue making videos like this one. This video. Why? No, that's not the right lesson. You're supposed to make less videos like this one. Ever.
who feels very exploitive itself. Your feelings. Fuck you, not the ZX speed. Fuck you guys. About the video, without explaining further, are noted. Here's a message. From I'm fucking sending you to fucking Carl Juniors and Hardys or what was his name? Camden Gerard. Da I'm I'm gonna fucking sick Camden Gerard Davis on your ass chatters. Statistically, fucking thirty percent of you guys are underage. All right. If you fucking keep making fun of me, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him up. A survivor herself. Hey everyone. Um, I'm Spencer. I am here to talk today about some of the reactions towards the trailer. I appreciate every bit of support that we have received and i appreciate all the constructive feedback i feel bad for her too she's getting fucking left out to dry not like just in general she's getting shit on by a bunch of people first heard some really funny jokes but i mean i'm conflicted what i do not appreciate is people being offended on my behalf what i do not appreciate is my story being ignored because people want to clutch their pearls Ma'am, what you should appreciate is someone telling you that you should not be working with Max. At least not encouraging him to produce the content that he's heard. He claims that you're totally down with every Slimy single thing that was happening, uh, that you encourage the video to look that way. Um, I'm just telling you, you should probably urge him to do it more by the books next time. I don't know. Probably speaking through deaf ears here. Um... So I don't know. I'm sure that he treats you well. It's just I don't understand why you'd want this. I have been fighting. And I don't think the people who are attacking that video, I think there are people doing this, but I don't think the main people who are critiquing his style, who've been critiquing his style, are critiquing this person in general. For so long, screaming my story from the rooftops. Oh, we got a Z dollar dono. Thank you guys. I'll get to those so in a second. Can see justice. <laughs> Never writing again in front of you guys. Dude, draw my life. No chance. Nope. Never. You've not only disrespected Fuck you guys. Me, but you've also disrespected the other survivors. You guys are dicks. By ignoring this issue at hand. <laughs> Children are still being abused by Camden Gerard Davis. Stop making me laugh with disease. She's talking about important shit. On March 18th, 2016. Spencer, a 16-year-old girl from Wiley, Texas. Children are still being abused by Camden Gerard Davis. Oh, I'm sorry. 16. Spencer, a 16-year-old girl from Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared, lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet. She actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous sex cult led by a child predator posing as a werewolf god. The man had recruited hundreds of young children, subjecting them to sending CP, kidnapping, assault, and attempted trafficking. Almost seven years later, Spencer and the other survivors shared their stories with me. This video serves as their scream for action against their perpetrator. All right, so this is all what we've seen already. I got a question. Did he make that into a TikTok? And try to push it that way in a vertical format. I mean, Weasley, fuck. I know. I'm sure all you guys don't want me to give actual fucking advice, but like, I'm trying to give actual advice. Why can't he like put that in a TikTok and try to spread it that way? You know, TikTok is like the perfect place for this stuff these days. That shit goes to the top. You want to hear an allegation avenue? TikTok is the way to go. You should have her speak on TikTok about it. Talk about the vampire shit. That might work better than what you're doing. It also could be used to move people to your channel and promote it that way. I mean, let me just look this up because we're done with this video now, right? Um, if I go to his shorts, are we going to see a lot? No, he's not using shorts. He's not using shorts to promote his content at all. That's another avenue. You know? He did make a TikTok, but then it, but it was way too late. Yeah, I mean, that's like the first thing I would do. That's exactly where you'd want this girl to talk. That's the, that's the platform I would boost her on. You know? All right, we're two videos in. After this, we have one more video, and then we have some stream stuff to look at. But we're going to do an intermission now because, again, this is a deep dive stream, so we're going to be at this for another, at least another two hours. Uh, we're going to watch the... Um, I'm going to do donos, and then we're going to watch the Night Docs debate on Mama Max that was on After Hours originally. Because um, it's short. Let me see. 
I said it was short. It's not short. We'll watch some of it because I don't remember it. Um, oh, God. And by the way, shout out to Max real quick. He recorded audio for this. Like, even when I was shitting on him and I wasn't, like, winning, he went out of his way to record me audio that was really funny for the intro to my video, uh, debating about why he's bad. So, like, I don't know, man. I appreciated that. What's the name of that? Oh, shut up. Leave them alone. <laughs> They're mad at me. Um, but yeah, quickly, donos, uh, real fast. Um, where are we? Agmar. All right. Subscribe to Himbleton, became a member of all. Look up Jimmy Kimmel. We already did this. Uh, um, okay. Pigeon Salad became a member. Buzzsaw became a member. Raps Chick became a member. Somebody gifted a membership. Subscribe to Hem Himbleton, gave $5. He publicly said he, they were living together until she, uh, he finds her a place to stay. And lately he said if she wants to leave. Uh, Transmaggle sent five. Keem just went live, competing for views and trying to cover up allegations. Subscribe to Himbleton with another fiver. Uh, he said on live stream he didn't even bother contacting the police for this one. Subscribe to Himbleton sent another five. The reviews he talked about were a retcon. He included the names of them in the titles, including the R ones and the incest ones um toastify max is 25 and messing up a situation that is really that is a really obvious solution just make a video there's a reason that i didn't hop on the french girl video with a voice changer and vague arg when i was 17 making that video thank you toastify i appreciate the 20 even though it came from euro cuck money <laughs> um stefan corbino with a five canadian uh one of my mods one of my mods okay Oh, the homie is live. Happy New Year's, dude. Anything planned for Z0, Z4? Fuck you guys. Darcy Evans, Z0, Z4 will be Dax's year. Vault, enjoy my Z dollars. Thank you. Uh, Renatold Hughes, I thought it was every... Uh, I thought it was everyone liked... Wait, I thought it was everyone liked easier to comprehend media, just not YouTube videos. Um, Yeah, it's true. That's true. Guys, listen, just shilling. I'm shilling a bit. I'm, I, I learned from Chud Logic. You have to shill. If you become a member and you give me your money, your money, you now have emotes, okay? You have the soy nod, which I stole from Chud Logic. You have the tipster beer that everyone stole from me. You have the John Swan that I stole from John Swan. You have the um, Ultimate Rape Review and It's Time Ultimate Rape Review, which is uh, for this show, but they'll stay uh, because we're probably going to do a lot of these over the course of the year, given the actual drama. Nick Diorio Head, Augie Face. We have a um, Sergeant Braphog. We have Me But a Hot Dog. We have the Average H3H3 Redditor. And then we have Turkey Tom after the allegations. So, um, yeah, so I stole this from Chud. Uh, I also stole the whole um, the whole gimmick from Chad, but uh, we are going to be continuing right after this. <laughs> All right, so he actually made this for me, and I think it's one of the funniest things I've ever received. Corpse, remember when you were making out with your first girlfriend, and you came right as she touched your leg? It was me, Barry. I jerked you off at super speed so it seemed like you nutted at just a woman's touch. <laughs> I, I love this video. That is my favorite thing that's ever been made for me. It's literally the Eobard Thawd meme, but he read it in his fucking voice, and then I added the pick aside YouTube. <laughs> speed, so it's me, Barry. I jerked you off at super speed, so it seemed like you nutted at just a woman's touch. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Given that the whole Reddit is probably going to flag the fuck out of this channel, I'm probably going to have to um, <laughs> use this intro again for the first time in a while when I cut that beginning segment out. <laughs> Woohoo! You guys saw it live. Oh, man. All right, now I'll play some video games while we'll listen to this. But this is a debate between me and the YouTuber Night Docs. So 
On future Nick here, I just wanted to let everybody know that I just had a conversation with Mama. By the way, I think I I did this debate right before we spoke. Like it was literally, I got off the debate to talk to Max. <laughs> Max, and it should be uploaded right now on the Half-Baked Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, this conversation is good, but very different than the one that I actually had with Max. So, uh, yeah, I recommend checking it out. What have you got to say, Nick? Oh, okay, what's going on, man? Um, I've heard next to none of this. I don't have, like, a ton of time. I'm actually talking to Max tonight. Um, so I have that in a little while. But, um, so I, I heard you mention that you do, like, stuff with like politics and stuff like i have no idea what kind of content you make on your channel no. but you're not like a pedophile hunter like i'm talking about like you like the january 6th i've helped stuff. max with a few of his videos but no i'm not a pedophile hunter. so so typically that like, you don't really follow under the same like genre as him um we are definitely there is a huge overlap in the audience for myself mama max the, next bow yeah. barely sociable all that yeah, so next it's more, Mama dark, Max, it's they more make a... dark documentaries and stuff. Did you see this guy promote these videos? I'm just curious, just because this is a year ago and I'm petty. Did he put anything out to defend Max? Um, did Nexpo put anything out to promote this girl? Mm -hmm, but I'm just wondering. I don't know. Like yours aren't typically like yours aren't being removed for the same reason his are being removed. It's not that they're being removed for different reasons. It's that the, the broader point that Max was making is that when things are removed, there's too much opacity in terms of um, in terms of how YouTube handles it. So there's no viable mechanism for oh, there's creators. The, yeah, nothing's fair. Uh, I see tons of situations where there's like bullshit that stays that, up though. and goes down. It's, it's, not, it's not about fair. It's about mm -hmm. it's about. YouTube is not running the platform effectively because if if I'm a factory manager or something like that and I've got tons of workers that are making sausage. And By the way, this is about obviously not the most recent scenario because that's recent. Uh, this is about the answer us pedo tube, right? Or is it YouTube versus you know, it's pick a side YouTube versus pedophiles. So my stance was there's a way to do this. It's just to not say that if you don't support this hashtag, you support like child rape, like pick a side YouTube. Do you love pedophiles or children? It just sounds like a retarded fucking message and all that. How do I know what's going on at the floor level? If all I'm talking to is the customers who buy the sausage, I may not know about workplace grievances going on, harassment stuff going on. I may not know about um, oh yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with any of this. Uh, I'll let you go back to that in a second. But my, my point I was trying to make is that like there are tons of creators who got on that video and they have like very different issues. Um, historically, um, obviously the pedophile like hunting community has to deal with this a lot with takedowns and stuff like that when their content features uh, names of people that are typically need to be censored uh, when they probably shouldn't or stuff that like could appear to be sexual or get dinged for a reason other than why it, it actually should be taken down. Basically. Um, this is similar to stuff that people who were documenting uh, ISIS videos, like ISIS recruitment videos, had to deal with a couple of years ago because the YouTube algorithm couldn't dictate the difference between the guy critiquing the ISIS recruitment video and the actual ISIS recruitment video. Uh, it's very similar to stuff you see, like the COVID stuff right now, where uh, videos of people like debunking misinformation are being taken down because the algorithm is sensing the misinformation in the video as if that's something that needs to be taken down. My Why are videos going down? The question. Well, this guy's defending a pedophile. Surely that video should remain up on YouTube. Well, YouTube's TOS doesn't say that's the case, especially after this debate happened, YouTube changed their whole policy on sting operations and made those, um, for lack of a better term, banned if you're not using police inter intervention, which most of these groups weren't. Me and Augie did a debate about that on Hooked. You can watch it. It's the, I beat him so bad he never came back. But um, yeah, no, that was the issue. It's like, well, is this a YouTube problem? And my argument was, no, it's not a YouTube problem. It's like, affecting so many different areas of this website. Well, I mean, it, it, not that is it a YouTube problem. Is it like a YouTube pedophile problem? But no, it affects like tons of different demographics, especially COVID content. The way that COVID content was taken down and um, and far right content, you'll have lefties get hit all the time for critiquing a right winger's video while the right winger's video stays up. But the lefty who's covering it gets dinged for fucking hate speech. It, it happened to Xander Hall at least five times. You know what I mean? Like, this is something that happens all across the platform. It's not a uniquely pedophilic fucking situation. The point is that, like, YouTube sucks for a lot I of fucking like. people, even in that video, people who aren't necessarily from that community. My problem is when you 
bunch all these people together with legitimate grievances and attach that to a very showy piece where you sound like a hotline Miami character um, mixed with like Batman and, and the Mandarin from Iron Man and say that YouTube loves pedophiles and they have to pick a choice. Um, I don't think uh, you're saying like all publicity is good publicity. I'm saying that I think this is going to be completely brushed off like his last one was. Are you familiar with him doing like wake up pedo tube in 2020? I was in that video. I said this about the last thing he, he did. I think that's the absolute worst way of going about anything ever. It's exactly what that Matt guy did with the, uh, what was it, YouTube YouTube Wake Up, I think it was, where he paints the platform as a safe haven for pedophiles. That doesn't affect anyone except the creators on there. Wow, I wonder why Charlie didn't respond this year. I wonder why Charlie didn't make a video about it. I mean, it seems pretty clear, right? Based off of his statement last year. He's been fucked by YouTube. A lot. Mama Max as a creator has. But his way of going about it is like burn the whole thing down for everybody. Like that had next to... I'm shocked. Has anybody even reacted to this while they've been covering this drama? Like, this is literally exactly why. <laughs> I mean, he told you straight up last year why. No impact. It had such little impact that he made the same video again the year after. I would... Um. So, I mean, it depends on what you 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 are saying as... It depends on what you define as results. So he says Charlie's video where he interviewed the CEO of YouTube aged poorly. I would argue so did his hashtag. Hold on, let's 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 finish the the previous point though. Oh yeah, that, yeah, same thing. You can go. So the it depends on what you 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 are gonna say is results because did things in terms <coughs> of policy change at YouTube? To be honest, actually neither of us really know for sure. I mean, there there's tangibly. Well, now we know they made Sting operations bannable. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess they did change. <laughs> they made it worse for him. <laughs> we've got evidence that no, nothing. Whoops, sorry. Um, we've got tangible evidence that nothing actually changed. But we don't know if there were softer things introduced in the code that might have softened things up a little bit. Because I will say monetization has actually gotten a little bit better um, in the last few years. I have a much easier I agree time. with you. That's why it was so weird out when Mudahar it's, said that it's gotten not... worse in 2021. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Mudahar will know better than I do. I don't know if you've ever spoken to Mudahar. Mudahar is a good friend of mine. Oh, he's a regular on this show. I know. I, I talked okay, to him good. this morning. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. So Muda is extremely well versed in machine learning. Mm -hmm. Um, he's he's been involved with some stuff in the past that would just blow your mind in terms of like what he's. Don't uh, worry, buddy. I was I was begging him for help on my college homework. Uh <laughs> oh, dude, it goes. <laughs> That's true. I needed help in my coding class, and I asked Mudahar. Because Mudahar is brand no, because he's a very smart individual. Way beyond like, uh, you know, yeah. stuff that that he could help you with on homework and all that. I mean, this guy has written. I mean, he he routinely writes machine learning algorithms and stuff. I mean, he he knows. Oh boy, do I know? <laughs> knows knows his stuff, and that's obviously evidenced by just the content that he makes and what level of technicality that he's talking about the subjects. But mm -hmm. I'm kind of losing the plot here a little bit. So the the um. The, the results that I feel that... I like letting people have that opportunity to kind of talk about them and stuff they like or people they're cool with to kind of like disarm and get us like to... Because I mean, it, it got a little hostile for there for a second, very briefly when I was responding. He's like, actually, let me finish or whatever. So it's always nice to have like a little slowdown moment so we can keep the conversation civil. I don't know. I sometimes jump for that when I feel like the combo is getting a little heated and I don't necessarily want it to be... If I want it to be heated, we'll just go heated, but were successful with the wake up pedo tube or answers pedo pedo tube it got people talking and it got awareness which is part of the lore i guess you could say of what is also taking place here because that's also contributing to the conversation that we're having of this time around evidenced by the fact that we've just referenced the answer us pedo tube and hashtag answer us youtube and things like that that's kind of my problem answer us pedo tube wasn't that about a mama max video that got taken down and they didn't want to put it back up so he made also, that whole campaign about that video and but a year later it happened again and it was piggybacking off of um charlie's answer us youtube it all mm -hmm. kind of came out yeah but there's a huge difference I'm, i don't know why i'm debating myself debating him but like there's a huge difference between answer us pedo tube and answer us youtube yeah youtube we need an answer youtube if you don't support me and put my video back up you want kids to get raped all right man jesus the fuck out around the same time so i think that's kind of why he chose the the hashtag that he did i don't know for sure but like i mean it it is kind of a um kind of a callback to 
something that was already on people's minds. I, I think possibly I, I didn't actually have that level of a discussion with Max about it at the time. But but do you um, think like referring to it as like pedo tube and saying stuff like uh, the pedophiles that YouTube loves uh, or the children? that Yeah, it was like. Lee, what was it like the pedophiles that you love or the children like it was really fucking brutal how ridiculous that was i think that video is down it has to be lay claim to the pedophiles that you love or something like that it was uh yeah. can i just talk about like how i get dude everyone's saying like this new video was so bad um this new video is so bad, and they're critiquing the new Mama Max video while they defended this last year. Alright, what's up, boys? So, I'm not really a the information. Oh, God, where is the actual video? Does anyone have the original? Can they ping it to me? Because I can't find it. Answer us, pedo tube. Originally from Children. And what we saw. Watch this. months ago, my fans and I discovered one of the most massive Peter rings on the surface web. Mobile apps that have been around for years, calling themselves Tinder alternatives for children. And what we saw was the most vile and repulsive shit no human should ever have the displeasure of seeing. Old men bullied out of our grasp. You. Children are exploited, molested, and Jesus raped. fucking Christ. Yeah, I can't believe this video got fucking taken. I don't think this one didn't even get taken down. I don't think this is even the right video. Wait, that's answer us pedo too. Oh, this is the first one. This is the first one. That was the first one everyone defended vehemently. I'm sorry. There were two different ones. Um, yeah, that f I meant pick a side. I'm sorry. I went to the wrong one. These videos are fucking crazy, dude. Here, pick a side, YouTube. This is the second one. That one was fucking crazy. On November 26th, 2021, my good friend Max published a video exposing the colossal pedo ring that is IMVU, or he and... This is the video that everyone was defending. That does bring us all together. We don't like pedophiles. Something you don't seem to see eye to eye with us on. What the fuck do you mean by that? YouTube, you seem to love pedophiles. What? Like, this is how he introduced this question. Topic so that even something like Spider-Man looks like a microscopic speck of dust compared to us. And tonight, YouTube will choose. Let die the pedophiles they love. What? Or suffer the little children. And by the end of the night, I want Twitter to be a shitstorm. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Are you are you kidding me? Yeah, it's a Spider-Man quote. I'm aware, but like, he just called everybody pedophiles. Like, it's like, I mean, here, wait. Hold on. Where is the? Uh, there's like this really funny thing in here. This is it. This is it. Ready? Or my friends. But I'm worried. Starting with the following people. All right, he's gonna go off. Susan Wojcicki, stop fucking lying to us every time you have to give a statement in response to videos like mine. All these broken promises you've made that never come into fruition. All of these incessant changes that no one ever asked for or wanted. Take some goddamn accountability. We are so sick of seeing the malicious and deceitful words you and your company repeatedly propagate. 
either do something good for this site once in your fruitless life or step the fuck down. And then she did. She literally stepped down. Dude, he totally did it. He got her. He's at. She's out. She left. She won. He won, dude. She left. So, all right. We're, we're through our intermission now. Stop ignoring Mama Max. Yeah, so here. You want me to talk about it a little bit? That rubbed me the wrong way. We talked like a month ago about like what he was working on in his investigation. And then... So Charlie actually answered. He did more than I did. Apparently when I had COVID, he messaged me a couple times and I never saw it. And now he's taken that as me ghosting him and ignoring his very important mission. And it really rubs me the wrong way. Instead of just... <laughs> he's jumping to the most extreme possible explanation for me not seeing it. Which is really fucking cringe. That did make me upset. There. Yeah, that, that really rubbed me the wrong way. I had COVID. I, and I barely used Discord in the first place. It was a miracle I ever... I, I, I'd have just blocked this shit, dude. I'd have just blocked this shit. Never even saw his message to begin with. And then I spent 12 days not doing anything online in bed. And during that time, apparently, it changed his whole framing of the video in order to make it like a Trojan horse of cancel critical because he didn't respond to my messages and ghosted me. So yeah, that did rub me the wrong way. Good intentions, but I did not like that. Even then, though, good intentions. Even then, he doesn't totally bury him. So, video number three. I did see, uh, maybe he wanted me to watch this one? Might have been this one. Because I did see the 30 seconds of this. I thought that thing that he did with, like, putting Sniper Wolf over and over again was kind of trippy. It was kind of cool. My name is Max Stryker. I'm a filmmaker. Dude, his voice is normal in this one. It looks like it's going to be better, guys. It's going to be better. Dedicated to empowering children. This is a call to action disguised as a cancellation. It is my hope that it will bring the Max... Wait, did he change the thumbnail? This is a call to action disguised as a cancellation. Did he change the video from Charlie? Like he conceded that point? His real voice is fine. Okay, so he conceded that. That's good. Some of amount of eyes and ears to crucial issues in our... One in five youth have been a victim of sex and labor trafficking or both. The Modern Slavery Research Project... That's, that's a reference to that, but that reminds me of an old Edwin conversation. Reported that homeless youth have higher rates of primary risk factors for trafficking such as poverty, unemployment, and a history of self sexual abuse or mental health issues, and that... Uh, those aging out of the foster care system face high rates of sex and labor trafficking. Society, let this video be the example by which we as influencers can make digestible content for our audience while addressing much more important matters. Thank you. Again, don't pick a hashtag a soccer team uses. You will lose that battle. Not all great men are good men, but you are. Please read the description. I thought, unironically, I do. Th I think this is kind of cool, but again. So. Hello, friends. It's okay, me. not that part. That wasn't the cool part. That's kind of odd. Oh. He's parodying uh, a Cheeto. Oh, who the heck are you clicking on my video? Oh, no, he's uh, top of the morning to you, laddie. Well, let me be the first to welcome you to my channel. Today's video. I didn't expect, I was thinking he was going to do the thing. He diverges from the usual content. While it's easy to get caught up in the latest internet sensations, there's a pressing need to shine a light on a much deeper, darker, demonic topic lurking beneath the surface. Dude, imagine if he did it with that voice, and then for one second it cut to like a red fucking screen, and it's in his other voice, and it's like, DEMONIC! Or whatever, and it cut back. I mean, I don't know. Listen, I'm not the filmmaker here, but I thought that would have been cool. Sniper Wolf. What was that? What was that? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Dude, why is he making yeah, this is a funny meme that you can <laughs> What? What? My name is Spencer, and I'm I am a survivor, survivor of Camden Gerard Davis. Davis. 
He's the leader of a destructive cult that has victimized hundreds of minors. This video is our screen for action. On March 18th, 2016, Spencer, a 16-year-old girl from Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared, lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet. She actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous sex cult, led by a child predator, posing as a werewolf god. The Dude, someone said that this is a, um, a Jax Films parody or a Tommy C parody. If it was Jax Films, he'd be playing Bingo. Man had recruited hundreds- Dude, imagine, like, fucking rapist Bingo. ...of young children. Subjecting them to almost seven years later, Spencer and the other survivors shared their stories with me. This video serves as their scream for action against their perpetrator. I almost feel like if we wipe everything, I, again, I understand people don't like this video either, and this video does not do any of the things I requested the first video to do. So far, I think this video might be better than the first one. If this was the only video that existed. I don't know if the criticism, like, so far, I don't know what else is in here, but, like, that's a better angle and a more approachable angle and a more obvious bit if that was what he was going for, but I don't know, I might get pushed back for that one. You think it's worse? It devolved. Well, I, th I think that's with the current title and thumbnail, doing the whole sniper wolf thing, saying, like, if his argument is... That drama rules the media cycle and nobody cares about kids and he does like this bait and switch thing like that where it's very obvious what he's doing and he's implying that like, his his content is better or whatever and he's not using critical as like a human shield. I almost think this is better than like the weird cult angle that he was taking the first time. <laughs> Wait, you haven't seen this video all the way through? I think I might have glanced at it at one point. And I saw bits and pieces of it, but I, again, I mostly ignored a lot of this drama, and I planned to do it all at once. Wait, Keem only has 70 viewers? Is that a fucking joke? What channel is he on? You're getting me. I, I would call him, but I don't want to. At all, actually. Um, no, I would call him, but... He's not even live on the Keemstar show. I want to fucking do this. I don't want to fucking take time out of it. No, he's not live on the Keemstar show. You're lying to me. Okay, keep going. Camden Gerard Davis. Leviathans are coming. You know what I'm going to do? Here. I'm out. This fucker's done this to me. A you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it. it it's happening. He, this asshole has called me so many fucking times on stream. Hold on. Let me find out. Which one is him? That one. Hey, what's up? Hey, are you live? I was live. I was playing COD for a little bit. I'm live right now, so I was asking you if I can get a question on the record. Okay. Are you familiar with Camden Gerard Davis? That sounds really familiar, but I can't ring a bell of who that is. So he's apparently a pedophile who runs a cult, and um, he's he like convinces people that he's a vampire, and um, quick tweet, quick tweet. Or send me a picture of the guy. I'm a face guy. Guys, face. guys, can you can you guys tweet pictures of Camden Gerard Davis at Keemstar? We need your support, okay? <laughs> okay. Listen, all right? The good Mama Max has asked us to reach out to big YouTubers, and you're the one I called. <laughs> oh, shit, I knew it was this! <laughs> I knew this was some fucking crazy fucking troll. <laughs> it's not a troll. It's Camden Gerard Davis, dude. All right, hold on, because that, that name does actually sound so familiar. Let me look at my Twitter. Let me look at my replies. I want to know if I know this guy or not. Dude, he's got his he's got his grills, dude. His fucking his, his epic grills. Bro, my newest tweet is some a picture of fucking Paul Bart making out with. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Your fans suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
dude. I got is this. Is he actually? Is he actually a pedophile? You think? I have no fucking idea. I just want to put that out there. I mean, maybe. I, the listen, problem is, I'm Mama gonna... Max doesn't fucking explain anything. Okay, listen. You you know how this is all going to tie together? How? You called me, and I was on the other line with someone else, and we were talking about the Epstein thing and how the like no actual real information is coming out. No actual like. You know, where's the 150 names? Like, this doesn't make sense. This has to be a distraction because they're doing something else. Wait, right? they released the names of Camden. Wait, they delete. You know, they released the Epstein names to distract us from Camden Gerard yes. Davis. That's yes. so true. Yes. They dropped the Epstein fucking files today, so the world is not paying attention to the fucking vampire pedophile. <laughs> Oh man! I, hey, did you get reached out to by Max? Like, did he ever want to work with you? Uh oh yeah, multiple times he harassed me and everyone. Right? Out of curiosity, why did you not see the call to action and jump in? Just to prove because that. when I click on his videos, he goes, "Hello, this person is a pedophile." Like anyone that talks in that voice, I just can't. I can't even, I don't know. <laughs> Do you think that like the topic of vampire pedophile Leviathan cult is good enough that if it was like a Turkey Tom video called like the vampire cult degenerates, it would get like a shitload of views. If it was just done normally where it was presented. Uh, yeah, dude, I would title vampire pedophile on the loose in the Minecraft community. In the Minecraft that community. <laughs> That shit's fucking popping, bro. All right, last thing because I don't want to take you take too much of your time. But um, did you see that I tweeted that you were on the Epstein flight logs and it got like five thousand likes and it was never noted? Twitter did not community yeah. note it. Yeah, I responded and I said, "Watch this, not get community noted." Dude, it's been apparently in the pending, and everyone is just flagging it as like no note needed, and they're just not letting it go through. <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted out YouTuber Boogie uh, is on the list. Like I didn't even say Epstein is on the list, and like actually, some people actually believed it. I had to fucking put a tweet underneath it saying I'm joking. Oh my god! <laughs> That's so, so, well, you saw what happened with Stephen Hawking. Yes, he he wants uh, midgets to get undressed and like try to fucking reach <laughs> a high chalkboard. <laughs> Dude, that one and Al Gore. I didn't know Al Gore was on the list. No, no, no. They listen. These people that are on the list aren't even on the list. Okay, so Al Gore is a prime example. All right. In these court documents, they say, "Have you ever seen Al Gore at Epstein Island?" And the victims go, "No." And so people are like, "Oh, he's in the list. He's in the documents." They're like putting him on a list, oh. but he, he's confirmed not to even be there. I'm telling you. This thing is like a nothing burger. This, you're almost Wait, like, are you and, saying like, that nothing. Jeffrey Epstein's Island is a nothing burger? Stop it. Stop <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, kidding, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. That, First you won't retweet Mama Max, and next you think that I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I'm saying is, this is bullshit, bro. What is going on? Where are these 150 names? Where are these 200 names? Like, yeah. we're supposed to see a list of people that were involved in this pedophile ring, right? And we're not getting that. It's all bullshit. Dude, the first time someone said, well, Stephen Hawking was in there, I'm like, oh, yeah, because Stephen Hawking's a rapist, right? Mr. I can't use my hands. I can't use my fucking feet. I got to use a machine to talk. Is just going around raping everyone. And then I see what's actually being said i'm like what the fuck is this is that even a crime if he had adult midgets getting naked trying to reach the chalkboard that's not a fucking crime <laughs> what if, what is this yeah all right buddy Dude. thank you for uh thank you for calling in i'm gonna get back to this max stuff i i appreciate well me calling you obviously um and you know what if you didn't answer i would not have let the machine hear your phone number because I am a better friend, okay? Hey, you know what? I'm going to help out you, and I'm going to help out Mama Max, and I'm going to put out a tweet saying that there's a pedophile fucking vampire on the loose in the Minecraft community. Get him. You get him. <laughs> Keem's a fucking... Keem's a funny guy. There we go, guys. We did something. We got some, we got another person on board. Keem cameo. At least Epstein is an ableist. <laughs> True. <laughs> Um, let me respond to this person.
king. Let's keep going. This part, I thought this part was kind of cool. Each one is a different Sniper Wolf video for doing the same retarded intro. Again, this is like a banger TikTok if it's fucking straight up. If it's surrounded by legitimate ones that actually explain the situation. Toastify, you don't think that this video of what you've seen so far with the current title and thumbnail would explain his point better, just out of curiosity, than the other two videos would? If this was the only video, this is the only thing you're seeing, when he explains it in detail why he staged the video the way that he did, like this, you don't think that this is... I feel like this is better. It's not good, but I feel like this is at least an improvement. Like the cacophony of the latest drama or trend. Let's take a moment to study. You guys are like the worst. You're just fucking owning me with my. You're literally owning me with my fucking spelling, dude. This is crazy. Back from the online spectacle and face the harrowing truth. Human trafficking and destructive cults are not just issues in distant lands or plot lines in crime. He ex wait, he explains his story better, but derails halfway through. And okay, maybe I'm wrong. Never Gross. mind. Never yeah. mind. But so far, so far better. Among the most severe and rapidly growing problems happening right under our noses, the actions of Camden Gerard Davis, his heinous crimes, the lives he's Why did shattered, it get so small? the trauma he's Make inflicted. These did not appear in our daily news feed, yet they are glaring examples of the darker aspects of human that we as a society often again I still think ignore. this comparison kind of falls flat when you consider like this is a story that would have gone viral like this is not one that would have like this this all this is true for other stories I don't think this one I think this one was primed to go gravity of his maybe I'm wrong though I don't know I haven't had a million view video maybe I'm not the person to ask actions the suffering of his victims should stir us to our core prompting outrage action and a demand. Hey guys uh we are approaching the four hour and 20 minute mark of the stream i'll have you know i don't think i've streamed i think the only time i've streamed this long is when i was doing the edwin thing typically we're at like two hours but i honestly have felt a lot better as the stream was going on didn't know if we were going to do a full fucking like seven hour manifesto stream tonight but um i'm having fun i'm not tired I'm feeling it. I can go another two hours, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Um, thank you guys for hanging out so far. It's been cool having fucking 700 people here. We didn't hit 700 last night, uh, two nights ago, but we held 700 the whole time I've been live, basically. So, very, very cool that you guys are hanging out. We're gonna be here late. If you want to support the stream, feel free to support the stream. And if you don't, well, you're just supporting by being here. All right. Uh, planning on doing members-only content soon. So now that we're at the 420 blaze at mark we can get back to my favorite show. Okay, guys, let's get going. And for justice, yet such stories often... A pinball break would be appreciated? Are you guys kidding? If I had a pinball set up, I would go downstairs and I'd play pinball while I streamed. I would just talk drama and play pinball the whole time. Um, those are a little hard to do. You gotta get all the screens on there. You gotta use, like, a, a board so you can pull out the DMD screen and stuff. You gotta have multiple cameras set up. But I could do it one day if you guys are interested. Um, I do enjoy the pinball receive a fraction of the attention granted to the latest internet scandal. The survivors who fell prey to Camden Gerard Davis were once impressionable and malleable minds, unknowingly ensnared by the beguiling algorithms of the internet. I want to do a home arcade stream one day, but I don't know the interest in that. You know, just have like a, a setup that's like on a tripod and just move it from machine to machine, like play some Pac-Man, play some MK, play some Time Crisis. 
play some fucking Fast and Furious or some NFL Blitz, play some pinball, just kind of hang out in the bar and stream from there. But um, I don't know if I want to invest money in building a whole mobile setup to do that and kind of chilling in the arcade. But I mean, that's what when I'm not uh, fucking I, I've done like remote work down there. It is just so nice to sit in the bar. Yeah, I've literally spent the whole summer building it with my family and stuff and um, and the whole winter putting it together. It was really great having family over here. It was a really fun fucking time. Um, it's a passion for me that's pretty much more important right now than drama. It's just doing the uh, the weird gaming. Stuff you can't do. You can't fucking play Time Crisis on a computer without having a fucking gun in your hand shooting. You can't play fucking pinball without having a pinball machine. Believe me, I've tried. I've tried VPIN. It's not the same. My fucking at games legends pinball shit is getting tossed in the garbage, bro. It is not the same. Not even close. Um, so I just, I really, I like these like unique gaming experiences that you can't just have on a console or a PC, even though Pac-Man's not one of those, but I mean, none beats playing it on a joystick. Um, I can do it. I don't know. Be cool. Has one up made Daytona? No, they have not. All right. Arcade talk limited back to Mama Max. Not that would lead them almost. Maybe at the end I'll do some arcade talk. Irretrievably into the clutches of exploitation for seven long years. I was actually told I don't know who's interested in this, but I'll mention it because we're deep in a long stream. I was it was mentioned to me that there's a potential chance that I could get some kind of review cabinet next year from Arcade One Up. Uh depending on if I do any home arcade content on this channel. Now, again, home arcade content will never take place over main channel, so if I'm not posting main channel, I'll not take that fucking thing. But if you want to do, like, a random stream every so often, maybe a hundred of you want to hang out and watch or whatever, even if that's the case, we're still, like, the biggest stream in the sector. Um, if you want to talk pinball, you want to talk one-up, you want to do something like that, let me know. Um, I, I assume that's something that most people won't be interested in, but um, I was told that if people are we can make some shit happen so that's just throwing that out there i don't know what people's interest is in, in home arcade stuff or video game stuff but it's not why people come here so i assume no please echoed into the void muted cries for help that were met with an indifferent world too hyper -focused. i'll make a fucking z-mote okay i will make a z-mote after this because now we have so many members i think we can add a new emote based on some ephemeral stimulation it was only through a twist of fate and almost serendipitous connection through my sister that their voices found conduit in me i took to youtube turning their whispers into a broadcast that could reach the eyes and hearts of hundreds of thousands their narrative raw and unfiltered is now piercing through the noise, challenging the apathy that so often greets such disclosures. But this phenomenon isn't isolated. It is more common than we know. Its prevalence is an indictment of our universal ignorance. Our society is both praised and criticized for its mass surveillance, yet malignant forces persist underneath us, often right. perpetuated by the very structure. I feel like, again, I'm gonna get criticized I'm playing a fucking video game while he's explaining it, but this feels like a whole lot of nothing. Does anyone feel like anything in the last 30 seconds has been real impactful here? It just sounds like he's saying words. That should dismantle them in a world where these industries amass profits in the hundreds of billions. It is unfathomable how they can still operate largely in obscurity, away from the scrutinizing gaze of global accountability. This ancient yet person. Sounds like he's talking about Pizzagate. He's slimy. Is he talking about Pizzagate? Is he talking about Pizzagate? Pretty away billions. It is unfathomable how they can still operate largely in obscurity, away from the scrutinizing gaze of global account. All right. All right. Used to exist without immediate and comprehensive global I don't action know why is I a just, profound why did you atrocity play that, that, that stains the fabric of mankind. How can we, as humanity, aspire to claim our place in the cosmos when we fail to protect the very future of- I think this video is better in that he just fucking speaks and I don't have to pause it and read. I can just listen to what he's saying. Our species, the salvation of every last child ensnared- <laughs> Guys, we're getting so nitpicky three hours in. Do you know that his videos are really- <laughs> Dude, they're really hard to watch if you're blind, all right? They really turn blind people. Dude, blind people are missing like half the video, okay? That's my criticism for Mama Max is he's just ableist. He doesn't like blind people. I <laughs> think that's- <laughs> 
<laughs> Dude, we're in three hours here. I'm struggling Slimy to find new things. Fuck. Clutches of these darker forces will be the ultimate measure of our existence until we can equivocally say that every child is free from the enemy's grasp. We remain undeserving of the stars. And now that we are navigating through one of the most transformative eras in our history, marked by the swift and profound evolution of artificial intelligence, this technological leap brings with it immense potential for progress and innovation. Yet, as with any powerful tool, there lies a dual edge. There will be individuals who exploit these advancements for personal gain, often with dire consequences for the most vulnerable among us. Children. Among us? The alarming aspect Wait, of this technological duos? surge is not just its pace, but its capacity to be weaponized by those with nefarious intent. In the hands of the unscrupulously intelligent and morally corrupt, AI can become an instrument of profound harm. It can be used to manipulate, to exploit vulnerabilities, and even to perpetrate crimes with a level of sophistication and scale previously unimaginable. This is not mere speculation. It is a looming threat. And despite our technological progress, every single day. We are bombarded with headlines about celebrity feuds, influencer scandals, and the latest entertainment gossip. These stories dominate our screens, our conversations, and our minds. Create the problem is he's right. There is something to be said about this entire concept. That like we're being over fucking sensitized to con the issue. You know what the problem is? All the people he's asking are the people who feed them that content. Like yeah, you know, I think you guys are getting a bit too much drama, but I need you to do more drama because that's how I get paid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, obviously there are other topics that should be more important. And if everyone was covering them, it would probably be better in general if we were all discussing things that were pro like more proactive for our society. But who's to deem what is proactive for our society? Maybe somebody is having a long day and they just want to listen to some fucking celebrity gossip. You know, I don't think that Jersey Shore should be taken off the air because it's a fucking like disgusting, gross fucking reality TV garbage show. You know, maybe somebody has value in it. Now, should it be broadcast over the BBC during the 9-11 attacks? Probably not. I don't know why the BBC would be the ones to report on them. But, like, yeah, time and a place. I don't know. I, I think that every every form of media has a right to exist. I think that the market deems what is acceptable. And I think that um, it's up to people like Max to get creative to deliver his message. But he needs to know when things aren't working and then make, a, like, adjustments. And don't be fucking stubborn. And take out your ego for being a fucking filmmaker that i know you have that i assume that you have because i mean you're a fucking filmmaker every filmmaker has a fucking ego except that this is your limitation and adapt and change it make your video less fucking filmy make your video more productive and see where that goes i don't i can't repeat i'm gonna repeat myself a hundred times if i keep talking about it that's my point is like find what is making you not able to continue and beat that and make something really fucking good. I don't know. In a smoke screen that hides the harsher reality. It has to be ego. I don't know if it's ego for sure. I'm just guessing, but it has to be ego. Faced by countless individuals around the world, modern day slavery thrives beneath our daily feeds. If, if, all right. Can you guys just please, if it's not a situation where he's being malicious and it's not a clout chasing situation, could you be on board with ego? Is that crazy to think that it could be ego? I don't know. Here, let me see. Uh, start a poll. Let's see. What's wrong with Max? I'll leave this for 10 minutes while we're watching this. Here, pulls up. Yeah. Let me know. Oh, 
of their autonomy and often their lives. <coughs> Meanwhile, cults masquerade as sanctuaries in obscure corners of the internet, only to devastate minds and splinter families. Yet these pressing issues barely ripple through the surface of our social media obsession. Once in a blue moon, we will see a headline that quickly dissipates by the trivial disputes of online personalities. This imbalance in our collective attention is not just a matter of poor taste or preference for lighthearted content. It is a system that rewards content that is easy to produce and quick to consume. The disparity between the overwhelming coverage of Sniper Wolf's drama and the relative silence around the atrocities committed by individuals like Camden is a glaring example of this. This isn't just happenstance. Our priorities are not just skewed. They are deliberately enabled. The platforms themselves often benefit from keeping the masses distracted with sensational yet ultimately trivial content, shielding us from the harsh realities that require our immediate attention and action. But the issue runs deeper than just the machinations of those at the top. It's also about us as humans. We have developed an appetite for content that entertains rather than enlightens. Many turn to platforms like YouTube not to confront the grim realities of the world, but to escape them. I understand. Alright, but here's the thing. Again. Everyone keeps telling me this video is much fucking worse, but I think everything he's saying here is correct. Like, everything he's saying here. When does the video fall off a cliff? And the appeal of lighthearted content. We haven't got there yet. Okay. In providing an escape. Because this is the best 10 minutes that I've seen of Mama Max. This is literally... Again, I don't agree with, like, the stylization and all that shit, and everyone knows that. So I'm not saying this is, like, a perfect 10 minutes. But I'm saying this is the best 10 minutes we've watched out of, I think, the 40 that we've consumed. Right? I want him to pause about the victims and what happened. Okay. Daily stresses. However, as global citizens, we bear a responsibility that transcends escapism. Engaging with serious issues doesn't have to be debilitating. It can be empowering, fostering a sense of unity and purpose. As viewers, our collective voice is powerful, capable of supporting content that entertains, enlightens, and incites action. Influencers and content creators hold significant sway, tasked not only with captivating audiences, but also with enlightening and advocating for urgent societal issues. Our platforms can spotlight these concerns, educating and mobilizing followers for impact. Yeah, they can, but they don't have to. For every viewer who doesn't want to deal with this shit, every, there's a, there's a content creator who equally doesn't want to. I wouldn't expect Bob Wolf or beat em ups to come out and fucking make a video talking about pedophiles. They make videos on Nintendo cartridges, you know? I wouldn't expect, like, a, a lot of different... An animation YouTuber to break character, get on stream, and talk about a fucking pedophile. I, I don't expect them to do that. Um, maybe it would be ideal, but, like, I... <laughs> I don't know if they would if it would be ideal because I don't want YouTubers getting involved in things that law enforcement should be involved with first and foremost because YouTubers are fucking retarded and they always screw it up. So, I don't know if I want a retarded ego-driven fucking content creator to start doing more of this. In reality, it seems like it's against every single thing I stand for. I've been critiquing YouTubers for doing this for fucking years doing it wrong. I've made my own mistakes in this fucking sector, okay? I it is not easy to be doing these allegation type videos. There's a reason why 99% of things I cover are after they already have occurred and I do not want to ever break information. I never want to be the guy responsible if the fucking bomb goes off and all this shit is fake because I don't trust myself to vet that information myself. So when other people come out and they say like, well, Nick didn't talk about this, didn't talk about that. And my assumption is, well, my response is, well, maybe you should release it. Put it in your name. Okay, if you're so confident, release everything in your name. Um, I mean it because I'm not doing that for anybody. There's nobody I would do that for that I would take that risk for because I don't trust myself to do it better than a police officer can. I will never be the one to push that information. Or it would be massively out of character in a situation that I couldn't predict at the moment for me to do. I, it's 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 extremely hard. So I don't trust every average YouTuber to do it. I think YouTubers are fucking stupid. Oh. Change. This call for a balanced approach does not mean to diminish entertainment value, but acknowledges the need for equilibrium. By integrating discussions of substantive matters, influencers can guide the collective consciousness towards a harmony where entertainment coexists with a vital discourse, drawing attention to profound issues in our world. It's crucial that we leverage our influence responsibly, ensuring that pressing societal challenges are not only seen, but who deems but what's it's responsible? 
who deems what is a way our responsible leverage i don't, I don't get it to the darker aspects of our world in a way that encourages i think responsible is people who aren't capable should stop fucking covering pedo allegations i think the responsible thing for to, to do is people who routinely fuck these things up on a, and actually like ruin people's lives and do legitimate danger or people who protect like actual fucking pedophiles those people should not do it anymore and people who don't believe they can i, I don't know in doing so, influencers can redefine what it means to be a content creator in the digital age. We can set new standards for the kind of content. The police aren't perfect, but they have actual power. They can actually do something about it. Yeah, I guess you could have power if you want to be a vigilante and run like a doxing group or something like that. But in reality, it goes down to what me and Augie were talking about. Is EDP worse off when he's doxed and he can't get a job and people call him a pedo on the side of the road? Or is he fucking worse off when he's getting ass raped and fucking beat him up prison, dude? I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, dude, EDP's life is ruined. He's never going to have a job for the rest of his life. He's going to die because he needs fucking dialysis and his kidneys are failing. And everyone knows that he's a fucking pedophile who wanted to meet a 13-year-old girl to fuck her. But you know where else he could be? Jail. And you know what happens to people like him in jail? A lot. A lot happens to people like him in jail. Okay? Stuff happens to people like him in jail that people will get mad at me for even saying like that in that tone because it's like, I guess like it's it's not fair to dehumanize. Fuck them. I'm not dehuman. They're not human. Okay? It would be really funny to hear what would happen to EDP in jail. But he won't go to jail because fucking predator poachers fucked up the story. I'm just saying, dude that gets attention and shapes conversations. The shift in priorities from purely entertaining to meaningfully impactful work can pave the way for a more informed and action-oriented online community. It's an opportunity for influencers to use their platforms for something greater than just views and likes, to become agents of change in a world that desperately needs it. Okay, so I'm guessing this the is the face fall. necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Like, how do you select the good men? Okay, this is him getting mad at everybody. All right. Okay. Maybe it's Charlie. Okay. Maybe it's Charlie. Okay. Yeah, all right. Alright all right, guys, the first 10 minutes were really good. If we click off there, it's almost like the rest of the video is alright. Let's click off there, guys. Alright. I'm reaching out not to corner you, but to share growing concerns that has been eclipsed by your usual online interactions. I respect you as an individual. I believe you are fundamentally a good man. I would not be reaching out to you if I thought otherwise. However, our community, and by extension our society, faces a critical imbalance in its focus and priorities. We are living in an era where the exploitation of children, a subject of grave importance, is alarmingly overlooked, neglected by the spotlight that's yeah, this is probably where the video falls on topics like face. sniper wolf. While such content has its relevance, my intention in reaching out to you especially through private channels like Discord, was to foster a private approach to address these serious matters. Unfortunately, your silence has left me with no choice but to no resort choice. to more public forms of communication. This, in of itself, is symptomatic of a larger problem. This lack of dialogue among creators is not just an internal community issue. It has far-reaching consequences, especially in our battle against the rampant spread of disinformation. The digital landscape we navigate is already rife with misleading narratives and half-truths. And until AI is perfected, the problem is only set to intensify with advancing technologies. This scenario is further exacerbated by the motivations of the most rich and powerful in the tech world. Their relentless pursuit of profit, occasionally at the expense of human welfare and ethical considerations, is steering us toward a precarious future. As creators, we are positioned uniquely to counteract these troubling trends. Our role extends beyond content creation. We must actively engage in safeguarding our audience, particularly the young and impressionable. While this video addresses the responsibility of influencers, my future endeavor. So I don't think the response. I don't think influencers have responsibility to do shit. It's not a need to see, but like if you see and you see report, don't ignore. I guess, but like I don't know. 
what, what else do they have? What else do they need to do? Instead of making this video, he could have made the entire video talk. Yeah, I got it. He could have talked about Count Blackula. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. That is a good point. I guess at this point, he's already dug himself in this hole. But yeah, no, if this was the only video and he didn't, and he still did. I feel like if he did that first 10 minutes and then spent the rest of the video making the video that we want, it would be the perfect video for him. He gets to do his little bit in the beginning. He gets to do his little fucking evade or whatever and get all the streamers like, oh, what am I watching? Teehee. And then he fucks them with allegations or whatever. And then he actually shows what the allegations are and explains what they actually did. And then people know about them. I mean, I think there's a video that could be made out of the fucking carcasses of these three videos that would be ideal. Um, it just needs all the information that's probably in the interview and in the descriptions to be like in the video as like part of the video, you know? I don't know. Maybe I'm being ultra charitable here, but it feels like the 10 minutes made sense. It feels like the bit worked. It feels like um, he needs to stop e-bagging. I call it e-bagging, but he needs to stop like clout bagging. That's like, the most important thing he can do here is to not clout bag anymore because it's like fucking pathetic but other than that i don't know does max ever ask the pedo hunter youtubers for help um, to be honest they're probably worse i don't know uh, max used to be a pedo hunter youtuber apparently he took everybody aside at vidcon and was like i hunt pedophiles everyone was like wow that's crazy dog anyways let's get some drinks um I was told that happened at a, I wasn't there for that because I hung out with Augie and Tom who were both not 21 yet and they were alone in the fucking alone in my thing um Wavy's place I guess <sighs> influencers have no responsibility for what their community does not true I, I agree with that 100% Unfortunately, there's no evidence in that four and a half hour interview either. There's testimony, some of which messes up another victim's testimony. Uh, I don't know. Did you see Deaf Noodles lost his mind? He's been doing pretty good recently. What happened? Um, let me see. All is well that ends well. Being on that front. The larger forces at play, the wealthy and powerful architects of these very systems. In order to effectively confront these giants, our efforts must be unified. It is crucial that we, as creators, join together, pooling our resources, influence, and creativity to push back against the structures that prioritize profit over people. Only through collective action can we hope to instigate meaningful change and protect those most vulnerable to the revenue-driven decisions of these powerful entities. The fight against them must be a unanimous one, requiring strategic collaboration among all of us in the creative community. We must acknowledge the stark realities we're facing, the escalation of human trafficking, the insidious growth of destructive cults, and other heinous crimes that are being grievously underreported. These issues should be at the forefront of our collective consciousness, yet they remain marginalized. Charlie, you are a voice heard by millions. We reached out hoping for a private response at the very least. Oh my god, come on. Ugh. Spencer is bound by the same NDA. So he added her to the group. Hi, it's nice to meet you all. Thanks for asking me feel free to ask. I mean, I guess that's more public. I thought he was in a private thing with Charlie. He just messaged. All right, let me get off this game, though. Let's get back to... I took my little video game break. Um, let's get back to the main video. Um, here we go. Hey, guys. When is the last time we did a stream that's, like, five hours long on a, on a research project? I think it's, like, Gabby Hanna. Like, the seven hours of... I think that's still a public stream, too. Um, do you guys want to bring on a friend? Because I have one that's probably itching to come on that won't ask me, but I think you know. He, I, I think I know who he, he wants to be on here. Um, do you want to keep it just me, or I'm I'm fine with keeping just me. It's a little easier, but um, let me see. Because I see he's playing video games. Uh, 
Uh, I never reach out for reinforcements. But like, ugh, I need some help. <laughs> I could do it myself, but. Right, I guess he doesn't want to come on. I took a shot in the dark, and I guess I was wrong. All right, never mind. Your platform has the power to drive significant change. Yet many voices fun. remain unheard amid the digital clamor. Did I not get a... Oh, there it is. Oops, I'm sorry, guys. I cut off your super chats when this was on the screen. You've I will read them all in a bit. Oh, by the way, audience. can we just do the poll real f Ah, let's finish this video, then we'll do poll super chats, and then we'll start watching debates. Because there are debates. A platform that has the incredible potential not just to entertain, but to empower. Just got a notification, entertain- Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I reached out to Josh. But wait. No, Nick, I'm not calling in. Could you imagine if I called Comic Cop and he answered? And he's like, it's just John Swan's voice. Like, it's just literally John Swan. Like, he's been here the whole time. Uh, I trust Comic Cop more than I trust half my friends. I will when there's a controversy, I will write comment cop because I know he'll tell me I'm, if I'm wrong. If I'm, it's, I feel like because I've I've argued with comment cop before. It's this weird feeling that it's like he's not on the payroll, so he'll tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I try to. I don't like to think that my community turns into an echo chamber, but I know he'll tell me if I'm wrong. Your voice can reach corners of the internet that many of us cannot making you not just an influencer, but a potential catalyst for much needed awareness and action, as you have already done before. With this remarkable influence comes a significant responsibility. The choices you make in content creation, the stories you choose to amplify, have a ripple effect that extends far beyond the boundaries of your channel. When issues like the ones we're trying to highlight are overlooked in favor of more sensational, yet less impactful content, it represents a missed opportunity. I understand the demands of your platform and the constant pressure to remain relevant and engaging in an ever-changing digital landscape. But we believe that influencers like you have the unique power to bridge this gap, to use your reach and influence to bring important topics to the forefront. Our intention in reaching out was not to criticize, but to collaborate. No, it was. To it was combine to our efforts in shedding light on stories that are often ignored. We're not asking. No, no, no. It was, it was to criticize. You literally wrote me and told me, like, that my fucking. <laughs> you wrote me and said we won't take this lightly. Like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? It was. It was hold on, no. That's the biggest lie I heard this whole video. Our intention in reaching out was not to criticize, but to collaborate. To combine our efforts in shedding light on stories that are often ignored. We're not asking you to change the essence of your content or to abandon what has made you successful. I am inviting you to consider how that's your platform not true. can also no. be a space no, 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 that's for not raising true. awareness and prompting action on critical social issues. Charlie, I hold on to the hope that you'll act in accordance with the integrity and goodness I've always known you to possess. The Dude, the best I case scenario from... is Charlie didn't light your ass on fire for the fucking stunt you pulled by putting him in the head of a pedophile video. Let's be honest here. I'm going to be fucking, I don't know. I've been pretty charitable this whole time. I'm going to be pretty fucking hard on this one because this is a legitimate statement. You are fucking lucky. You are very, very lucky that Charlie watched this and went, uh, good intentions, uh, bad execution, and didn't turn around and go, fuck you. You're fucking retarded. You literally just use my likeness in a video designed to hunt pedophiles as clickbait. No doubt tripping off a few people who think the new wholesome pedophile YouTuber is Charlie. And I, he would he could have, like, fucking destroyed your entire operation over here. You are very lucky that he didn't do that. You should count your blessings that he didn't do that to you. And you should use this as an, like, as a, as an avenue to, um, to learn. This is a learning moment. Charlie could have fucking ended your entire career. Boringly, slowly, and... With a few of those comments, and they're like, uh, you know, uh, Mama Max makes me feel like a poopy butthole sometimes, but no, no, it makes me feel sad, and, um... Yeah, he could have, like, actually done some real fucking damage, so he... Use this as a learning moment, and make better decisions in the future. I'm, I, I hear Mama Max is working on a new project from Smaggle Daggle, so I don't know where the fuck he got that from, but I'm gonna dox his information, Smaggle Daggle, that he gave me. His information was that Mama Max is creating a new, uh, new video. Uh, and that's the fuck. Now Smaggle's been thoroughly doxxed by that by that reveal. 
um, that I've leaked his DM verbally, but yeah, that's, that's that. That's that. Gee whiz guys. He claimed it was in a pinned comment. That's crazy. I hope he does it. I hope he takes some of this criticism before he releases it. I, I hope actually, maybe that would make more sense. Maybe I should have done this a little faster in that case, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I wrote max. Yeah. Apparently Matt Pitt took notes on the four hour Spencer podcast for now recording. It might be better there. Um, we're going to watch the podcast cult video. It's 11 minutes. We're not gonna watch the four hour one because I, I don't hate myself that much that I want to be up until fucking three o'clock tomorrow. And I also didn't say I would watch that, but, uh, we'll do debate stuff. We have debate stuff and we have the podcast summary video. Um, wow. Nick Smag will probably have to sign an NDA. I have, I have fucking my home care. Um, you isn't about making a video for us all we want is a conversation with you this dialogue is oh i got a call Let me see. He didn't answer. Okay, let's keep going. This is essential, not just between us, but as part of a broader discussion that our community and society at large. I think it's weird that he made everyone sign an NDA, including the victim. Okay, so the NDA, this is like the part that everyone hears the word NDA and thinks Onision is raping women or something. An NDA literally just means I'm giving you information about a future project I'm releasing and I'm going to show you aspects of it or the video itself. You can't steal the fucking idea, run off and make it yourself. That is what an NDA is. These NDAs are very super, they're super fucking simple. There's nothing fucking shady about it. He's not like writing up a huge page or whatever and you're signing away your social security check or something by accident. Yo, 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 what's up? Well, one second, one second. Uh, so these NDAs are literally just, I'm giving you an unreleased video, you cannot release it. There's no nefarious nature of the NDA. I can look at it right now, I'll tell you if there's any fucking weird thing he wrote me. It's literally a Discord text message. Uh, no, it's literally a promotional thing for his video. So don't be freaked out by it, there's nothing weird about it. I, it it's just like the act of signing it. This is like a product review. If you're gonna do a product review for at games, and you're gonna get a fucking pinball machine or something. They're going to ask you to sign an NDA. You can't show their product unless they let you do that. You can't release anything from the user groups or whatever. You can't. It's it's literally just like a normal commonplace thing in content creation. Um, even though I don't really like signing them. So, hey, what up, Josh? Yo, what's up, man? I put you in the title. So they knew you, you were there. Oh, we're live? Oh, fuck. Did you not know? Uh... No, but I didn't say anything, so it's like fine. I'm fine. That's live. What's up? What's up, chat? What did I just catch you doing, Roblox? <laughs> <You see? laughs> uh... Are you okay, buddy? Are you good? I'm I fine. knew you were playing Fortnite. I was just. I'm I fine. Said, I thought I'm just were... high. Oh, <clears throat> all right. So stay away from um, stay away from the YouTube content ID. What YouTube content ID? Yeah, you're high. I just don't want you to accidentally do anything. Uh... Oh, that would break copyright? No, no, no. You, I don't want you to actually strike anybody down. It was, it was oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you said content ID. I'm like, what? Are we talking about like Steamboat Willie and like Quentin oh, Reviews? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. I'm so sorry. I actually totally forgot. Are you familiar with Camden Gerard Davis? No, but I've heard you say his name a lot. Okay, so Camden Gerard Davis, all right? Vampire pedophile, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who he is. I know who he is. I'm just here to spread the good word of Camden. It, it was Davis. Mama Max who said his name. Just, dude, Mama Max is trying, like, so hard to, like, spread this, like, god cult fucking campaign, and I can't even remember the predator's name, even though he, like, told me about it. Dude, dude, Camden Gerard Davis, bro. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. uh, guys, listen. Chat, <laughs> should have just said vampire pedo, and then I wouldn't know. <laughs> chat, all right, you guys, are, we're going to do, we're going to get this fucking word around, okay? You guys are going to be my, um, you're going to be my YouTube, Discord, uh, what are those fucking Jesus freaks who knock on doors? Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, we're going to be Camden oh. Gerard Davis Witnesses, so we're going to start knocking on digital doors and telling them, have you heard about Camden Gerard Davis? He might be a pedophile. We don't know. He might be. The Levi Isn't it like if you don't confirmed? if you don't talk, the Leviathans will get you. Okay, isn't it confirmed? I I I've watched three videos. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm still going. 
<laughs> we'll find out on on his fourth live stream where he talks to oh, no, Mudahar or something. Yeah, that, that's literally that, that's literally what I'm spending my night doing. All right, I, I don't want to jump you in here unless you want to be involved. So I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, are, you are you down to? I, I'm I'm da- I'm down to stream with you, but like I'm just not like caught up on the situation. So if well, you're we're like literally just doing a deep dive, if we, if you're deep already into it, maybe. Have you watched anything on Mama Max like the recent stuff? Oh, well, um, I know what you guys were talking about in the group chat. And Did I've you watch like, any of his three videos? Any of them? On Charlie? I watched his first stuff. one he sent me, and like I know about the Charlie one, yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you exactly where we are. We, in the last three hours, have watched all... F- we've watched two and a half of the videos, so you're only one video behind, technically. Okay. <laughs> <We're> from- <laughs> okay, and, wh- and what did you learn in those videos? All right, so video one was the initial video that we'd seen. It was the one that had um, about three minutes of uh, Cam and Gerard Davis in it. It had uh, mostly a call to action to get content creators involved. It doxed Camden's mother for some reason. Um, The second video was a reaction to the first video, reading mean comments and things that people placed. It was notably almost three times the length of the first video. Uh, It included a lengthy call-out post, getting more people to come in. All of these videos include like the PewDiePie comment being like, "You're a new dad. You know what it's like to have a child." Or something. Oh like that. yeah, I remember that. And he like showed like dogs of a uh, of a uh, uh, criticals dogs and stuff to yep. like try to sympathize with them. You have dogs, critical. You have dogs. I fucking love that part. Um, and we actually just pulled everybody. I'll read this real quick. So I made a poll called "What's Wrong with Max." Uh, 53% think it has something to do with ego and why he doesn't want to change his content even though it's not producing the numbers he wants. Uh, only 14, I think it's actually the lowest number, thinks that he's malicious and clout-driven. So that's actually a huge shocker because going into this stream, I don't know if I had any effect on that, that was the prevailing narrative, is that Mama Max is doing this because he wants money and he's a clout-driven psychopath. That was what I was seeing on Tommy's like stream chat. That's what I was seeing from Larix's stuff. Um, from the brief stuff that I've seen. So it is interesting that after three hours, only 14% selected malicious clout driven. Uh, 17% think he's a fucking idiot. Um, so that's neither here nor there. And 16% repeated Charlie, good intentions, bad execution, which I guess could be interchangeable. But even if we add up three and four, ego still wins. Filmmaker what? wants to make the videos he wants to make and will not take no for an answer. I could see that being the case. What do you think? Is you didn't put mentally ill as a as a point, but I guess that's the same as just being well, stupid. Well, I'm right? ableist, so ge- genuinely stupid and mentally ill can kind of go hand in hand. Uh, mm, <laughs> I mean, I maybe it is the good intentions one. I don't know. Like, I can't see it being like clout driven or money driven. That doesn't make any sense. Um, oh, by the way, I, I don't to- know. I think he thinks it will work. I think he just thinks it's like a good idea and it will work, even can, though it can clearly Can you pull won't. up my stream for two seconds? I just need to explain one mechanic to you, and I need you to see the stream because I can't screen share this part. Okay. Yeah, let me see. All right, tell me when you're good and ready. I just need to make sure you're aware. Okay. Um, Sorry, I was looking at my favorite YouTube video, Ants on a Log by iDubs. Oh, uh, Tosify knows over. already. He knows exactly what's about to happen. Are you prepared? Let's see. All right, guys. So whenever we're talking about a certain act, we now we we're, we're we're a show. Like we we do. Uh, it's called yeah U R R, and um, it's our new show. So we have like graphics for it and everything. So whenever we're gonna be discussing any kind of rape. <laughs> Creator Clash. Wait. Okay, guys. So. Wait. Sponsored by Fansly. Where's the Fansly stuff? <laughs> Wait. That's even. <laughs> I love that. Dude. There are multiple ones of those. We have multiple. I'm glad. I'm glad that you made the the, the title <laughs> URR, which stands for what? Like Universal Rape. No. It's in- no. That's actually cute. It stands for Ultimate Rape Review. Ultimate rape review featuring Bo Blacks. This, <laughs> wow, 2024 is just uh So 
And we have emotes now that say ultimate rape review. And then we have one that Wait, says what? it's time. Because it's like a UFC reference. Like, it's time! You're cre- so at, so RFC's gone, so we're replacing it with <laughs> URR? It's the same font, have you noticed? Like, RFC font is the UFC font. <laughs> <laughs> So Augie's show is living on his Dude, ultimate rape uh, review. Augie's R- RFC forever. Long live URR. I'm going to be honest. I don't, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. We haven't even finished the first stream yet, but I will say this is by far my best bit that I've done in years. I'm, this is my f- every single time that we bring up. to make this, this I, like, I guess it's a template right yeah it's a template it's, it's the same shit i use for my intros and my videos it was like 20 minutes i took longer to render than it took to come up with but damn <laughs> so this is what you've been working on for the past like three years yeah, dude, this channel, is... like ultimate rape review dude it's like Carlos like, when he came back guests. and he's like hey guys i got make or break dude it's hey i guys. launched my new show ultimate rape <laughs> <Review>. make or <laughs> break this is way better than make or break or whatever Holy shit! So, All right, let's get so, to let's get to the rape though. Let's get to the main part. Okay? I literally I had them spamming the "it's time" emote before I played it in the very beginning of the segment. Holy it's shit! Content. All right, let wait, me, uh, uh, wait. Share so ha- does YouTube let you put like custom emotes from other channels into like other chats? Because it'd be uh, so funny no. to see ultimate rape review like all over like uh the law cow podcast chat oh god or i'm glad they can't do that because they would go in like a fucking rape they would go into like a raped person's chat and spam ultimate rape review oh my god they go in <laughs> no don't do this the youtube can't don't but yeah dude it's only on my channel uh that's the only place it's allowed to be put because um youtube has stupid policies and you can you can't bring your emotes everywhere else i'd probably make a shitload more money on these things but it also means that they probably don't ban them as much because when people abuse emotes, that's how they get fucked. Uh, I didn't bring back the yeah. flicking Stardust Bean emote. Um, oh yeah, just because we're not friends with Edwin anymore it doesn't have anything like. No, that's the only so reason. from Twitch I brought <laughs> Tippy Light. I brought my head. Yeah. I brought um, the hot dog, the, the uh, black turkey Tom, and then that one. But I didn't bring oh, the nice. Stardust one because recently she dumped her boyfriend on the kill stream. I saw that. I actually reacted to it on my stream, and I was she I was trying to dissect her fucking it. Boyfriend yeah. on the kill. Apparently, they're still together. Well, appa- like- yeah. Apparently, it was like a threat, but it was like a serious threat, and it was over the most stupid shit too. It was like them fighting over like H- Hunter Avalon and the hypothetical that like I don't know, like her boyfriend would like not let her go out and like potentially get shot or whatever. It was like super stupid. She's like, I'm an independent woman, and I won't let you. You wouldn't go out. She was basically like calling him a pussy. Yeah, it like, was actually fucking crazy. It, I might, was, maybe I'll do that funny. later this week. As long as I'm sick, I'm gonna keep streaming because I'm not making fucking videos when I'm sick. I just, I it feels like shit. I literally laid in bed yeah. all day, and then I get up and I stream for a couple hours. Um, I mean. Unironic, you, you say you like can't make content when you're sick, but unironically, you're making more content right now by being sick and streaming then i just don't no it's a little different like i it's a lot of thinking and this is not a lot of thinking i i yeah, went in yeah, one day that. with no docket today i was like i'm gonna watch mama max i ended up doing two hours before we even started mama max but that was totally by accident i just haven't streamed in a while so it's just kind of coming back to me and it's i have just like all this pent up fucking energy for fucking streaming yeah but i get I'm, that i have a lot of well i i've i've streamed quite a bit but there's sometimes why I like do no all of my streams are no docket and sometimes I just go on for like so long. Um, I was like watching all of like the RFC recap and I like ended up reacting to it like solo stream for like five hours because I don't know, dude. I was just really into it. All right. Um. So I think we're gonna cool it on Mama Max's videos now because honestly I don't feel super hyped about bringing. Bull Blacks into that conversation, I guess, uh, because I mean we have like two minutes left in the video. I think bringing Bull Blacks in would be ideal if we can get to the live stream where he debates Colton. That's probably a good place to bring Bull Blacks in. Does anyone have Dude, a timestamp or no? I don't get to review is? the rape. To be honest, we oh, haven't learned a thing yet. 
Oh, there's no rape yet? Oh, so it's just clickbait. The R, R, Here, URI. this is what we know. This is what he includes in his videos. He, this is the third one, so it has the most information. Um, ready? This is this is all we get from the video. You have to read all the descriptions and shit to get everything else. Wait, reacting to the reactions of Sniper Wolf's actions. What does that have to do with pedophiles? Well, that's the point. It was to drive in viewers, I guess, so people would see it. But I, I again, I don't really agree with the methods. Here, this is what, uh... I am a survivor of Camden Gerard Davis. This part. He was the leader of a destructive cult that has victimized hundreds of minors. This video is our screen for action. On March 18th, 2016, Spencer, a 16-year-old girl from Wiley, Texas, mysteriously disappeared, lured by the illusion of joining a supernatural family as a vampire on some random corner of the internet. She actually found herself ensnared in a dangerous sex cult, led by a child predator posing as a werewolf god. The man had recruited hundreds of young children, subjecting them to Almost seven years later, Spencer and the other survivors shared their stories with me. This video serves as their scream for action against their perpetrator. I think this is like the only video of him. I don't think there's another video of this guy. <laughs> okay. I've never seen another video of this guy. This is like the only thing they have. Uh, like of what he looks like, I guess. And they have pictures of him, obviously, but no videos. Um, that's all we have to work with. But that is, yeah, that is literally everything we learned. Um, again, Daddy. I can't believe it's not a TikTok. I've been given a timestamp to work with. Um, so this is him coming back. By the way, just shocker. This is his voice. Stream is starting. How's it look? Cool, cool. Washed out, really. Here's the thing. I don't know, maybe I'm just a dick. I don't think his voice is all that bad. His normal voice. Yeah, I think his normal a, voice is fine. It sounds like a great documentary voice. As long as people can see it, that's all that matters. It is a pretty decent documentary voice. First, Villafane is first, everyone. Everyone remember that Villafane was first. Like, he's Shane. got a good accent on him, too, that it kind of would... Because here's the thing. Nobody wants to listen to a fucking video essay from a British guy. There was just such an oversaturation that I legitimately think me having a New York accent like made me have more views in the very beginning. I think literally having a New York accent and doing a fucking video that you normally expect a British guy to make actually pushed me forward when I was starting because it was so <laughs> oversaturated. He's yeah, got like an Brits. interesting accent on him. He's got a good voice on him. He could literally be a fucking cutout video essayist. Like he has all the he has the talent for it. Clearly with the editing, even though I think um, he's doing it with Angry Slug now. But obviously, I mean I, his other content was edited well too. I don't know if he's always used editors or what. Um, and Toastify, you just got owned for being Brit. But Toastify, you're like the only British guy now. Like all the British guys quit. So now you're like a you're a uh, asset again. I guess I don't know. You know, British asset. Do we have we have the diversity quota with uh with Toastify? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not even in the right stream. This is the one. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Uh, is my mic working? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, How's okay, the volume good. on that? Is that like a absurdly loud? Because it's quiet for me. Uh, no, it's good for me. Okay. Sorry, I just want to make sure. Tried Logic. All right. Chud is my favorite Brit. I'm sorry, Toast. Chud is my favorite Brit. No, you're good. All right, so... Are we actually in the after hours now? Like, not to be a, a retard, but, like... Um, are we, like... Is this the after hours? It's fucking 1246 over here. This is, like, the after hours now, right? We're five hours in. Five hours and 11 minutes. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah. So, first, um, I wanted to ask you, uh... Well, how's everyone doing tonight? You guys doing good? Doing good. Thank yeah, you so much for doing asking. Doing pretty good. That's good. Um, so I want to ask you, Max, first. Uh, how come you changed the God Cult and then back to Mama Max? Okay. So the the purpose of changing to God Cult was to highlight how in cults okay. victimized hundreds of minors. Hundreds. What am I missing here? Hundreds. How do you how do you victimize hundreds of minors? Um I don't know, dude. That must be like a record. It's uh, like the ultimate. Apparently yeah. there's a Lyrics debate too that was before this. Ch chat, do you want to watch the Lyrics Colton debate? 
with Mama Max or the or just this. I can watch both. Um, we're here for the long haul. And if you are, tell Smaggle to send me the proper timestamp next time that you want to see. Both, just this. Do both, I guess. Colton is better. The lyrics one was bad. Both, both, both. See them in order. That's the thing I'm worried about. We should probably see them in order. Colton, you fucking freak. I mean, not Colton. Okay, you know what we'll do? Here. Maybe while you guys are sending me that timestamp, they did a four-hour so podcast, Bo Blacks. Oh. And this guy condensed it to 11 minutes. And we're going to condense it oh. to like oh, thank God. by watching it at 1.25 speed. Scare okay? theater too. Hell yeah. Don't listen to chat. They're retarded. Are you saying the Colton one is the only one worth watching? All right, we'll watch this and we'll watch Colton. If you're watching this, you probably know about the whole Mama Max cult situation thing right now. I know that a lot of people who were trying to learn about this were frustrated when they were just told that the best way to learn more was to watch a five-hour podcast on one of the victim's channels. So I figured for the sake of simplicity, I watched the entire podcast. this guy's literally stealing money and fucking donations from the victim. I still no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh my god, dude. I just took some notes. And I'm going to try to summarize it as best as possible so you can get the general gist of what's going on here and then go to the podcast at specific timestamps if you need more in-depth details. So here we go. By the way, the guy who did this is Scare Theater 2. I don't know how much clout he's getting off of this. It only got about 6K views. And we're going to be watching it in its entirety. So if he's mad about that, tell me. I'll remove it. But um, I need this because it's exactly... I Literally, the reasons he stated, I need this because I can't watch the four-hour one right now. So basically, the podcast is Max asking Spencer, uh, who is the victim of a cult that's been going on for a long time and is still active. And he's interviewing her about uh, what the cult is and her experience there. So at the two minute mark, Max asks the first question, which was, could you tell us more about yourself before you joined the cult? Uh, Spencer says she was raised by her grandparents, but she moved in with her dad and stepmom uh, when she was 11, which was a couple years after her great grandmother died uh, when she was nine years old. From here, uh, she was thrown around to a bunch of other family members because she was going through some mental stuff and they didn't seem to understand it. Eventually, she moved back in with her dad and stepmom. And then uh, that summer, she met a girl in summer school named Carrie Sutton, uh, and they were both 16 years old at the time. So Spencer and Carrie became friends, and after the school year started, uh, she started having more home issues, and at this point, Carrie introduced her to a guy she was talking to online who went by the name of Quinn. Uh, Quinn is 18 years old, just for context here. Uh, so Quinn, I guess, would try to manipulate them into doing things, and he uh, he even told Spencer that she was a vampire and that he was I a werewolf and he could step. communicate with God, like all these outlandish kinds of things. Oh, where is... Does anyone know where this girl's channel is? Who is this? A Auntie Spencer. Uh, um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wait, what? Why is her at King of Nothing? Wait, who's... Wait, what? Auntie Spencer, her, the girl who's in the video. Wait. Their at can't be King of Nothing. King of Nothing's... It's at something King of Nothing, yeah. Uh, God... Cats a flock and you've just given me like an impossible fucking task. I have no idea how to do that. Um, I'm trying to. They don't have a donation. Slimy button. Weasley fuck. Do they have anything? Any links? Instagram. Do they have a cash app that I could spend? With? They don't have a cash app. Do they tweet? Barely. Someone made her artwork. That's nice. You can't hurt me, Spencer. Cats a flocking. Uh, only if this is okay. Do you want me to send it through Max? Because I probably can do that. But I don't think I can do the other thing. I guess the money is going to her anyway. But Let me know because I have no donation links to her. What is that? Oh no, I'm sorry. She has a Patreon. Can I just send her an undisclosed amount of money? I, what am I... Hold on. What is her Patreon for before I give her money? Because if it's like a fucking NSFW fucking thing, I do not want to give her money that way. Um, penny annually. Uh... Oh, it's the fucking... No, 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 no. Her, she links some... 
she links to fucking Mama Max's Patreon. Do whatever, I don't know. Uh... Uh... You know what? I'll ask Max. Um, if there's... Because I don't want to give Max $20. No offense to Max, but he said his money from November and Patreon was going here, not January. All right, I'll get back to you on that. No, 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 I'm not going to keep it. You asked me to donate it, I will donate it. I just got to figure out the proper way to do it. And I'll put it on Twitter when I do. Okay? Um, some Reddit mod is... I talked to the Reddit mod already. We're good. So Spencer would communicate with Quinn on Kick primarily. After they're talking for a while and they develop some sort of camaraderie, Quinn tells Spencer that she's in danger and he convinces her to come and live with him. So accommodations are made and she goes to live with Quinn in his mother's house. At the seven minute mark, uh, Max asks, tell me more about Quinn. So then that this Quinn guy, though, which is an alias, uh, this the real name of him was Camden, who you'll come to know as the leader of this cult. And uh, yeah, so this was a, basically a, a supernatural kind of cult. They believed in things like vampires, werewolves, uh, spirits. Uh, this guy basically said he could communicate with God, and at one point he said that he was God. So she goes into like more details of the lore of the cults here, um, and then she also mentions that he would prey on underage people who had you know, ambiguous people about the supernatural. Those are the kind of people they're trying to pull into this kind of a thing. So at the 12 minute mark, Max asked how uh, Camden would target people and how the whole operation was run. Spencer told him that he would go online and he'd make posts about the supernatural, and he was trying to specifically target people from 11 years old to 17 years old. And it got a lot of people involved. And the way that it was all set up was almost like an MLM, is what Spencer says, in the sense that there were like rankings. So you could have, if you're like an honorary member, you could be like the leader of like part of like a pack, I suppose. And Spencer says that there could have easily been over 100 to 200 kids involved in this, at least at the peak. She also says that uh, if someone of a higher up level were to leave, then Camden would make everyone delete all of their accounts and make new ones. She also says that if they refused to obey him, then he would tell them that they wouldn't be a vampire or whatever anymore. And sometimes he would threaten them with other stuff too. Uh, so there was one instance where like members would leave and Camden would make a new account and pretend to be some sort of witch and he would message them and through this facade he'd get them to send him nudes and then Camden okay. now you know back to being himself he would use those pictures to blackmail them there also seemed to be a financial component here uh, I know that he asked Spencer to sell her 3ds at one point to give him money and when she refused he threatened her saying that her great grandmother's soul would go to hell if she didn't do it and Jesus, he seemed to have a lot of other members evil. Could you imagine telling a little girl, like, if you don't fucking give me money right now and sell your items, I will make your grandmother's soul go to hell. All right, like, I mean... That's crazy. I gotta remember, like, I think she was 16 at the time, so it's... It's not really easy to jump back into 16-year-old you. But, I mean... I, I feel know. like at that age you shouldn't be that gullible, but, like, she yeah, clearly but... was, and I can feel bad for her, you know? Yeah, that's, the, that's kind of the angle at it. I'm getting shot. There's also sending him money for stuff. There's definitely a financial component here, too. At about the 21 minute mark, they talk about Quinn's or Camden's other. And the other thing is, like, convince it, like, sending, like, you're a witch or whatever. Like, obviously, he's picking on a very select group of people, probably socially stunted. Uh, again, no offense to this yeah. person in particular. Probably not a lot of friends. Picking on loners or whatever on the outside. And then using the fact that they're like into these supernatural things as a gateway to getting them involved. So if he's really doing all this stuff, I mean, it's like unforgivable shit of like blackmailing a minor for fucking nudes and using that information to like keep them in your group or whatever. It's like some of the most vile, disgusting shit ever. Um, and by the way, I've talked to Mudahar and I'm taking his word for this. He says he's seen some of this shit. And that, like, he actually, like, Max has some really compelling stuff. So I'm not just sitting here saying Max has no research. This person's clearly fucking innocent or anything like that. I, I'm not implying that at all. Um, I don't know. People who know him have told me that it's it's good work. Again, like, I was just hoping that more of that would be readily available to me when I go to deep dive it. I don't want to have to tell you what Mudahar told me. I want to watch these. I watched three videos. I don't know yeah. anything. Yeah, the issue is not, like, no one's criticized. I don't think anybody's. Well, maybe some people are. I haven't seen, like, other people stream about this, but I doubt anyone's really criticizing Max for, like, <coughs> exposing this piece of shit. It's more of just the way he's going about it is sure. not good, right? But he just as easily could be wrong. Like, he, this could totally be... I could have total egg on my face, and I could be fucking this whole thing up right now because I'm not being more critical of, of Camden fucking Gerard Davis's fucking characterization. Um, and that would be my fault. It's just... I. 
I don't know. I've talked to people who tell me otherwise, so I'm hoping I see some stuff. Yeah, and, and that's like part and of I'm, the issue. Like Max should have, uh, you know, shown us why Cam and, Cameron Gerard Davis is like bad person yeah. he is through his videos. Uh, we shouldn't need to find that out from like. Mudahar. And it, again, would be entertaining to find that out. Like his video would do numbers. It would yeah easily perform on any channel that's like a commentary based channel too. You know. Yeah, it's like, it's like confusing that he thought this approach would like work or be like I know good. his mom's name, but I don't know any evidence of what he's asked these children for. Yeah, that's like crazy, but for aliases. So the other aliases that Camden would go by would be Quinn, Cade, and Sincade. And the last names that he used for all these aliases ah, was a fellow Destiny Two fan, Cade. Uh, the Demons is what he called the the last names for all of them. And uh, Spencer says she knows his real name is Camden because when she was staying with him, she saw his ID. At about the 28 minute mark, they talk about the other platforms the cult was active on. Spencer says that the cult was most active on Kick and Whisper. And uh, Camden was at the top of the cults. And I guess whoever he was dating at the time would be like a co-leader. And there were these weird familial structures with it, where I guess Camden and his girlfriend would be like the mom and dad and the rest would be like the children of the whole thing. And also Camden apparently would have people spy on their group chats. So he would always know what was going on. At about the 33 minute mark, uh, they asked, how did your experience differ from what you first expected when you joined? And Spencer says that when she met Camden for the first time, he immediately initiated sex with her. She felt uncomfortable, but she did comply. And she also mentioned that Camden was oftentimes very sexual. So at the 34 minute mark, they talk about something that happened to Spencer when she was actually on her way to moving in with Camden. So she had to travel a lot. It took it took days for her to get to him. And in the process of, of you know, reaching him, uh, when she was in Arkansas, she was apparently sexually assaulted. And unfortunately, because of this, she actually became pregnant from that sexual assault. So when she finally met Camden and told him about this, he forced her to induce a miscarriage by feeding her a large amount of cinnamon, vitamin C, and beating her stomach. And then what? Camden himself actually got what her pregnant on three fuck? other occasions and That's repeated a... this induced miscarriage process. He told her the reason he did this was because he wanted to traffic her and he thought that this process would get her body to automatically start rejecting pregnancies. And I guess there were points where he would try- Okay, I mean, this if, is... if even 1% of this is true, this guy should be on the electric chair. I mean- Yeah, literally, yeah, yeah. Like, what, see, this should have been in Max's video. I'm, I'm, I, oh, fucking Christ, this is crazy. This is literally, in, that's like the most the insane problem is, schizo though, shit I've ever heard. The problem is, not to be the bearer of bad news, the problem is that, like, there's nothing, like, this is just a person's spoken word testimony. And realistic yeah. And no accepting that, you know? Yeah, um... This is all stuff that needed to be reported at the time, which apparently was and was ignored by police, but I don't know if I have seen anything that implies that that's true either. It's, um, again, I don't know. It's, it's a lot of, sp that's the thing, right? You want me to talk about it. Okay. I'll talk about it, but now you want me to prove it. Okay. Yeah, I'll prove it. But like, can you, and if you can't, is it, do you think a person who's abused, right? Do you think their story is not worth telling if they can't prove it? That's such an interesting question. Um, it's worth telling, but like to, to like you know, no one's you know people it close you in your life, it. obviously. Um, in terms of like coming out with it publicly, um, if you can't prove it. If it's a public figure, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think maybe it is good to come out with it, even if you can't prove it. I'm gonna be honest, and this is like the most controversial thing I'll probably ever say on the show. No, on the show, you are. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's worth it, and I'll tell you right now. I maybe it is if you if you're willing to be a martyr and die for your cause, but in reality what's going to happen is you're going to be vehemently harassed. No one's going to believe you. It's going to empower the person who's come after you. And it's a fucked up situation to be in. But if, the, if something actually happened to you and you have no means to prove that it happened and to a public figure, a private figure, maybe it's different. A private figure yeah. is a different scenario, but I'm saying in your scenario of a public figure, if I had to prove that Turkey Tom fucking raped me and I have nothing to work with, if anything, I'm now giving him the past and the future that people lied about him the first time. So now I, I, he'll get double benefit of the doubt if he if offends again. Maybe that's like the worst thing I've ever said. And I might completely fucking 
wake up tomorrow and not agree with it. But yeah, I think um, thinking about from the victim's perspective and thinking about like all the things that could happen to that person. I don't. I, yeah, I don't think it it makes sense to put yourself out like that. Again, if it's a private figure or a person like Camden Gerard Davis, I don't necessarily agree with that because I mean, this guy's fucking nobody. Yeah, that's that's destroyed. what I was thinking of because we were talking like about Cameron, and I was just thinking about like private public figure. Yeah, it can definitely backfire for sure in that way. Um, I think that's maybe why like some people because it's know, not like you can go to the cops and be like i got raped 10 years ago and i just told you about it now and like that's gonna work for people who aren't suing bill cosby you know what i mean yeah it i think yeah like i think if it's like a public figure um i mean i hate to say it but maybe like it can just maybe if, if you literally can't prove it like for a public figure, maybe the best course of action would just to be like talk it out with like close family and, and stuff to like, you know, work through it. You definitely shouldn't like keep it bottled up for sure. You need to talk to people about it. But in terms of like the public, like, yeah, there's there's been like so many false allegations like in the past that it like people always talk about how it is hard for victims to come out because of false allegations and yeah it's true it's literally true so unfortunately i don't, I don't know how i would feel so. if i found out like if i could know privately right i could see into the future somebody shows me the, the truth that like this person was fucking raped like let's say a hypothetical random youtube scenario or whatever some debunked allegation is fucking true and no one will ever know and no one will ever believe them the well has been vehement like it's been poisoned there's nothing you can do about it but you've been given this like this view to know like hey this is real and that guy got away and there's nothing you can do about it that's how that person has to live anyway you know what i mean it's not well the burden is on me now that i know but that person lives like that scary thought you know yeah like yeah like unfortunately like just because of how much like misinformation there is around this type of stuff especially towards like public figures um it's just a sad reality that like if you don't have the proof like sometimes like you if you want to you can come out and talk about it and like tell your story but like there's going to be a large amount of people who like dissect it and look into it and like uh or, or like just don't believe it or whatever and you're like just you know it's it's hard for victims to come out against public figures for sure uh, without any definitive proof yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I, someone I in chat like, just pointed out JF is probably is sleeping fine after he probably murdered his wife. I don't know if that's personally true. But... Yeah, I, it might be like it, it, there there could be a scenario where it would be like easier to come out with a story to where like let's say um, a YouTuber or whatever like uh, assaulted multiple victims and one person did have proof and come out with their proof, then the person without the proof could come out and be like, "This happened to me too." And then everyone would believe it because there's proof from the other person. Mm -hmm. So, like, if there's multiple victims and one of them has proof, that va that heavily validates the other stories just inherently. Mm -hmm. So that that's one way. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's unfortunate and it pains me to say it. But yeah, like, if you to answer your question, like, if it is a public figure, yeah, I think in most scenarios like sometimes it won't be beneficial to yourself to come out that's why it's like it, really important to instill the value of like to be pro police in regards to these situations because yes yep. there are tons of untested rape kits but maybe yours won't be and that's the best chance you got yeah i understand you have to put your trust in a fucking governing body you have to put your trust in the fucking police department of america that most people fucking hate i totally get that but like do you think it's better to put your trust in a fucking YouTuber? Do you think, no. like, if you're, like, if someone in my chat right now, there's 600 fucking people watching, probably, hopefully, still. Yeah, 666. That's creepy. Um, if there's 666 oh. people watching right now, statistically, five of you are going to get raped this year, okay? If you go to the fucking police initially, you get the rape kit, you get everything done, your situation is so much... Now, I understand. That's like a societal problem. You don't want your parents to know. You don't want your family to know. You don't want your pride... You, like, you have your pride. You have your fucking emotions. I get that. I totally get that. Men and women. But, like, if you are proactive, 
you're probably going to, you have a significantly higher chance of having something happen and getting your, like getting your justice. And you don't even have to make a fucking YouTube video and tell everybody that you're a rape victim. You know what I mean? That's probably not so, such a fun thing to do to stand in front of everybody. It's like, it's empowering. Sure. But do you really want to be the person known as the guy, the person who got famous for getting fucking raped? No, no, you don't. You want, yeah. your you want the person who did it to go to fucking jail and go and get raped himself. That's the point. That's the plan, right? Ass <laughs> rape prison, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Um, also like, yeah, that is the most ideal way to be like the most persistent about it but also like depending on like the type of sexual assault it is sometimes it takes like a while for the victim to actually kind of realize that they've been sexually assaulted because they'll make like excuses in their head like oh well this happened or this happened or i didn't necessarily say no or like whatever and there's like you know there's layers to it uh so. listen dude if you don't want to go to the cops that's fine just know You'll be covered on. I got your back, chat. I got your back. All right, let's keep hearing about what what this guy actually supposedly did. Tried to get her to sleep with me, like other men off of Whisper, and she refused to do that uh, because she just didn't want to. And he told her that Leviathans were coming after her and that she needed to leave immediately after that. I guess he was upset that she wouldn't do it. So after this whole scenario happens, uh, she is rushed down to a gazebo in his neighborhood, and Camden tells her to call 911 with the phone that he gave her. The police arrive, Camden walks up and acts like he doesn't know what's happening, acts like, you know, he, he just felt bad for this girl, didn't know who she was. And I guess uh, the idea behind this was uh, to force Spencer into a foster home or group home, uh, essentially separating her uh, from being like this close to him. At about 38 minutes and 20 seconds, uh, Max asks more about Camden, and Spencer tells us that he would physically assault her. One time he tried to kill her on one occasion. At 41 minutes and 37 seconds, Max asks, describe day-to-day -day life in the cults. Spencer says that when she lived with him every day, uh, the, like things were more health-focused. He would feed her, give her water, encourage her to exercise. But sometimes he wouldn't let her shower for days because this kid lived with his mom and his brother. So I guess he didn't want them knowing that he had this, this girl over there. And sometimes he, uh, Spencer, she would have to pee in jars because he wouldn't let her leave oh the room. Oh my God. And then there were even some occasions in which he wouldn't even oh. feed her. She recalls one experience where... Uh, she went like days had gone by and for days he was only feeding her saltines and water and of course that's why when max was editing it he was like filming people feeding saltines to like fucking captives or something i guess that's why it was edited that way oh. a lot of sexual assault that was happening in day-to-day -day life that was a very big factor of all of this at the 52 minute mark something interesting happens spencer mentions another member of this cult who was named kayla who was sexually assaulted uh and like by Cam uh, camden and i guess uh she reported him to the police and for some reason, nothing happened. They just didn't care, I guess. So Spencer and her friend decided they wanted to stick around and try to collect evidence to try to do something about this. And that's when they started to really see how bad Camden was. So at one hour, one minute and 30 seconds, Max asks, was there a moment that led you to want to escape? Spencer says that the sexual assault of Kayla uh, played a big factor in that. And she said it was December of 2017 when she actually found out that this happened. And she was actually the one that made Kayla call the police. So the police were given photo evidence, texts, uh, and they didn't do anything. And uh, yeah, and then I guess eventually Spencer ended up leaving for good on the 4th of July. At Fuck one hour- you. At what point did you realize you were not an actual fucking vampire? Five minutes oh and 45 God. seconds, Max asked Spencer what the process of leaving was like, and she said that basically uh, she just told Camden that she was going to go, and that was that, but she is uh, still dealing with heavy trauma to this day. I mean, that kind of trauma doesn't really go away. Okay. All right, let's watch the debate. This is the debate. Colton is joining. I was told this is the one to watch. Psychology, they... Back to Mama Max. Okay, so... First, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, well, how's everyone doing tonight? You guys doing good? Doing good. Thank yeah, you so much for doing asking. Doing pretty good. That's good. Um, so I want to ask you, Max, first, uh, how come you changed the God Cult and then back to Mama Max? Okay, so the, the purpose of changing to God Cult was to highlight how in cult psychology, they told me that influencers use cult like techniques to build their audiences. And so I wanted to name the channel God Cult to make it clear, like, hey, we're all using cult-like techniques on all of you to build our audiences. 
um, according to cult psychologists, uh, just to make it clear uh, that uh, when we call ourselves influencers, that is like there's a, an emphasis on influence uh, because we can influence you. Uh, so yeah, that, that was the point of calling it God Call. And then I changed it back because Wait. one of the survivors... What do you got, Bob? So he called it God Call to prove that the word influencer means they influence people. I think that's in the word influencer. He called it God Call because uh, he was making an ARG, but he can't say that he's yeah. making an ARG because then it ruins his narrative that he wasn't making an ARG. Dude, that explanation was just so like, okay, like, so... I see God called and automatically I'm like, oh yeah, th he's calling it God called because, you know, influencers influence people. Like, I, like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Said it might alienate um, religious viewers. And Have a good night, Dwin Dwindy, Dwindle. Thank you for hanging out. Um, I do not expect you to be here for longer than five hours, so thank you so much for staying as long as you did. Um, others who don't want to be associated with cults, even though it's it was an anti-cult. But, uh, yeah. All right, yeah. All right, that makes sense. Um, so, uh... No, it doesn't. Let's see. So there are so many uh, things to go, uh, that, that, like so many notes that I have. So the first thing I guess I should ask, um, so when is, uh, just to refresh my memory, I may have la asked this last night, but when's the last time that any of this has been brought to uh, any authorities, like the FBI or police? Uh, probably about uh, three years ago. Three Jesus. Years. So you guys, now that you yeah, guys have bad. this, and... and how long have you guys been sort of talking to Mama Max, or how long have you guys all been talking? For like two and a half years. All right. Do you? I feel like well, now that you guys are sort of getting a case together. So just to be clear. Wait, he left. What? Oh, he just got up and walked away. Fuck! I didn't even realize I was playing fucking Fortnite. Have you guys, I've been talking. Yo, he just For left. For like two and a half years. So just to be clear. All right. Do you? They have not I contacted feel like, the police at well, all. Well, now that you guys are sort and of. And again. That's normally a huge point of contention, but I'm going to be ultra charitable and say, I don't know what the police is going to do for a situation that's a decade old. You know, this guy did this seven years ago, almost a decade. Oh, he did. This but is like, apparently he's still doing it. So that's then. Yeah. Then I don't know. Apparently. Wait, do we, do we have, we do have we have proof people. that he's like still doing it? Cause like, I don't think we have proof of life. I don't even know if this guy's still alive. I haven't seen evidence. I've seen one video of this guy in old pictures. I have no idea this guy's even living. Well, Spencer would have to know he's alive if she would want to do this campaign with Mama Max, but then right? Why is, but Mama Max can get your fucking IP address and dox the shit out of you if he really wants to, if you're a pedo. He's done it on multiple occasions. Why is he asking us to find him if they know where he is? If they have this guy, why are they reaching out to his mother to tell them that he's that she's a predator? Clearly, they don't have him at all, right? Clearly, they don't even know where he is. Yeah, it's, it literally says, like, find him. Yeah, find Camden Gerard but, Davis. So they can't oh. even find him. We don't even know if he's alive. So we don't know if he's active. He very well might be, but... And, I, it, and honestly, if he's done half the things that he's been accused of, it is worth finding out if he is active. Do not get me wrong. Yeah, for sure. A hundred percent. I totally get it. But like, I don't think they know where he is. I, don't, I, don't I just don't like, like, what, like, what are they expecting? Like, let's say this like campaign worked 100%. We are real. God called. It all worked. And Wait, like Eva found of the guy's now. mugshot? Is he in jail? What? That's kind of a... Eva found a police report Wait. from October of Z0... Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Fuck you. Well, Dude, is laughing. It... He was watching the stream. He knows. He understands the joke. No, I'm not looking at the chat. Oh. Um... But did this remind... Oh, a dude, traffic this violation. Like, could so this was be alive. like Coney 2012, dude? Wait, they actually found, they found a traffic violation in 2023, so that he's definitely alive. Unless he died like on Christmas Eve or something. He got Someone arrested ran for him over with a truck. License. Dude, do you ever like when you don't have when you can't find your wallet, but you want to go pick up fucking like an egg sandwich or something, or, or fucking Tim Hortons as you live in Canada? Do yeah. you ever just risk driving without a license and see what happens? Have you ever done that? What? Should I answer this on stream? Go <laughs> I guess that's the answer. Previously... I've driven without I've driven without my license. I did it yes. today. <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, I, no, 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 I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it, actually. I was going to, but then I found it. Expose me on the H3 subreddit. I fucking drove without a license once. Um, but yeah, like, let's say theoretically this, like, god cult stuff all worked and, like, we are here blew up and everything. What would that do? Like, what, what is, what's the goal? Like, so that, like, one person out of, like, the millions that, like, see this might potentially know make something about Gerard CDP. Davis? No, make him into the next EDP. Just fucking make him unemployable and stuff. And I guess if that's the best you can do, it's the best you can do. If he did those things, he deserves to be unemployable. But, I mean, again, I think that pedophiles and rapists deserve ass-rate prison. I don't think they deserve just being, like, losing their their careers i think that's too easy i don't understand why people don't want to like get these people put away that it, it should be the number one priority but again maybe it's easier said than done i don't know it doesn't make any sense to me i don't i don't get it what is this auto frenzy shotgun i have a shotgun already do i want that what do i like this one um i need a new ar eagle eye sniper do i have a sniper oh i have a sniper okay i mean i have an ar cool <laughs> yeah, I, ju I just don't. I fundamentally don't understand why Mama Max went about this in any way. Like, you have like the four like options on your poll, but I don't like. I honestly don't know which one it is because it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I don't know how making like a, all these videos in a series on Cameron Gerard Davis is going to help yeah so no i get you uh toastify you've been in here for fucking ages do you want to come in the call i don't hate you <laughs> toastify is <laughs> great i just feel bad he's been sitting in chat all night um and he's my peer so i should add him Oh, yeah, and I, he's and great. I owed you, but we haven't spoken in ages on stream, Bo Blacks. I owed you oh, and the fans a, a mid yes. after hours crossover. Yes. It okay. Oh. Dude, I was Hello. like, it's Hello. been so long Hello. since we've been on stream, and then you like, I just totally cut you me. off. Of <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to be on stream with you, bitch. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I got British Bo Blacks now. Hey Nick, can you stop harassing my old account, Minty Biscuit? All right, really, all right, really dude, just all right. Stop, 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 okay, stop. Okay, stop, okay, stop. okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. This uh, this whole Mama Max. I've been watching this since fucking lyrics to the end. Fucking, it, I don't. It, it it's so bizarrely mishandled. This is so bizarre. Basically, I don't get why. If he wants to make this make this content like the next EDP, why not just like do like a single doc? Like all of his other docs have worked fine. Why don't you just like enter like multiple videos calling out a bigger YouTubers? It it doesn't make sense to me, you know. Well, because it's worked. It's he's continued to go to the well, and this time the well didn't provide any water. He drank all of the water out of the well. Everyone was involved on the first video where he lynched a baby and called it answer us pedo tube that I pulled up before, and I need to probably scrape because I feel like I'm gonna get fucking taken down for that. Uh, where he had like a fucking baby doll getting lynched and he's like, Ants Ross, Pedo Tube. Everyone was like, whoa, this is so good. This is such a great idea. And he's like, Susan, won't you see? It is time. And everyone's like, oh my God, this is so yeah, cool. But... It's such a great idea. It's so, oh, so innovative. It's such a good idea. And then like the next year he went and he's like, it's time. YouTube, let live the pedophiles that you love or let die the children that you neglect. And everyone's like, fuck yes! Yes! Inject that right into my veins! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. And now he does it a third time. And everyone's like, all right, sir. You know, I only liked this insane psychotic technique two times. But now that you've done it a third time, clearly this is morally incorrect. And I am offended. That's well, it's because like, the first two times they were going after YouTube, and that's, like, something, like, everyone's like, yeah, fuck YouTube, I hate ads, like, whatever. But now he's going after, like, what, like, Charlie? Sniper yeah. Wolf drama? Like, it just... Yeah. Listen, Comment Cop says it's, um, it's Ego and Cloud. And then he called uh... himself a minority. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Dude, Common Cop is black. Wait, we're closer to finding out who Common Cop Wait, is. Common He's not Cop white. Common Cop is Camden Gerard Davis. That's why you won't get in the call. What? Common Cop, you better not be Mexican. All the Mexican people are being out at the Common community. You need to, you need to watch oh, your no. ethnicity, man. 
<laughs> Comic Cop. People uh, was I was wrong the first three times too. People just hate YouTube more. I mean, listen, you could literally just walk up to YouTube and be like, "You just want to rape children, don't you, Susan Wojcicki?" And people be like, "Yeah, I got demonetized once. You're goddamn right, she does." Yeah, literally, <laughs> dude. Because yeah. I remember you were on After Hours, like you and Augie were like arguing about if like Pedo Tube is good or not, and Augie's like, "Well, how are we gonna fight back against YouTube?" Or, we just or call them all like rapists that. and pedophiles, and some of them I'm sure like, are good people. Yeah, <laughs> dude, they're, dude, the, dude, the Leviathans are, are coming for YouTube. Dude, the same thing happened with Sniper Wolf, like the last uh, year, and they were like, "Oh, YouTube, they are protecting a pedophile, Sniper Wolf. You need to get this guy off." And it's like, come on. Yeah, really? that's, I, I was on the same side. I literally, I feel like yeah. I do these dramas like loop. I've been in the same. Honestly, we've been, we've been living the same drama for the last. Dude, two if years. you do YouTube for five years, the situations loop. We just do them again, and that's that's what causes the most burnout for me is when I have to argue the same subject. By the way, just update in the poll because we've let this one run for over an hour. Um, mm -hmm. Malicious clout driven has jumped two percent. It is now up to sixteen from fourteen. Uh, Stupidity and good intentions, bad execution is now tied for 18, and still Jeez. far and above leading the charge is ego. It's it's an it's an artist. I think I think it's ego. The fact that he he makes all these videos and then all the victims uh, of like sexual abuse come in the comments like Max, you're like safe, you're doing the Lord's work here. You're like this is really cathartic. This I is have really seen helpful. And then nobody he gets, like, all this speculate stuff. ego. I feel like I haven't seen a single person say it's ego. Before this, it, I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong here, because you've probably seen a lot more of this content than I have. Malicious clout driven was dominating the discussion on every other YouTube channel. If I if I pulled anyone else's chat, malicious clout driven, hundred percent, no questions asked. But all of a yeah. sudden now, everyone seems to be open to the fact that it might just be ego. I think people got like ego and clout driven confused because I I know like Tommy yeah. Tommy's stream was uh, Tom, uh, Tommy oh Tommy like, thinks he's like in, he's like fucking holding stacks of cash laughing maniacally as these children are <laughs> okay that's not what he's thinking all right but like <laughs> that's a, that's a strong that's what that's what Mama Max would have described Tommy as thinking if he was making the video all right but <laughs> yeah I don't know um. I don't know. I, I don't remember Lyrics's take on the whole situation. He might. I think he might have had like the same kind of opinion. I remember just thinking at the time it's ego. I never really got the idea that it's clout because this guy. Every time this guy's video gets taken down by YouTube, it's like, what kind of fucking clout are you gonna get there? Other than being like, YouTube, you gotta get my video back up, all right? Unless all uh, 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 you like pedophiles, all right? You gotta YouTube video back up, or you like pedophiles. So I don't know. Yeah. Yo, do you see my car? My my sick ride right now, Bob Blacks. Uh, no. I've actually been staring at the poll and deeply thinking about which one to choose, because I actually have no clue. Oh, damn. The I'm Lamborghini? The Lamborghini Huracan right now. Dude, isn't... That's just, like, Deji but I actually have music to, videos. I have to ride this and get three <laughs> seconds of airtime. Okay. Oh, what did I do? Oh, let's go. Getting a case together don't you think it'd be a better idea to before the video to give it to the authorities again now that you have you're like all together and you can sort of go as a collective to the uh police i mean we could have done that but at the same time with the the track record that we've already seen um it just didn't really seem realistic without having more of us survivors to do this well, I feel like because one person Why is he enough smiling? would be one person would be enough to sort of take care of someone like maybe this. he read so something like in chat. Would just be... to be fair, yeah, yeah. true, true. Oh, I'm being way too like nitpicky. Come on, yeah, wait, I need to. No, no, like I was he, just like he, listening, so and then he just he smiled. Forward. This must mean he's uh, <laughs> gonna kill <laughs> someone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm high. I'm trying to chase a guy on a motorcycle with a sniper. Oh my god, that was so fucking cool. Oh yeah, sorry. They're really good. Oh. oh? Did he disconnect? <laughs> uh oh. Sorry about oh, that. No. I don't know what happened. Why? He said she said they didn't go to the police because it's unrealistic. But like, well, they didn't the think YouTube the, gra thing... the, the graphics were kind of Nintendo. -y, you know what I mean? They look like you know, Pokemon graphics. That's why they didn't go. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, I feel like catch, like, it's so hard to catch someone like this, right, or or whatever, so 
why wouldn't you like even if it's unrealistic why wouldn't you ch take like every avenue to make it happen like, no that's guy... a really good question i don't mean to be a total retard that's a good question i'm confused about the hundreds of miners like yeah is hundreds of miners is no it just sounds like if there's hundreds of miners getting f in the ass by fucking gerard davis dude like why Blackula. wouldn't why wouldn't you fucking take every like you'd go to the police dude, you'd Blackula do god call you'd fucking you you went to critical before you went to the police you went to pewdiepie before you went to the police yeah you should just do it like it yeah I, I, how is it more realistic to get pewdiepie to randomly like make a youtube video on gerard davis Versus the police doing something. Like, yeah, maybe the chance is really slim. Well, in his defense, but... his argument is that Camden Gerard Davis is an active predator. So that, like, by doing this, other people might find... When when they're, like, people who might live in his... Let's say he has five miners in his fucking house right now that for some reason still have control of the internet, which, I don't know. I, I don't imagine that would be the case. But let's say they, they have free reign open internet. And they're watching Charlie. They're watching any famous YouTuber. And all of a sudden, all the famous YouTubers at the same time start discussing the fucking guy who's literally housing them right now. Making them realize, like, all of their favorite YouTubers are talking about them. And they found him. Dude. I'm just saying, hypothetically, this is, like, the best case scenario. There's no way this would ever work. But imagine, best case fucking scenario. This guy is literally fucking found because a bunch of fucking huge YouTubers randomly picked up his story because Mama Max yeah. found it. And all of what? a sudden he goes to jail and gets fucked or whatever. Cause all what if there's a victim that Gerard Davis is about to reel in, they fucking see on their phone PewDiePie making fun of him, and then right ne next to that they see a text from Gerard Davis saying, come over, BB. <laughs> It's over, dude. They're <laughs> like, they'll te they'll text him and be like, PewDiePie exposed you, and then it's over, dude. No victim. Dude, what do you think? Dude, I mean, Anthony Fantano just exposed you. Do you think what what happened? <laughs> dude, PewDiePie exposed you as a pedo. Fuck off. Dude, what would happen if if Anthony Fantano ex exposed Camden Gerard, the completionist? Okay. What <laughs> fuck's sake, man? Yeah, uh, Camden Gerard, uh, Khalil. Gerard the completionist. Dude, Camden nice Gerard the completionist. <laughs> I, I didn't even know. He's trying. He's trying to. Same, he's trying like, to find every minor. God. One hundred percent. Dude, if I was Camden Gerard the completionist, the first thing I would be doing is. <laughs> We're back, we're back. <laughs> dude, why do people say the, the commentary community's cancer and toxic? I don't get it. Dude, dude this is my new show, dude. An ultimate rape review, guys. Dude, dude, fuck it. Dude, Chud Logic tried to one-up me by creating rape review before I had the idea. So I created the ultimate rape review. So now I'm the number one rape reviewer. Yeah. And the U kind of adds some flavor to it because it's like there's like UFC and then like dude, you other are, U things. There used to be RFC. Yeah. Now there's ultimate rape review. URL. <laughs> yeah. You're the best buys the fucking man. Best. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. That's <laughs> with Show Rogan freaking out. <laughs> you know what's funny is every time I click that button, I'm not hearing it. I have no idea. You're not hearing like, it. Like, I, I made oh it, and God. I heard it once, like, three hours ago. But everyone's <laughs> telling me it's really funny, so I can't wait to go back and watch it. It's so good. It's so good, man. So good. That's <sighs> that's, that's a better Again. bit than Patipso has ever done. Actually, what do you story. think does more for helping children? Donating to, a, like, a nameless, faceless, like, top-of-the-line, like, number one Google search result charity for helping children who are trafficked, or to, like, make a video defending this specific individual? What helps more in the grand scheme of things? Um, it's, it's weird, because it's, it's, like, the charity is, like, going after a wide range it's like throwing a net on going after like a wide range of people whereas with the public like um where it's like yeah with like a public youtuber going after only one person so it's hard to it's hard to compare them to say which one's better or not it depends <sighs> this is this is a, this is a tough one you've thrown me here um yeah. listen we're trying to have thought-provoking conversations on rape review <laughs> <laughs> uh i probably <sighs> I don't even know. You don't even. I, I assuming the charities obviously help them, because, I mean, yeah, that's a given. Um, I don't know. 
It's because it's you feel more emotional connection with with a victim when you talk to them. Dude, we like... had an emotional connection, <laughs> okay. not a sexual one. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're so... Put, I, oh, Wait, has anybody no. heard that? Do you know that reference? Yeah, I know. I know, I know. that reference. I know we, that are, reference. we are, like, way too terminally online. <laughs> We're, like, so fucking content brain. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, this is, nope. this is Camden Gerard Davis's theme song, all right? Hold on. Let's accept the fact that Zeph is not triggered by this. Wait, this is actually, dude. This is Destiny. Day. This is Destiny, guys. Destiny just went live, and he's talking about his wife. Okay, this is Destiny okay. just went live, and he's talking about his relationship with his wife and how he feels that his wife has now left him for another man. Sir, how do you feel about the fact that Wiz is living with her ex-husband? Yeah, and you're not most likely, if reality is a thing, taking the dick from. Her. So what's your opinion on that situation, Seth? I'll give you Schmeckel an honest answer. I don't I don't really care for Fred being there, honestly, but th then again, we have an emotional connection, not a sexual one. <laughs> not a sexual one. Not a sexual one. <laughs> All right, if you ever want to listen to the whole song, it's on, uh, I can't even say it. I'm just going to put it on the screen. Right, right, this guy's on fucking Yabowz's, Yabowz's, fucking something. Oh, I got to snipe this guy. That first, we'll shut him had to be the most regrettable sentence that guy has ever said. Imagine just saying something and that's what <laughs> it turns Dude, into. Do you know the guy who's awkwardly giggling in this clip is Ian Miles Chung? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, another fucking vintage, I love that guy. vintage bad guy in the community. I hate that guy. Um, yeah, he flash banged a dog. Dude, he banged a dog? Yeah, he That banged, should have been the rumor. He, he banged a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked my dog. Dude, dude. He banged a dog. He fucked Wild dude, Goose's I can't dog. Believe, I can't, dude, I can't believe Ian Miles Chung banged a dog. <laughs> what a dude, fucked up. Dude, you gotta see. <laughs> a piece of shit he banged a dog dude we gotta Jim. send in we gotta send in mama bags cause we, this guy keeps banging dogs <laughs> there's a cult <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <t> he lures them in dude, with a doggy the treat first va the first asian guy to fuck instead of eat his dog <laughs> dude fuck this guy man. literally he sees a dog and then all of a sudden he's just <laughs> I just, I just let it play out. I, I, I let oh, it yeah. play a little bit. This is my nuke sound. Tommy has his nuke. I have my rape review intro. <laughs> your, your rape review sound. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> all right, Camden can wait. Welcome to rape review. Right now, and I haven't gotten a single dubber tonight. All right. And I have Peter's pump shot. I, dude, I have Peter's pumper. All right. I'm getting ready to use this. And I know yeah, how to. Eat. I know how to pump. All right, guys. Let's get this thing going. You got fucked up by Tom. You know Pie Girl called into Tom's dream. I had fucking <laughs> killed myself if I had to talk to Pie Girl. Holy oh, shit. wow. I hate Pie. Oh my god. You are dead, sir. Oh my god. I am dead. It's John fucking Dick! I have two snipers, and I'm actually trained to use them. Not trained, I guess. Oh my god, I'm throwing. It's over. <clears throat> Welcome to Rape Review, where we Welcome review to the rape best theory. rapes. <laughs> Top 10 rapes of 2023, number one. Uh. Yeah, buddy? What are you gonna, what are you gonna name? Uh, well, wait, who got raped last year? Um, <laughs> welcome to Rape Theory! My name is fucking Matt Pitt. <laughs> Oh, like, oh, no, no, oh, wait, no, oh, no, uh, wait, ah, uh, never mind, because didn't, didn't, um, didn't Keffels have a stream talking about that? Oh, that's Dude, a good point. I have no idea. <laughs> the Keffels stream that no one knows anything about. With I just know there was, like, a Keffels stream with, like, 
uh, the Wait a minute. Leg. I got oh my god. Dude, Matt Pitt has one extra T and one less leg than Matt Pat. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, wait, that is crazy. What the fuck? <laughs> That's insane, dude. You just give Yo, him Yo, someone dude. chopped off Matt Pat's leg and then he turned into like he downgraded to now recording. Welcome to Rape Theory. Now recording. <laughs> Alright, you gotta do the now recording voice. It's like it's like rape review. Now, now, now rape. <laughs> rape review. <laughs> dude, dude, you know what'd be sick is if Mama Max now watched raping. this and made now recording a new intro based off of <laughs> like with his voice, like his fucking video voice, and it's just like now recording or whatever. Like it's just like, <laughs> now recording. Yeah. <laughs> The confession of Cameron Drew Davis. Oh man. All right, let's keep going. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let me let me try inviting him again. <laughs> I don't know what the heck happened. Welcome oh, to oh. rape theory. Yeah, it's fucking. Uh, sorry retarded. about that, Colton. Hundreds of minors victimized. Dude. All this and more on rape review. Oh my God. Wait. Oh my let's God. go. <laughs> Oh my god. Dude, this was the fucking greatest video You're playing of all time. Minecraft in the Oh my god. Did you see this? Did you see this when it went Playing like Minecraft in the cave. You're playing Minecraft in the cave looking for diamonds. That's funny. I'm in the same cave looking for miners. Cause my sexual attraction to miners oh is major. God, is Can't even Dude, play hopscotch without popping a rager. Always been a <laughs> Have you seen the clip where they timed it to like the Fortnite Eminem concert? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, listen, I helped it. Dream lightly, not really, but like, this is still very funny. And he won. So, I get to laugh. Oh. Mr. Girl's music still goes hard. Not as hard as apparently his wife. Appar I, I, I was what told, happened with Mr. Girl's wife? I was told that all the people who received his destiny manifesto via email just got a second email that Mr. Girl says, wait for this one, his girlfriend is abusive. Damn. And he's wait. exposed oh, his girlfriend wow. for being abusive. Yeah. Wait, didn't he, wasn't it like, didn't he like yell at her saying like abusive shit or some shit? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, there's but... the entire like video where he's like, like she's like uncomfortable on the in this part of his video. Dude, do you yeah. love when he eats the orange? That's my favorite yeah. Mr. Girl moment. <laughs> is when she's like about to cry hysterically and he just starts biting yeah, the orange like an apple. The orange. And I asked him like in our convo if he was like aggressively eating the orange to like destroy her in the conversation. <laughs> orange eaten to destroy women. Hey what Courtney, how are you doing, Courtney? You caused me quite a lot of trouble this year. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're glad to awesome. see you're in the chat still. I'm glad to see you made the trip to YouTube. Not a lot of people made the trip to Twitch, but uh, I'm not mad at all. I'm not mad at all. I'm very thankful that 600 uh, oh, sorry, 608 of my closest friends and family are um, are here hanging out at last. Dude, if only you did a rape review on Twitch, then <laughs> people would come. Yeah, what the know. hell? What did I say? <laughs> I'm, I did not kick. I don't know what happened, but I did not do that. <laughs> now I'm sad. Um, yeah, I was, sorry about that. I was basically gonna ask, um, I, I just died. That was crazy. Uh, I was just gonna ask, um, so wouldn't, wouldn't it be, I, I don't know, because obviously it's up to you guys how you go about this, uh, but let me quickly I, jump I in and do some super chats because I imagine I'm not gonna get a lot more because it's late and you guys probably have post super chat exhaustion already. Thank you guys, everyone who's been supporting me tonight. Um, so we're at Vault. Enjoy my Z dollars. Thanks, Dick. Reynold Hughes, thank you for the $10. I thought I, uh, I thought it was everyone liked... E I read this one already. I couldn't read it the first time, but I'm not going to try again. Thank you for the time. Uh, subscribe to Himpleton, $2. He also violated TOS in both cases. Plants became a new member. Stefan Corbino said Z in the chat if you should get a Godzilla pinball. And he spelled pinball wrong. Pinball ball. Pimp ball. Pimp ball. Um... Subscribe to Himpleton. Thanks for the five. He admitted on a live that a lot of the new stuff mostly got written and it's very obvious. Um, Mike the Bike sent two. Mama Max fake voice makes me want a game end. Mike the Bike sent five. <laughs> I want you to ignore the stunt I pulled and believe what I now say because I don't want Charlie to be mad at me. Dash Mama Max. Soapbox with a new membership. Thank you so much. Cats a flocking. Donate this to them. I will do the best I can. $20 Canadian. I like to say Canadian. 
uh, and because your money is worth nothing. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, uh, confusing opinion, one gift. No, bro. All right. Off topic home arcade thing again. I watched this guy, Michael B. the Game Genie. Seems like a super chill dude. He's like a 50 year old fucking dad with, with two kids, and he likes his home arcade. And he makes content. And, like, those guys, by the way, they have their own VidCon, too. Like, all the boomer adults who collect arcades have their own VidCon. Yeah. And it's, like, the fucking most wholesome thing, watching them play basketball together and then fucking get, go out for beers and stuff. Um, but he is Canadian. So not only can he not get half the products, because they don't ship to your backwards-ass fucking Mountie country, but, like, at the same time, wireless, that's all going on. He um, He has to spend, like... I think the pinball there for him, instead of being seven grand, is like eleven grand, or yeah, something, that something about fucking right. absurd like that. Like he has to just—he has a, such a higher barrier to entry to like play fun games because your fucking mounty <coughs> money is worth jack shit. Let, let me see the conversion rate. Actually, just, just Google it. Just more. Google it. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing. Google uh, Stranger Things Pro Stranger Things Pro Pinball. Oh, I was going to Google USD to CAD, but I guess I could also look up... Well, he's, he was trying to get the same machine as me, so I was wondering how much it would cost him. Well, if you say 7,000... Wait, 7,000... Well, just Google it, because it's going to come up on the search result. It'll tell you how much they're charging. Because I don't know if they're charging the exact conversion. Okay, what do you want? Look up Stranger Things... Wait, look up Stern, S-T-R-E-N, uh, Stranger Things, Pinball, uh, okay, and Pro, Pro, because Premium will be more... Okay, I'll I'll go to Pro. Turn 2019. Wait, it doesn't show a price. It's just a review. Wait, where do I buy? Oh, buy it on SternPinball.com. I'm Wait, you could buy it from SternPinball.com in Canada. What the fuck? Uh, Pro. It was the price though. Buy game. Oh, it's it says it's seven thousand. Then you're getting the U.S. price. That's not get. That's not the Canadian. Okay. There's no way. Um, because when I Google it, right, I type in Stern Stranger Things Canada price. Pro. Um, oh, oh, here's a and I search by shopping. Website. Yeah, it's six ninety nine oh, in USD. For for here, it just says it's seven thousand three hundred. Oh, so you're only I can link you're it. only getting Mark three hundred up. That's actually a really good deal. Yeah, here's the deal. I mean, if you want it or anyone wants this fucking... If I found, like, a secret good deal on iPinballMachine.ca... <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad deal at all. I wonder if it's a used one, even then, if it's in good condition. In stock, or it says condition new, release 2020. Oh, no, that means it can't... It's uh, probably on the line the same week mine was. Uh, I have a... Yeah. I think I have a, a made-on ship in no, late November. Mid-November? easily fuck. Real question. Do Super Chats go towards a pinball stream? I can think about it. I'm not going to say anything yet. I'm telling you right now, though, if a, a, at very least, it might go towards a Godzilla. I will say that. But uh, it's not really a lot of money to get the pinballs thing going. I'm going to probably use my cell phone uh, to at least do at least one of the cameras. Uh, I mean, I have three three fucking phones, so like, I could probably get some. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. All right. Let's get some more of this going. And I think this is probably where we'll end it tonight is uh, after this convo. I feel like it, the best play here is to just keep hounding the police like every day and it, rather than and save the video till after there is a resolution I am why I'll not make a video on the fucking police department yeah, yeah try to yeah. get national media attention <laughs> they're not, they're police department her. wake up police de NYPD wake up well, no, it's like if it you is. name out their specific police department and you use large youtubers to push people into and they get like a shitload of problems in their in their line or whatever if this girl has a rape kit that went untested for fucking 15 years or something crazy like that which is obviously not 15 but like seven years or whatever then it'll like push them to do something about it or maybe hold some of the people who didn't do something about it responsible potentially or at least, I don't know, say sorry? Say sorry? Like, tell her I'm, we're, we're sorry? Isn't that, doesn't that mean a lot more than just, like, the nothing that we have right now? I don't know, maybe it's not enough. The it's never that enough. We have, right? The Leviathans are coming for you and the NYPD. It's it, tell the, yeah, tell the NYPD the Leviathans will come for you if you don't fucking... <laughs> the that, police listen, department that guy likes done a pedophiles. Lot of wrong, but he did come up with a really good idea. Just tell people Leviathans are coming after you. Sergeant Payne! Sergeant you are... <laughs>
<laughs> you have let this te- rape test get untested for far too long. <laughs> Sergeant it's Payne time for us to get violence. a retribution. PewDiePie, I know you care about pedophiles I'm being- I'm just saying, like, me, Aiden, and you, and Augie called the police more than half these fucking pedo hunter YouTubers. Yo! Oh, hell yeah, dude, we're stopping rape. Wasn't there a- I, I remember, I think Treadlock covered this. Wasn't there, like- a collection of the reports made towards the police after the stream. I think I that eventually there were, yeah, something was released like that. Okay, I'm just saying because it, because I, I think I talked about this. I talked about the situation, so this sounds a lot like it's going to be like the the Odyssey on police reports in 2020. That there was nothing worse than that when they were sending Leafy's video to the cops. That was one of the funniest <laughs> things I ever watched. It's and and Chris than... Hansen, that fucking asshole, went live and was like, "We have some confirmed reports to the police department. We have they've been deemed credible by the police and are currently being investigated." And I looked at it, I was like, "You should watch this video. YouTube yeah. Onision is the cringiest man alive. The Onision <laughs> rant. And then Leafy got banned probably because Onision has ties to susan and covered it up dude imagine if it turned out that like leafy was banned because police have looked into his content or something from that and, like, yeah from the onision yeah oh my God. that'd be so funny that'd be so awesome wait why is pyro cynical in my chat right now pyro please right, talk gonna... about do you see him he's right Davis. there it's niall no, do you know any yeah, have you ever met another that. person named I... niall Actually, no. I've the never Niall met Rider. anyone named Niall, so you have to be Pyro. All right, all right. Wait, Sounds Niall, like why are you? Why is Pyro thing. talking to Courtney in my chat? <laughs> why are you awake, Courtney? Courtney, do a space. God damn, is she like a fat fucking farting furry? Like, what's going on, dude? Dude, do you guys miss my favorite? Hey, I have a question. Does anyone here remember the official Kevin Blanco? That name. Ring is very familiar, but I forget. You need to jog my memory. Does anyone remember? No one in chat remembers the official Kevin Blanco. This is like an ancient meme. Back in the it day, sounds familiar, but I don't. I don't remember it specifically. Dude, back no. in the day, we used to make fun of people's names or whatever, and they would come in as like, um, like official Nick Diorio or something, or like, or like a what is it like? the turkey tom or like they would have like some prefix to their name as like they're the real one right yeah, so tommy like... one day just in the middle of the show stopped during a huge section and like went holy shit it's the official kevin blanco and we're like who the fuck is that and he goes it's kevin blanco you didn't see him in that movie and he's like i am not the kevin blanco you think i am and he's like no it's him dude it's him it's totally him <laughs> and like every time he would be in there tommy would stop the whole show and be like it's the official kevin blanco or whatever it was just some guy named kevin <laughs> it was just some guy named Kevin Blanco. Dude, it's the official Kevin Spacey. Let's go. <laughs> that was like a classic, classic vintage meme. I remember one of the first things I did on YouTube is I interviewed the official Kevin Blanco, and my audio was terrible, so you couldn't hear him. <laughs> Dude, the official oh Kevin Blanco is why Nick is a YouTuber right now. Dude, that's the only reason I'm a YouTuber right today. Now. All right, sorry. It's a total random niche reference. I got. I've been on YouTube for so long now. Things I've done on YouTube are really old random niche stories. It used to be like oh. my actual life was the stories that I used to tell, <laughs> and now I've been here so long that like I'm telling stories that like I assume people remember, but it's just me. Fuck. Yeah, I'm like, la- dude. I'm like, 2016 and onward is modern YouTube, and people are like, what? Oh, chat. Modern. All right. <laughs> listen, 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 chat. Okay. I like. I know. I know why all of you are here. I know. I got to give the people what they want. I know why 600 people are still here at two in the morning with me. Okay, watching Camden Gerard Davis. Okay, we got the we got the message out, Mama Max. We talked to Keemstar. We talked to Bo Blacks. We talked to Toastify. We talked to fucking 700 of my closest friends and family, and now they know about Camden Gerard Davis. I think. And we will, um, we will spread the word about Camden Gerard Davis to but, other people. I'll spread it to my subscribers. Before I go today, I will have to give you the news. Stern has announced a new pinball machine that's going on sale for pre-order <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> and we are going to We review. are real. No, no, but here's the deal. <laughs> pinball machine. Here's the deal. I've got the leaked trailer. I know. I know. It's it's insane. it's not out yet. The trailer's what not the out fuck? yet, but I have the we're going to watch the leaked trailer for the new Jaws machine, guys. I know. All right, let's keep going. This is a pretty serious sort of deal, and you guys said you have a lot of proof to <laughs> back this up, right? Yeah. <laughs> you I just love, dude, I love to imagine that he was like responding to you. He's like, "Whoa, it's a pretty serious deal. Do you have the Jaws fucking trailer to back that up, bro?" 
Wait, Draft just said, I will tell my dog about Cameron, whatever the fuck his name is. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Cameron? I, I don't know. I oh guess God. just... The Cameron urgency we never really knew. I will tell my dog about Cameron Diaz, okay? Dude, I cannot believe that Cameron Gerard, the completionist, has con- has done these things. Yeah, Ouch. open hand fan- <laughs> I don't want to make false claims, but... To go about it when we were younger and it has become urgent. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, Camden Gerard, the completionist Davis, sounds really familiar. I can't believe he did that charity. F- oh my God. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> Hundreds of miners were scammed by Open Hand <laughs> Foundation. <laughs> Dude, if you like slam two stories together and that would be cool. <laughs> Indie Dude. land is watched by a lot of Could you kids imagine? who spent just... their mum's money on. <laughs> imagine, imagine if I DM'd him and I'm like, I'm gonna make a video on Gerard. You, you know what, you've made a really good point. And then I released a video yeah. on the completionist and Dude. stuff. What if you you just made like you know how like sometimes people talk about like two or three stories that are like similar to each other in a video like you did with uh the hypocrisy or whatever. <laughs> I just make a video just, on Gerard. You just do a video on Gerard legitimately and then just put uh, talk about Cameron Gerard Davis and it's just like you know, the two Gerards, dude, the worst Gerards honestly, of 2023. Honestly, like, Bobblex, that would almost be as crazy as making a video on Gerard Davis and using critical in the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, my oh wait he did that it happened oh wow dude but no dude i i love that idea of like i usually like want to do hypocrisy uh this year i'm working on something where i use charity uh there's like a whole different like it's like so like the yeah. little gel that holds the two stories together or three stories but in this case <laughs> it's two. like and then like the next year like next video i'm doing the story on gerard and the, the glue yeah, that holds like, it together is their names are name, both gerard their <laughs> names are really similar they're not spelt the same way either it's, no, it's, it's even close, and it's just... a middle name versus a first name <laughs> wait when they found the the guy when they found the mugshot of the license may were they not pulling over gerard the completionist dude maybe could you imagine <laughs> Dude, this dude, is I, how Gerard dude, looks wait, without a beard. Dude, 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 I would. I imagine if you, if I DM him right now, I'm like, dude, I not only do I have his fucking face, I have his tax filings. Oh my god! <laughs> and you send him to. You send him these ones. Oh my god! Hey, where did Mudahar not tell you? He was looking into this. Yeah. Wait, I'm gonna DM yeah, Mudahar after I get off, and I just said I found Camden Gerard's. You're never gonna believe I found his tax return. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry, wrong Gerard. My <laughs> like telling Muda, like I just saw him some ordinary Dude, gamers. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So the first, all right, this is my new Gerard video. It's called like the craziest Gerards on YouTube. All right, so first one is Gerard <laughs> the Completionist, okay, and then the second one is Camden Davis Gerard. We combine them by the fact that they're named Gerard, and then the third story will be like the the closer that comes out of nowhere, and I'll be doing my third segment on pro Gerard. Yeah, oh pro God. Gerard the completionist. Yeah. No, 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 pro Jared, but pro Gerard. I'll just call him yeah. pro Gerard the entire episode. Pro Gerard Davis. Like, this is how this is all linked together in these <laughs> Dude, stories. Isn't it crazy that pro Gerard sounds very similar to pro Jared? Some could say <laughs> that they're interchangeable. Anyways, pro Gerard was a YouTuber who fucking pulled his cock out on Snapchat and um and dressed and like and, and and. and lured someone into a vampire cult and he also defended regular money. Gerard yeah, yeah. Pro Gerard held an Atari controller once oh god he's a gamer I don't he's know I'm, I, Gerard kinda looks like somebody who'd be, never mind I'm not making the joke okay <laughs> wait wait I hold on know. I was not going race I was going rapist <laughs> Oh. <laughs> wait. I'm sorry, I was going- Which Gerard? Oh, wait, which Gerard are you <laughs> Tale of two Gerards. I was not going race, I was going rape, okay? I hope that's the the rape review in your, your intro for your Gerard video. Yeah, it's a rape review, not race <laughs> review. Three Come Gerards. on. Dude, honestly, the video I'm making now is the only video where I can't use the rape review. Like that's the only God time I, I I found a whole topic that has nothing to do with rape, so I'm actually pretty stu- I'm pretty hyped. Um, all right, lucky. let's get through let's this because I want to talk about Jaws before I get offline, and we've already bled to 567. Yes, I th- feel the urgency of the matter requires all of us to start bringing the survivors together. I don't want to wait for the bureaucracy. Oh, thanks, of, confusing for the law gifted. enforcement to the take your time. The bureaucracy of law enforcement. When it's already been. I feel like we're we're all weathered here because I've been at this for six and a half hours, but that was a retarded fucking statement just now. The bureaucracy of what? 
Yeah, let's let's just jump back for requires all of us to start thing. bringing the survivors together. I don't want to wait for the bureaucracy of of law enforcement to take their time when it's already been. You mean like been... the legal procession? Just, what, what do you I, mean what? take their time? What are they gonna What are you gonna do? Kill him? <laughs> I don't want to wait for the law enforcement. I think I'm gonna use a shotgun and do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like I don't realistically, wait for what the am law I supposed to, to do for their that? job? I'm not gonna wait for the bureaucracy of the like, law. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I, I, I am the like, law. I'm not gonna wait for like the fucking legal procession to like. I don't. I don't. Is, it, is he? He. Been, okay. I gotta ask one thing. This has been confusing. Is he actually? Because I've heard some people say he's like just filing like a, like a lawsuit for damages, and I've heard other people say like a legal lawsuit. I think they have the police now involved. But back when this was happening, I think it was just for money. I don't. I don't know how impactful that is. Is that impact? I, I don't know. Someone correct me in chat. I don't know. Surely I'm wrong. Money has a great impact in our society. Cameron Seven Gerard years <laughs> um, with multiple um, reports, like that's ridiculous. That's and, true, uh, though. That's if, also if why we're taking them were filed to court as well. Seven years. Because this is if they had actual stuff and it wasn't just all spoken word and shit was going down. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Call out the police department. Maybe. Mm. Uh, maybe yeah. I'm retarded with that. I don't know. Maybe that's a real privileged fucking position for me, but I don't know. Um, I don't know. This is absurd. I mean, it's better than calling out Critical. <laughs> God, <what is> critical <laughs> like, I don't know, like... Critical like, is going to give I'm, you his permission to kill. I'm not an expert. I don't know, like, what the best course definitively would be, but it's not calling out uh, Critical. That's like, that's... He should have just done a video, like a documentary, just sitting down yeah. with the victim and having an interview and then making a timeline of what happened. That's what everyone advised him, like, as soon as he's doing these streams. There's a call with Mudahar, and Mudahar just says that. And he's like, yeah, I kind of agree. And they're like, that's what you should have done since the beginning. I feel like, like that's the most obvious that's choice why you should have made for I... a video like this. Yeah, that's why I didn't understand why he reached out to me, because, I mean, he already knows my opinion. We did a whole podcast last year where I told him exactly what I thought he should do. Um, and... Honestly, again, I really think this is because he's been so successful doing the same bullshit strategy so many times, and everyone just let him get away with it. And now all of a sudden they've decided, hmm, we actually don't want you to do this anymore, and now he does. he's struggling to cope with it because he's been doing this with impunity for three years. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you don't tell this guy what he's doing is wrong, and you don't, like, hold him to account for it by not, you know, continuing to embrace him for doing it, just because it's YouTube, he got away with it. Now he doesn't realize what he's doing is wrong, and now well, he has to, like, correct in, in action, I guess. I don't know. He did get, like, some criticism and feedback uh, from, like, the last one. Yeah, like, but he was successful. The the yeah, and... who gives a fuck what I have to say? I'm just one guy. He's got hundreds of people liking the video. He didn't know this thing yep. was fucked until he put out a video that didn't hit 100k views. That's when he realized, hmm. oh, fuck, I fucked something up. Holy shit, my charity video is the worst performing video in my last 10, and I don't even have 10 uploaded on my channel anymore. So <laughs> Dude, yeah. that Turkey yeah. Tom comparison you made, Nick, that is perfect. Because Tom made a video, obviously, on, like, the Giggly Goon Clown. Yeah! And now, if, uh, obviously, uh, the Giggly, Giggly Goon Clown. You ever hear a Giggly Goon Clown? clown? Is that really, like, a real home fucking, a home run hitter? Like, that was that was a real hometown hero before he got exposed, or whatever. No. Yeah, but it's nobody. Like, it, yeah, it's just like it's a Discord, like, it's this Discord nobody pedophile. And yeah, it's got a million views, which is more than all of these videos that Max has been putting out on Camden, like, all together. All the fucking videos, all the And films, Tom the doesn't have to get on stream and cope saying, well, all publicity is good publicity. Because all he got was good publicity. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, it makes, I, I, again, it just comes to me, like, so puzzling. Like, why doesn't, why didn't this go through his brain, you know? Yeah, it makes no sense. No, Nick, you're not just a guy. You're THE Nick Diorio, a person. I forgot where it is. I'm the official Nick Diorio. I'm Especially the with the Nick Diorio. fact the that official. there was a, an actual rape kit with Kai's. So actual rape like, kit confirmed there based was on her story. solid evidence. So if they really ignored a rape kit, I don't know why we're not... Why, why, why do I not name know the, the name of the... police department. Yeah, why is the police department not been named yet? I mean, I'm assuming it has somewhere, but like, why is that not... This police department fucked up the story. That's a whole angle for your video, by the way. That's a whole thing to add to your video to make it more, like, like interesting and then push it further to reach more people. You can do more of these things than one, but, like, doing just what he did doesn't make any sense to me. It, it should be what you guys said. Exhaust all your resources. You could make yep. that video. You could even try to reach out to YouTubers. You could literally fucking go to the police. You could attack the fucking police. You can go to the local news. You could, there's, a lot of, there's tons of angles you can do here that aren't... Corpse, remember when you asked me to defend you 
when my girlfriend was sick in the hospital and you needed me and I was there for you. I'm and now I'm asking you to come back and help me because you abused me at a time and cut me off like I was nothing. Like, do you remember this part? Am I, am I just like fucking making something? Do you, does anyone yeah, remember this I remember weird that, yeah. fucking corpse husband part in the second video? Yeah. Oh. Wait, yeah, was that Tom. Turkey Tom? Yeah, yeah. yes, we yeah. Oh. Hey, that's wait, Tom. Funny. I'm, I have a question. Are you a, are you aware of, of Camden Gerard Davis? Why am I aware? Why do I know that name? What do, you, what do you mean, why do I? You don't know Camden? Yeah, no. Are you, you doing a collab him. with him soon? Who the fuck is this, dude? Is it's some Camden fucking Gerard freak? Davis. You know we're still did live, you know, right? You know, who, you know who I just collabed with unintentionally? They called into my stream. I didn't I even go. know who was them. Go. Yeah. What Wait, the did you get fuck? off? Are you still live? No, I'm off. Dude, uh, I was just in a call with Dingo, and then I dragged someone, and Dingo's like, uh, who's Wait, this? Southern or Northern? Oh. What? Southern or Northern Dingo? I think Northern. <laughs> <laughs> Northern's the European one. Southern is the racist. Well, the one that was European was there, and then fucking Pie Girl joined somehow. <laughs> Dude, Tom, I'm educated on this Pie Girl law. I know the law up to date. I'm up to date. Oh, hey, asshole. I finished in second when you left that fucking game, dickhead. <laughs> and I couldn't do it because I was fighting teams. Well, you're gay, but bro. Okay, so, so the Pie Girl lore... I asked. I, I barely remember what Pie Girl did, even though I'd made a video about it like a year and a half ago. But Pie Girl was like, "Well, I was, you know, I was in DMs with this person who I found out was a pedophile. But basically, before I tried to expose them, they had my friends' nudes, and I got those from them. And then I tried to expose them as a pedophile. Like, is that is that it? Uh, that's kind of accurate on the on the old law. No, the, lore is the, the... fuck it. Apparently, he like beat up a pregnant woman and tried to fucking <laughs> get her pregnant and throw her down the stairs so her body would get rid of pregnancies. <laughs> yeah, Bay. yeah, yeah. So what is the real new lore, Testify? No, that's not fake. Wait, no, no, I didn't make that up. That was part of her interview. <laughs> Testify, what's the allegation? Right. <laughs> Why don't you, you ready, believe? You ready, me? You... <laughs> I've been doing six is it, hours. Is it, is it of fucking? This. Is it fucking Blair TV or whatever? Yeah, Wait, dude, what are you talking? T- Wait, the Blair TV Pie Girl like drama has been Wait, going on for what? It's a slugging match. Wait, I'm so um, confused. So, do you do you not realize this is the Mama Max thing? What do you mean this is the Mama? What is the Mama Max? Camden thing? Gerard Davis. Oh, is that the guy? Yes. <laughs> Nick, you're strangely making me so upset. I have to do push-ups. I like that this happened twice. Like, I legitimately... Dude, this is how great Mama Max's campaign's going. Like, me and Tom know about it, but the guy he keeps calling out, like, we recognize the name, but we can't put two and two together. Wait, why are you guys (laughs) using the turkey emote? You're members. You have the turkey Tom emote. Why are you jerking off? Or to Camden Gerard Davis? I'm doing push-ups today because of you. Dude, you're jerking off to Camden Gerard Davis. No. <sighs> okay, so what what did Pi what did Pi Girl do? Alright, so the What Pi did Pi Girl, Girl do with Camden Pi Gerard Girl. Davis? <laughs> they collabed on the video. No. Pi Girl and Blair TV about this drama. Alright, it's cause of the fucking because they used to be friends on Discord. Alright, we're done with fucking then... this stuff. I'm just turning it off. We've done six hours. It's okay. <laughs> we've gone to the we've No, we're back. I'm doing we push ups, re- Nick. This is important. <laughs> we reached the bottom of the content well. Dude, oh god, I can't. Nick, you're just, you're wobbing the stream of content, dude. Hey, you don't want to hear about the seven-hour video that Blair TV made in response? Seven hours? <laughs> yeah, it's seven hours. Dude, it's crazy. Best so what? What is what is the allegation from Blair? Uh, I don't know. There's this like person who was in the middle who uh, I think Pygo was dating called Barrel East, and then Blair was like encouraging them to do like a bunch of like self harm stuff and force them onto other people. And apparently Blair That's TV so is a freak based. in getting into self harm as well. So, That's so fucking know. based. Getting My in... takeaway is that I, I think, think that Blair everyone who's weird should die. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Should die it. Should yeah, die. Should... dude. Rise and grind, Eugene Cooney. Let's get some protein. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was my then... favorite. Did you see that in the DM link, Toastify? Uh, no, I didn't. You gotta, you gotta. I, I wrote in there one day. I was like, "Why does everyone want Eugene Cooney to be a disgusting fat body? 
We should get our fucking swirl. <laughs> it's time. Don't f- put down the chicken, Eugenia. It's time to lift. Let's get it's some protein. It's time for in the you. fucking. <laughs> let's let's it's do time some protein. To... Oh no, a it's G- time for Eugene. the protein shake, Eugenia. All right. Oh no. Wait, wait, because I was referencing this. Wait, where is it? Do I have? Is this still on screen? Yeah, okay. I think her arms Search. would break off if she tried oh, to lift. Oh, is it the fucking? Oh, is it the Big Bang Theory Yeah, this one? Tom sent this to me one day. Oh my god. Oh yeah, the like. Do you understand? Wait, Tom sent me this video, and a week later, he joined the gym. Oh my! I'm not kidding, dude. This This video inspired him. Yes. Hold on, where is it? All right, chat. When you watch, I'm gonna expect. I'm gonna expect. Brazinga. (laughs) That was loud. What the fuck? Hey Howard, why did you and Bernadette break up anyway? Well, she walked in on me doing curls in the squat rack. Know what'll take your mind off it, Howard? It's leg day. That's what I sent Eugenia. I, I sent him a, p- a picture of <laughs> small <laughs> fucking what's his name, and I'm like, "Come on, Eugenia, it's leg day." It's leg day, Eugenia. Wrong. Fridays are arm day, Leonard. It's in the roommate agreement. <laughs> Every day is arm day. Let's just go already. <laughs> Howard. Bernadette just walked in. Why don't you go talk to her? This is like the most in- Wait here, Apparently Leonard. this is the most inspirational Why fucking video ever because hey, it got Tom to get down. you're not a little stick-thin masturbator anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I got a new weighted fleshlight. Glows in the dark. Hmm, Howie. Just shut up and spot me. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, AI, everyone's like, guys, AI is going to destroy the world. Dude, yeah, Mama Max AI is like, is AI hasn't been controlled. And it's like, here's what AI does. Like, Every Yeah, day it literally day. inspires the young youth <laughs> to work it out. Literally, dude, Tom was like, he, he literally watched this and he's like, God, I'm such a fucking pathetic loser. I wish I looked as good as <laughs> AI. I fucking. suddenly feel really compelled to get a gym membership. Yeah. That's yeah. literally what happened. He got a gym membership and he got swole. If he was here, he would actually fucking like tell you, like he would admit it. All right, chat. In six months, I'm going to say the entire chat shredded. It's going to happen. All right, watching this video. All right, wait. Tipster things. better be watching the stream. <laughs> Guys, all right. It's one thing to be fat. It's another thing to not be thick. It's leg day. Let's go. Wait, why is Let's Nick go. giving this advice? I know. It's his... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've been so like... like... We were, we I just gave up fucking... on making Nick fat jokes that that one just flew over Dude, my head. We've been for the talking last about this minutes. shit for so long. Well, my mind has been fucking. <laughs> Rape review. Whoa. Dude. It's like N word news. You're done? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of N word news. Oh, somebody check, did somebody say rape? <laughs> somebody say rape? Did somebody Let's say. <laughs> it's literally my invincible. Like how you know how like. It's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just Dude, like, like but, rape review. But anytime the word. <laughs> Yeah, oh fuck, 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 fuck. I got shot. I got shot. Oh my god, I died. Oh fuck. Rip. Dude, I gotta watch that back and see if that's funny. Because uh, if it's not funny, I'm gonna hate everyone for letting me do this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I that would have been so funny. Like, it's the most, like, stupid shit ever, and we just all gaslight you into thinking he's awesome. Yep. And we just laugh at you, like, a year later. Like, why did Let's you do that, go. retard? Does Sports the Center cover the ultimate control. rape report? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, there's a rape yeah, review ripoff called Rape Report now? Dude. Dude, you should you copyright gotta, uh, that shit. Pay per view, man. It's pay per view. Haven't you yeah, seen the pay per like view? <laughs> <laughs> Get some more pay per views than Jake Paul's fight. Yeah. Oh my god. How much, saw, how, man, how much? It just recommended me Chud Logic's video on the one minute clip. It's one hour and 25 minutes, but one minute clip of him talking about um mama max stop ignoring mama max yeah so here you want me to talk about it a little bit that rubbed me the wrong way he's out here reading youtube arguing with thomas the thomas the baguette who is thomas the (laughs) baguette like okay is this guy mentally ill like manic he sounds manic will mr girl convo happen i don't platform files guys Um, oh Sorry. Oh, guest appearance! <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! Wait, he did the Game Theory thing, too? I'm so mad. I missed this by a month. I literally made that joke tonight. 
after I plagiarized him with fucking. Oh. You, dude, you're. me right now i'm getting <laughs> e-fucked man oh Get god the screen i'm gonna make a map pat thing with ai that says welcome to rape theory and then we're gonna use that do, 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 do. oh my I god i happen to know there's a good map pat voice and i've used it in the past all right you gotta have a different in intro every single time yeah you every single time we do one i'm, no, I'm just, yeah, gonna just like adding a different more. variation i'm, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. just keep i'm gonna create a new rape <laughs> review every so often <laughs> Yeah. Someone just wrote me, just remember, Nick, that Z0 Z4 is going to be your year. I, I fucking hate you guys. You guys are the worst. Thank you guys Dude, so much for your support. Why would you write two like that? Why? Oh, why? man. So, I'm going to close the poll, and apparently... Hey, I didn't choose yet. No, I'm just what do you mean you didn't choose? It's been up for <laughs> three, should... two hours. Uh, actually, I was deeply thinking about it. I chose genuine stupidity because I just wanted to get the th shit off my screen, but like... Wow. The thing is, well, we haven't like, we didn't put racism up there, and that could be it. You know, he's going after a, good a black point. guy. <laughs> this entire, this entire, we've never considered that maybe Camden Drake Davis is a victim of racial uh, discrimination. You know. All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming on. I'm gonna dip out now and start doing my intro. All right. And I'm gonna show Thank them. You. I'm gonna show them Jaws. All right. I'm gonna the only them to the only content Nick is gonna do this. Thank year. you for <laughs> helping me review rape. rape. <laughs> <laughs> Who just DM'd uh, me? Is this the confusion? Dude, it's Cameron him? Gerard Davis. Dude, okay, isn't <laughs> dude, it the yeah, fact yeah. that both me oh and Tom my God. did oh not my God. know who Cameron was? Very telling. Dude, I just had a vintage, vintage, fucking vintage oh, shit. moment. Oh, shit. oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Oh, like, I need to get some music together. This is actually super important. We can't leave just yet. Confusing okay. opinion has, like, actually done something not useless for the first time in his life and provided let's content. go okay. have you ever thought about if you've confirmed if you've killed the man but not the idea no!